All right, here we are now with uh, the eye and eye structure. So the first part of the eye we want to start talking about and dealing with is the actual structure. So I've got the skull here and I've got what is, I'll lay it down here, I've got what is a just a white styrofoam ball and I thought what's a good way to show you guys um, the, the, the structure of the eye. Well number one, I'll turn it over here, is just a simple uh, sphere. The, the, the only true symmetrical form uh, on its own, its encasement that I can think of on the human figure, truly symmetrical is the, 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 the eyeball. Obviously they come uh, in a pair. The uh, pupil and iris, we'll talk about more, I kind of symbolize it here. What I did was I took one of my cool little um, Alvin dots that I use. These are great by the way. And uh, I just uh, tore it off or took it off and then put it on the surface of the sphere and then kind of uh, pushed it down smooth. And the reason why I did that is to demonstrate the pupil and iris, how it is really uh, uh, just a very flat, almost painted on kind of surface when artists talk about the form of the eye and deal, deal with the eye. And I'll go into that deeper in a moment. So remember, I'll always say this in every video on anatomy, anatomy that, that I'm doing, is that we're looking at anatomical structures of the human model that we need for form for understanding, for the geography or the landscape of the model, not necessarily uh, every inner working, say for instance, of the eye, but things I think you need to know and you certainly are going to want to draw. So, eye structure. Let's, uh, let's start to draw a little bit. I'll set my little big eyeball over here. And the, the first kind of first thing we want to know is, is that um, within the skull casing, the eye, the eyeball sits within the skull, the uh, orbits of the eye, and they're like boxes. So they are deep kind of set and they sit very comfortably within that box. So I'll, we'll have a, a, a front view, then I'll give you a side view, and they sit back pretty deeply into that box. So let's draw that just for a moment, that concept of what what an eyeball uh, is and what it looks like. So really, and I'm using for this these demos for this one, for the structure, it just newsprint and a, and a sharpie works works pretty well. The sharpie's kind of kind of drier, which works nice, so it doesn't smear around like charcoal for now. So we've got our eyeball very symmetrical circle, right? So we want to uh, notice that here. So we have that form very symmetrical. Of course we get a pair of them. And you can think of them as latitude and longitude lines across them. I'll put them in a little shadow down here to put them, put them down on the ground just to kind of show what we've got here. And you can think of it as a latitude and longitude line to get around those forms, right? Through here and through here. So, so latitude, longitude, and through here. So we're really moving across that surface as we think of the eye as an eyeball. What I see a lot of times students have done and we want to stay away from is, is what I call Egypt eyes. So I'll write this down, Egypt. Sorry all you fellow Egyptians, ancient Egypt eyes. So this kind of flat banana form with this. This works for cartooning that can look really cool, but we want to stay away from that idea. We want to get into a rounded, you know, kind of form with our with our structure. So uh, keep that in mind. So we have our eyeball here, and the pupil and the iris sit on top uh, in kind of a, almost a front view here. They're very much circular. So we see that kind of an idea here as as very much a kind of circular product. Now we're drawing the iris. The iris is the colored part of your eye. Mine are brown, others are green, hazel. Sometimes you get, you get blue, right, as well, if you're lucky, I suppose. This is a really kind of turning in through here, turning around of the form, just putting some contour lines to show that around the form, pretty, pretty much a you know best perfect circle that you can make. And then we get into the pupil region. The pupil is the opening that lets 
that uh, is fluctuating between more closed and an open position depending upon the amount of light or the less amount of light that you have and you'll see that in variations. You'll see the pupil if there's low light it could be very very big and take up quite a bit of the iris. They pretty much tend to be very circular and then when you get to less and less light the aperture, you think of it as an aperture in a camera I suppose, they start to get smaller and smaller down to uh, uh, really lit room. So from uh, uh, low light or less light to a lot of light. So we're talking about light here with the pupil. So it's also there's a wet look that goes on with the pupil and iris. So you always want to kind of give it a little bit of a, of a kind of a highlight. You'll get that quite a bit. Um, when you see the eyeball, it's very glassy, glossy kind of look that wet gelatinous idea across the eyeball. Very important. So if you hear a little bit of violin music or cello music, there's a little quartet of middle schoolers outside, not too far off my office here at the university, and they're absolutely adorable. Um, and they're, they're practicing, so um, it's pretty cute. But if you hear a little music, that's what they're doing, so. Um, all our departments are housed within our major school of art building here. We have a music, theater, dance, and sometimes they, on the weekends, they overlap a little bit. And it's pretty cute. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty cute, I have to admit. All right, so we have now, I think, a pretty relevant kind of eyeball. So let's talk about a little bit more that goes on um, than just that, that rounded point. The eye, I think of the eye in a couple of different ways and anatomically as it moves um, and well actually before I, I do that I want to show you one more thing uh, with the side of the eye because there's one more little bit that we need to talk about with the eye and that's going to make a difference especially with lids later on so we'll come over here and <clears throat> we'll get this ball here, or eyeball going. Remember that pupil and iris sit on there as a very thin painted membrane. I mean very thin. It doesn't really take up much mass at all, but it moves quite a bit. And we'll talk about that in a moment. And there's one more thing we want to think about in our little, little cast shadow down in through here. Put some more. And some more shadow coming in through here. Coming in down and through. Down and through here. Um, is this idea of the corona. The corona is a transparent collagen based um, material. It's more specific, it's more deep, deeper than that, but that's how I've learned it, the corona. And so if we had the pupil and iris sitting all the way over, we're looking in this, this direction, right? is that the pupil and iris, we'll say, will be normatively about right in through here. We don't see a whole lot at all. Be careful not to draw too much of it. So it's pretty much a disc sitting on that, on that surface. So we see it demonstrated here just about like that. Not a whole lot, but push it towards me just a little bit to show it. But really in profiles, even, even really a little bit thinner than that. You see that? That's pretty amazing. So. <clears throat> We get the iris toned in, get that pupil here. Then sitting on the top of that, if you've ever had your cornea damage, you know exactly what I'm talking about. My wife, uh, Kendra, has had that happen. And it's, she has to take special eye drops right before she goes to bed, otherwise she could get in trouble. Her, her cornea was scratched years ago before we even met, before we were married, um, by her, her dog. She's a big dog lover. And they were playing, and the cornea got scratched, and it, got, and, and it was damaged, and it regrows, and it grows damaged. It, long story short, it was really difficult, and she's always had to, to fight that. So <clears throat> the idea of the cornea, I'm going to overextend it a little bit. It sits on top of your uh, pupil and iris, kind of like this. Okay, like so and then comes down and attaches over. So that's probably a little bit higher or out further, but I want to make sure that that's 
that's clear. That's the corona sitting on top there. Now, <clears throat> the reason that's important later on is because the lower eyelid, the action of the lower eyelid will never generally come uh, above, it will stop at that corona, that eyelid in here. And then the uh, upper eyelid, which is a lot more active, quite a bit more active, can come over and sheath all the way to the ending part. This is the upper eyelid, at the ending part to, to the lower, lower eyelid right in through here. So the upper eyelid is very much, very much active, a lot more active than the, than the lower eyelid. Keep that in mind as you're, as we're drawing in eyes and thinking about eyes. And notice that, you know, as you begin to work in your, your, um, your eyes and, and drawing, drawing eyes uh, as well. That's going to be, it's going to be pretty, pretty important to know. So that's the corona, and the corona is important because it is a, a little. What the corona does, it directs light, refracts it into the eye itself, and then you have the lens sitting behind it. And then the rest of the eyeball is sort of kind of hollow until it hits back here, the image on the retina. So, um, you know, I don't want to know too much about the eye. I know that I don't want to get into too deep about things that we can't draw, because I'm not, I'm not a, a doctor, and nor would I profess to be. But, but uh, things we, it's, it might be common knowledge, but things we, we can know, I think, are, are pretty important. So the main thing right now is that eye the eyeball is very round. It is clear round and it can move around. So let's talk about now the movements of the eye and why that's important and how that happens and how I think one can think about eye movement and what's going on inside there. And then we'll think about uh, a couple of ideas and then we'll start talking about placement. Um, of the eye within the uh, within the skull proper. All right. So the the eye in terms of uh, its movement. Two things I think about. I think about pivots. Okay. And I think about pulls or pulleys. We'll just start to call it pulleys. So pivots and pulleys. Let's talk about pivots first here, and then we'll talk about pulleys second in terms of in terms of eye movement. So a lot of times I've heard my, my professors when I was a student talk about this as as pivots. But the more I studied I like the idea of pulley pulley. So I'm gonna demonstrate both here. So I'm gonna draw three or four sets of eyes here. So one rounded form, right? Really simple. Simple structures always think about the latitude longitudinal idea of the eye. I can't emphasize that enough that the eye is not a flat structure, but is a very much a round living um, idea for artists. There we go. So we have this rounded quality here. And I'll put some more out here. And hopefully this will this will make sense to you. I think in just a little bit. Okay, so pivots, pivoting. So one way to think about eyes is to think of them as pivoting or having a little pulley in between. So if we did a little thing like this, where this is going to pivot, okay, up and down, we're going to put this little pulley. Here, this is where it comes in, kind of like a little stick that was jammed in there that comes out like so. So it attaches in there, comes out, then it curls. Okay, so your fingers, if you will, could come over here to the side and attach to them a little bit here, like so, little fingers, and they can turn it. A little pulley so we come out the other side maybe a little like that okay so a little pulley system and through like that and we'll kind of have it on a normative view so what I like to show you is with the pulley this line that I pull on the back side of the pulley here tells me where the turn is it's like a little little slot where you could put like a flathead screwdriver in through there but it tells me the direction of where I want 
the eye to go in this direction, right? Kind of coming out. And that's where we'll put the pupil and the iris. Now they start to get more elliptical as you get into perspective. So the pupil and the iris, here I've got the iris, right? In through here, put a little cast shadow. In over in through here, a little form shadow down in through here. Show that off. You know, very much grounded, so a globe-like structure, longitude, latitude coming across, and then they get more disc-oriented. So ellipses matter. So um, in the basic section, you'll you'll understand we had the ellipse, and I'll put a little little highlight on this kind of this side to show that off, and maybe a glossy highlight even over here, kind of cartoon-esque, just to get the idea coming through. And then you get all kinds of variation in the color of the pupil in the iris, depending upon how photoreal you're drawing or how impressionistic you're drawing into or painting. Those can get quite a bit varied. So we've got now the eye pretty much straight set in, like so. So it's pivoting there, but what if we wanted to pivot it, in this case, up in this direction, right? And if we wanted to pivot the eyeball down in this direction, well, it moves. So we're pivoting now. We'll put along the same kind of central axis you can think about it. It's less complex than that later on, but this is kind of the way we want to think about it. So we're having our, our axis here, but then this is going to pull down quite a bit. We're thinking about the surface really of a sphere. Okay, we have that. I'll put this down for a moment. And then we have our pulley coming out, just to show this illustration to feel kind of what it's like, what's going on. So the pulley here and outwards and turning. So that pulley now is not straight, but it's turned downwards quite quite a bit. Well, this is supposed to be upwards. I'll make this one, this one down. I, I, I messed that up, didn't I? Well, I'll tell you what, let's do this. We'll just do that. And we'll put another pulley in here. We'll just be more consistent. We'll take that one out. How about that? Don't even have to race it out. So the pulley is going to go up that way. So the little arrow on the side where, the, where we're turning it with our fingers to pivot that is going to be up here. That tells us then we want our eye, and here's the other side of the pulley, like this. So coming out to point upwards. So now we've got our disc pulley of our eye this way. Okay. And our pupil here. We'll highlight. So we'll come through like so. Bingo. So we've got our eyeballs now moving in this direction. So we've got movement and they're pivoting. So I can turn that little screw on the side and pivot up or pivot downward. We'll do more just to give it a downward view and I'll get myself hopefully corrected here. A little cash out just to show that through here. Now we're working downward so we have that feeling of latitude and longitude here, curving across, right, and through here. So now we want to come down in this direction. So if the pivot's through here, like so, okay, and we're able to turn it with our fingers, now we're going to go down. So the movement of that slot has moved from straight, right, and now from an up position now to a very different down position. And we have the feeling there. It should feel the same as that arrow coming through. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. I'll put this on a little cast shadow again, just to give it a little bit more form variation. And again, we're just I'm just with an old sharpie and some newsprint that can be. That could work out well for you too. All right, so now let's put the pupil and iris. So we're thinking about ellipses. Remember, we went from a true frontal eye, totally circular, right, for the pupil and iris. The iris first, the color part, and the pupil to more variation, right, in curvature. It's like basically like a contact lens. So we've got that, right. And then when we get way over, right here and over, we get way over, it gets really, really even more elliptical as well.
like so, curved along that. And then um, on, in total profile, you really get almost just kind of a darker line or so. You don't get a whole lot. The trick is a lot of artists want to draw it like that. When you get profile, it, it, makes, it makes the eyes look really kind of awkward and funny. So you have to be careful of that. So let's put this elliptical part of our eye. It can disappear a little bit down and through here. There's the iris and the pupil there. Like so, maybe a little highlights coming across and then we'll put a little bit of the iris tone in. So there we have our pupil and our iris on that eyeball structure. So that's the pivot idea. The pulley idea is we've got more movements than just up and down. And I'll show you how to think a little bit about eye anatomy in a very simple way. Uh, and you don't have to remember names because I'm not, not, not going to. And I'm not going to have you do that. My students here at the university, but also you guys in YouTube land. If you're working with me in mentoring. <clears throat> so, the idea now of uh, pulleys. So let's take a look at the eye. So the eye, this ball again, here. Okay. We've got that. And on the eye itself, beyond the pivot idea, we have movement like this, we have movement like this. Think of it as a plus sign. There are muscles that attach up above here, kind of like fan muscles, up on the eyeball some, and they come out, okay, and then back to the eye, because we've got a ball in a box, I'll show you that in a moment. So we've got that, and they attach to the side here, like so, and out. They're kind of striated, like so. It's coming through, these are kind of striated. Same thing on the bottom, so it's kind of a, what I call a plus sign, or like a Swiss flag, if you will, or the Red Cross, if you will, however you want to think of it, like that, so kind of a just a plus sign of direction with those muscles here and here, so cross and over, and they, they come through here, over and down, like so. Striated, and then there's last, the last one here is over on this other side over here, they're fairly symmetrical. Right in through, right in through there, and they come out in a fan over a little bit, like so. <clears throat> Which is pretty fascinating as well. Now, what we get then is a couple of things. We get, I'm gonna draw the pupil in the iris lighter, is we get a centered eye uh, pupil in iris here, but if we want eye movement laterally, let's say medially back to the nose, let's say this is the nose side over here, so that's medial side, you start to pull in this direction, right? Well, the pupil in iris can start to come over a little bit here, right? So they can do that, okay? But what about on the lateral side, over through here, back on the outside of the head? Well, the muscle can contract. You utilize that muscle, and it can go this way, okay? So it can pull a little bit this way. So we have the, the iris and the pupil moving this way. Now, we've already talked about the pivot system, right? That can go... That's, that's directed by this muscle up here and down here. And there's all kinds of little, uh, I've looked at some, some uh, medical things, videos in the past, in way doctors teach other doctors 
to how to memorize it. It's really complex. And that's when I thought, you know, that's, that's more of the eye than I want to know for artists. So just know that there's a plus sign and these muscles attach up here and they move in different directions. So we've got up, right, pivot, down, and we've got pulley left or laterally to the outside of the head. Actually, I'll put ear over here so you get that. That's the lateral side. This is back to the nose where the tear duct would be, you know, kind of right in through here. Plica would be over here. The So we get left and right, but, but there's a couple of more movements. The pupil can move in an X form. And you've got more movements. There's a little muscle that goes under here. Which is pretty cool and around, like so. Which is pretty cool. It's all pretty cool, I think. And if you're studying anatomy, you, you want to think it's pretty cool too. Uh, artistic anatomy, that is. Not medical for doctors. I would, uh, that would not be me. No. So this muscle's here. So we move in this direction, right? We can move through in this direction, so we create, see the X that's created? That's pretty fascinating. So meaning that the pupil and iris can come up in a little bit to the corner. Not, not too severely, but I'm just drawing these pupil and iris diagram structures as transparencies to say that can happen bottom down here to the lateral left side. People like an iris can move through here. And this works together with both eyes together. Here, and then another one right up here to pull this way. So we've got a lot of pulley systems going. Pretty, pretty fascinating. And you get the same thing down in through here as well. Pulling down to the medial side, closer down below, bottom, bottom right. And I'm gonna make this pupil and iris in the middle just a little just a little stronger you could you could you, we could have uh, made about eight eight eyeball drawings but it's, it's going to get you get the idea I think so you, again you've got that idea of the muscle sitting on the eyeball right there we are here one here one here one here and one here and you've got some underneath like so and you get movement also in diagonal ways too as well pretty fascinating stuff now if we look at that eyeball over here let's talk about the uh, ball in a box idea so the eyeball <clears throat> sits on its own as a circular object, right? But what we have here with the skull is it's inside a box. Now this is not the proper size, but get the idea. I want you to make, make sure you saw that clear. But this whole area is a deeper kind of box and they, they call it like a boxy shelf uh, with a ceiling, two walls and a floor. So if we just look at it from a front view, a very simple concept drawing of this, is a simple kind of rectangular or really flat cubic kind of box idea. So we have that, right? And then we can go inside with a, a one point interior view of this here, inside like so, in here like so, right? And then that's where that ball fits in, touches those walls a little bit pushed back a little bit off the brow and that eyeball fits nice and neat cleanly with a little bit of space for muscle and tissue and, and the active muscles that pivot and pull give it pivot pulley concept idea to to, to our eyes. So we really much got the ball in a box idea. Very important kind of concept and we'll put the, the iris and the pupil in there. Like so. <clears throat> okay. 
So you get that idea. Now, if we look at it from, whoops, drop my Sharpie profile side. If we look at it from a profile side, the the actual box itself here. See where my finger goes in here. It's it's fairly deep. So the finger, I'll mark it actually. Look how look how from the uh, orbit zygomatic and temporal ridge here. Look how deep that goes in. So that's for measurement about an inch, inch and a half, almost two inches. So what that's telling us is this on the side, the profile view over here, is that the eyeball, it's kind of like an old television tube or a slightly funnel. The box itself is moving in and it's fairly deep, like about like that. And there's a couple of reasons why. Well, there's a reason why. So the anatomy of these muscles can fit in. So we've got this ball, right, fitting in this box, and it's funneled downward. Okay, so here's the ball, your eyeball. Okay, in the box here. And then you've got these muscles that pull it through a funnel back here, right? And they attach over to the side and they're pulling all this back into kind of an ocular tube. There's an optic, optic nerve that comes out of here. That's not important for us. <clears throat> and then the muscle down below that we've, we've started to take a look at here down below. That all funnels into a tube-like kind of uh, feeling in through here. And of course the pupil iris and pupil sit here like so and then we could draw the corona out make a real issue of that pull that out through here so there's that profile of the box that funnel box right with our ball sitting into sitting into that box kind of nice and, and clean it gives you a stronger idea of that uh, particular structural component that goes on it's going on uh, with with the eyeball uh, proper itself so pretty fascinating stuff so that's that's the the structural kind of uh, component that uh, that we've got with the eye at the first thing so that is the structure takes care of the main structure to review that ball in a box rounded ball we've got the iris which is the colored part right the pupil, which is the darker area that is actually the opening into the inside. Then, of course, you've got that corona uh, on the top of. It's like a, it's like a natural. And I've heard it called a natural contact lens, which is pretty cool. Um, and that sits on top of that, and that's very much a membranous, soft tissue, transparent that reflects the light inside. Of course, you get back here with the image. Your lens sits, I think, about right in, right in through there. It's really not important because we can't get inside the all, the the eyeball. It's got that round structure. And so, anytime you start drawing eyes, we want to get away from flatness. That's what we'll practice later on: is getting away from flatness and start really looking at um, the roundness of it. Then, of course, it's in a it's in a a flat uh, uh, or a deep, excuse me, uh, rounded, boxy-like form that gets slightly conical into a tunnel so it's pretty much a ball within within the box really important to know that and then the pupil and iris itself get very very elliptical uh, as we draw them from different different positions so get get in the habit of really looking at the very surface quality of this there's no real major form dimension and you're going to see that with the the eyelashes later on that they might give you a little bit of trouble. And the really hard part, I think, of drawing the eye, always it was for me, is the eyelid. And um, putting the eyelids on a rounded ball. Okay, so now the next thing I want to go to, since we've got our structure down, is to look at placement. How we're placing the, uh, the eye within the, excuse me, within the um, socket of the uh, skull. Okay, so let's go on to that. So now I want to talk about placement. So how to place the ball within the eye, uh, 
how to, how to fuel that uh, proper from a, a front view, profile view, maybe three quarter two as well. So I'll use the skull. I'll draw from life and I'll have the image up for you guys to use as well. We'll put the ball, the eyeball uh, idea here over out of the camera for a moment. So let's start to get into now some uh, eye structure and uh, placement. So you want to feel this idea in terms of, you know, within the skull. So we're going to do a front view here. So I've got this coming down. We'll feel this part in through here and we'll start with the glabella in through here this and we'll make this a pretty big uh, little, little uh, close-up idea of it so we've got that glabella coming down remember that off the skull in through here and so that's the, that protrusion of the brow up and through here right remember that and that gets us out that furrowed look, that ridged furrowed look, and it starts to come around and kind of downward and over. We get this, get this position downward, right, and over, in through. And <clears throat> we start to feel the nasal bone underneath. This is all kind of turning. This will be all turning in, turning in, turning in a little bit and through here for now. And we get the nasal bone uh, that gives you that opposite turn in through here. It's shaved downward this way, turns this way, and then gets shaved like basically a tube downward through here. And then coming off and over like so, off and over like so. So I'm, just, I'm drawing this right from the skeleton. It's good to do these structures from a life, from observation, right? And also uh, from memory, too. I could whip this out from memory, but I want to see that you see me drawing it from the skeleton. It's important to see that, too, as well. So they come down. Then the, the uh, frontal ridge, very ridged part of it, okay, down about right in through here. It ends, its arc ends, this nasal bone ends about halfway down the eye orbit. So I'm going to mark that for you so you'll see that as you're working with me about right here and then over that's about halfway halfway down that arc that arc stops now notice all the space in between okay that's important from the nasal cavity to the glabella in through here and over okay we can make this more complex a little later on I'm using charcoal and some more uh, toned paper and so let's bring down this nasal uh, cavity here because it's about the, the length of an eye orbit coming down in through here. So about right in through here, that tear dropped, uh, fat kind of shape. It ends where the orbits are beginning, right in through this area. So we can see that as you're always you know, getting some alignment points. Sometimes they're, they're almost there, they're close, but it gives you a good guide. So this teardropped, pear-shaped uh, nasal cavity that's coming in, obviously, to the, uh, the sinuses in through here, right over and downward. Get that over, right, and downward, curving in, in through here like so, and then they come up to that septal split point and through that pet protrudes out running through there. So about now, <clears throat> this whip uh, gets us about inside of the orbit. So the nostrils are kind of feel almost an inside of the eye. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. So we have that ridged quality, ridged quality here inside of the septum. We don't want to do a septum study, so we'll just gloss over this and then the opening of the canal. It's kind of like a pig snout in a way. They tend to turn slightly inward, be a little bit more narrow here, a little bit wider here, narrower, a little bit wider, like so, like that. And we can push this back a little bit. Okay, so 
Inside the eye here, there's a little bit of extra space in here. There's a ridge in through here, so we get some space in through here, right in through this area where it's a really hard ridge. It's kind of the outer ridge, and it gets deeper in where eye muscles attach, right in through here. So it's kind of a little bony hub you want to see pretty good in, inside there if you get a skeleton to fill it. You can kind of feel it on yourself, actually, if you, if you push your finger in there. Just be careful not to poke yourself deeply in the eye, if you would. Um, so that moves a little bit deeper. I'll make some contouring idea lines, kind of deeper inside that. Everything is, wants to turn in to, to that eye. So if we keep on going out to the brow a little bit, this gets, this idea turns in, this comes over, and we get to the start of the temporal ridge. Remember that over here, the side plane of the head coming in over here. And this bone wants to start coming down, right? Coming down and over. Just kind of straightens out a little bit and it's gonna to start to curve back in on itself over and through here, the zygomatic arch. So let's fill this in around and we'll fill this over. So now coming in through this area of the skull, right in through here, the eye, the outer eye, it's kind of an inner outer orbit and it gets a little bit tunneled in and deeper as it gets a little bit narrower. So we'll start to feel that on the side plane of the nose right in through here. And then orbits are, are all a little bit different. I tend to think of them as slightly downward trending in the front, mostly everything I've seen. Downward trending here and then up like so. Just the basic kind of structure in through here and then slightly on the inner part, as we move in through here, up, starts to move up. Of course, this is curling underneath, right? Curling, curling in through there. <clears throat> and we get this ridge here as it flattens out just for, for a moment and then starts to turn in and over. <clears throat> this is a very curved transition. It's curving curving in, curving in through that transition. And then we come over this bonier ridge and through here, and this is gonna be a little bit less uh, wide later in a moment. And through here, and we get that orbit finish. It curls under and then through, right in through here, straightens out just in a diagonal right in through there. And we start to have the feeling of that orbit. Now this is a little bit wide, so I'll narrow it in. You can see this bone where it separates right in through Right in through here, it's kind of a cord bone. It's the zygomatic top part in through here, the arch ridge of the orbit in through here. It's a little bit of a thickness in through here as this comes around. You really feel that, that turn in. It's kind of like a box here, this way, and then it goes back that way, side of a box as it turns around. It's even more, more thicker over and through that area. We can see that, yeah. Good. So, <clears throat> as we're coming down, we get that sort of soft curve of that bone, and then it straightens out this way a little bit, kind of like, a, like a, almost like an oval P shape in through here, and then it really starts to widen out, wants to come into your orbit area kind of feeling, and then go out to your temporal ridge pretty, pretty cleanly, pretty succinctly. And that gets starts to come into your temporal bone. So we can come down now, you know, but this gets a little bit narrower and then starts to want to flare out to the zygomatic arch, the zygom zygomatic um, bone, zygobone in through there, and then over. So we can get this a little cleaner now and through here. This comes down, and this will want to curve back on in to the head proper, back into the ear canal in through in through there. So now feeling this uh, zygomatic bone in through here, we're going to finish this out a little bit further before we start to take on the, put the eyeball actually in. We'll put all this together a little bit on one side, more downward feeling a little bit through here. And then we get this downward trend of the cheek here, the same downward trend in through here of the zygomatic bone of the cheekbone in through here. This starts to really pull this way. Feel that pulling in like so. 
and this comes downward, you get that downward kind of trend, kind of about 45. So riding through here, this feeling coming in to get you about 45 degrees, almost splits it really, see how it splits it kind of diagonal? That's important to know as well. So we get that in, in through here, and I'll show you another cool measurement in just a moment for the maxilla and the eye. This really wants to curve in, turn in like so. See that? See that turning in? <clears throat> in through here. So it's undercut here, the zygomatic bone, undercut through here, and then overcut just a little bit. And this gives this area kind of a ridged, a ridge-like quality. So if I blew this up right here, up over here, if you're doing a really proper bone study, we'd get this ridge idea through here. And if light's hitting on top, this would be lighter. This over here would be darker. Like so, and so you get a you get a nice little little ridge thing going up and through up and through there. It's important to kind of not kind of see to see for sure. Don't be let's don't be vague. That's important. And this starts to come down in my view, and it gets a little shadowed the opposite way. So you really start to see that coming on, and I'll put a little shadow. In through here, you can see that ridge kind of play off, and then this ridge is out here, you see, and then it starts to curve and come on down. It gives you that strong undercut in through here, and then we're going to end with that bone coming over, nodges out a little bit right in through here, okay, right in through there, and then up feels this undercurrent up and through here. And this turns in, this, this will turn into here, right? Now watch this, here's that measurement I was talking about. This area, the zygomatic bone arch area turns into the maxilla. Remember the maxilla is a ball. So it's that racquetball-like structure in your, in your mouth, right? And so this is where it starts to turn about halfway from here, see that, right halfway from back here, halfway through the eye orbit, the center of the eye really vertically, about right in through here, coming on down, pretty pretty good in just about every, every, every form or face, right in through here. This undercuts this way now, turns in through here. This simple like box-like form, so don't get too intimidated by all this. We're just drawing boxes and spheres and cylinders, that's really all drawing is. That's what I've been trying to impress upon all you guys, NK, my NKU ladies and gals and, and gentlemen, and as well as my, my YouTubers out there as well. So this curves in now, and it starts to really make this ball form, again, about halfway, halfway through there. So I'll bring this down a little bit further so you can see that that's important. And then we get this, not necessarily straight, curves in. I feel the curve in, but then I start to feel it curve around pretty quickly like a ball. So let's bring this over a little bit further. So you can, you can see, almost catch it, yeah, you catch it in the camera just a little bit. Right in through here, this ball area coming up. And that ball, to me, feels about halfway through kind of where the sinuses end back here and here, that's where to me that ball feels like it wants to be in this this kind of realm. Do you see that? How that works in through here like a structure, like a, like a, well, a muzzle, totally a muzzle. I was taught a muzzle approach and that's, that's what I see too, really. It's pretty cool. Have you ever seen um, Pulp Fiction, The Gimp? I know it's kind of a, a raunchy movie. Um, so if you're younger, turn your ears off, but if you're older, you've seen the gift with that red, bald, strange, psychosexual kind of thing. That's, that's kind of what we're talking about. A muzzle, muzzle kind of thing with a nicer kind of ending. All right, so we get this muzzle area and then through here, up and over the arch and through here, and then of course the base of the teeth and we'll start to come around the ball, curving and then back, turning back in. Onto, onto itself around through there. Okay, so that's a lot, and then I'm gonna put a little curve for the ball as you get these conical cylindrical forms as the roots of the of the teeth move into the skull proper, right? We've all 
started to see that a little bit. Okay, so we want to get that to in relationship to to the eyeball. That's that's good. So now we're we're getting we're cooking with gas, if you will, so to speak. Um, if you're Australian, you really get that. Uh, in through here, and we're coming down in through here, so we get that that ridge. And I'll give it a little bit of a little bit of shading, so we can see that a little little bit. But I don't like to blend too much in diagram drawings. So we come over, ridge comes down. Let's feel this nose nose bone a little bit further before we get to the eye. In through here. So we're taking great pains to put everything around it. It's like, man, when is he ever going to get to the eye? Well, hang on. So here's what I'm talking about. You've got to leave space between the orbit and the nose cavity, the nose nasal structure bone. And when you draw eyes on back on figures, you've got to have that, you can't put that eye, push that eye jam it into the nose itself, the base of the nose is coming down, which will be right in through, off, I'll put a little line here, this will come down, and this will come down too as well. Right in so, this is curves, curves around, sometimes these are even, even straighter. So this shades down, this whole area gets shaved down on the inside, and we feel this inside part of the cavity in through here, well the ball can't be there, so we still got more of the ball to put in there. The eyeball now sits in that box with some really, some nice space to go, right? You've got now the ball coming in. Perfectly round, look how it's alarmingly symmetrical compared to everything else. You're like, wow. Uh, as it fits in there, it really does it as it does a double take because this is all getting pushed now back into that box tunnel, that box cavity, right of the of the uh, anatomy. So it's a box, but it's getting shaved down again. If I bring it over here to a very profile view here and then down, because it really follows the nerves that come off and muscles that come off actually of the eye back in through here. It's kind of like an old television screen or old light. It's like a, a, a lamp light and then the eyeball kind of can peek out just a little bit. Not too much because the brow wants to cover over that. So we have that eyeball in through here and it's going to get pushed in coming in the cavity and we'll sit it down now in through here pretty nicely. This gets shaved down and in. It's a cavity pushing in. So you ask yourself, well, where's the, where's the true ending of the skull eye orbits on the medial side by the nose? Well, it's gradual. It gets turned in and gets turned. Most people draw the dark part, but it's really way way inside here, right in through here. This is outer part and it gets, it gradually gets shaved into that eye and you can kind of feel it, but it's actually pretty deep in through here because you've got some tear ducts to go as well. That's important. So this gets pushed. See how this all feels, you know, it's coming around and coming around. And don't forget the orbicularis oculi muscle, right? As it would be all the way over. I'm not going to I'll indicate it in through here. That's over and through this way, right? So there's a lot to, lot to, to, to take into account. You just start to feel a rhythm, and the more you just practice it, you start to see it. And it truly just becomes second nature. So let's push this in a little bit further. This placement here. Gradually come in, and it's the end of the eye socket truly down and through as it ridges over gradually comes over. It's a pretty, pretty amazing little area. Let's pull that back in, back in tone like so as it ridges on through. You can feel this and this kind of ridges up and over and then it wants to cascade up over and then fall right on down and slink over because remember the maxilla, right? This little rounded ball part's doing this. 
It's like, hey, I'm coming on. Here I am. And then you get into these nice cylindrical rhythms where the teeth are right, right in through. Here's so the teeth are about here. We square these off and they start to come on down to the to the molars and the big old back wisdom teeth and all that good stuff. Pushing back and through there. All right, so let's let's um, you know that let's uh, talk about this eye placement a little bit further. So you've got some space, Ryan, as you see that. That's important. We're going to have lids and things covering that membrane. Remember that muscle here, that muscle over here a little bit, that muscle over here. And there's going to be there's actually a third eyelid. It's called the plica semiluminaris. I just call it the plica. So you hear me later on when we get to that part later. I'll just start calling it plica. Another muscle in there, and then one comes down below, and then everything comes in back behind and goes back in that funnel tunnel of the box, right of the skull. So this gets that ridge. I'll make that angle a little bit more angled so you can see it coming down because everybody everything wants to float in inside there so you get that nice ridge coming through right in through there of that orbit so we talk we'll put the eye in now so pretty much a straight eye the latitude longitude latitude line the iris in through here and there's ample space between the eye the whites of the eyes and the eyeball. So we have that placement. So we get the iris in through here, and then we get the uh, the pupil starting to emerge here, right in through, right in through that area. And we start to you could start to see it really you know, begin to come together kind of naturally and, and uh, more, more appropriately through here. Push that down a little bit. Bury that back a little bit. Okay, so we have that coming through here. And then we'll get this going a little bit further. Whites of the eyes, be careful. I see a lot of students, uh, when they render them out naturally in drawings, when they're drawing portraits or whatever figures, and they they start to render the eyeball, it's, like, oh, it's going to be so easy, just a white, white uh, value, bright white. Well, they're rarely that. They take on close, much, much closer to the f flesh. They're like teeth. They're a lot grayer and... and um, they take on uh, different light qualities from the atmosphere that you're drawing or painting around them. So be, be, be very careful of that. Now the eyeball, the people in the iris vary. Now I'm not going to get into all kinds of flicking variations of detail, but they do, when you draw them and you have some value, you want to get into that wet look. So I'll show you what I do. I can blend that around a little bit, make that a little faster. And come back with a little tone, round, that rounded quality. So people, not too bad dilated. If you ever had your eyes dilated, you know how the pupil really reacts to light. That's an awful feeling. I can't. I've had it done once, and I don't ever really want it done again. I didn't have to do it until a couple of years ago, actually. I've seen when I was a youngster in grade school, and kids would have to do it all the time. They'd come in with the big glasses, and I feel bad for them and then now I know why they were suffering because boy oh boy is that an awkward everything is blurry and hazy and bright all the time your eyes do not they stay way more open than what the light would normally have them do do here so we get this into here curved around part of the zygomatic arch coming back to the auditory canal back in through here you don't see a lot of it in this view and that's okay the mandible down and through here would come out about, again, halfway. You see it, get a pretty sliced view of that. I'll just give you a couple lines coming down. That's plenty enough for that. We'll just, you get a little bit of that gap. Through there. 
back and push back. And push back and shadow. And then let's give a little bit of expression too. With a little bit of white chalk to the eye. And you can take your, I like to take my electric eraser and you can hear it twirl and then take out an area for a highlight I want to hear and just kind of really kind of take it out. And it, it, a lot of times it will hit around the pupil some, cover up some of the iris. And that's, that's a clean place, excuse me, that I can put some highlight uh, into the eyes. So I'll take a charcoal pencil. They're generally, the highlights on eyes, because they're glassy and glossy, are going to be kind of hard edged. So you have to know how to control edges with your, that means that the edge around it is going to get crisp and I'll throw a little white on this just to give us a little, wrong, just a touch more dimension. And then we'll get out of here. So the placement of the eye and a little bit more of the structure around it we're practicing. This will come around a little bit further too and through their furrowed brow coming up over. And through here. Ending in through here. So we have some ample space for it to breathe, but it's not too much space and it's not too little. You're going to have to get this feel for it. I think that's going to that's going to help in through here. Let's do a little, little bit of white charcoal in through here. Let me test it out. Sometimes I break these like right off the bat. So you can kind of, you can kind of all sharpen your pencil by the paper too. Sometimes you just kind of put, you see artists with little strokes. That's kind of what they're doing. They're just kind of checking out the, what's the nature of the, of the pencil at the moment. And then I put a little bit of highlight in through here. And it gives you that sort of glossy kind of wet look that you get that you want popping out the eye and then nothing else is going to be because that's a severe highlight and highlights come out the eye at 45 degrees so the highlight the lights coming in at 45 that's what gives you a highlight so nothing else generally it's another thing about the eye and more aesthetic kind of thing uh, excuse me is that the the eyeball or the highlight on the eye will be the lightest highlight in the composition generally unless you have lots of jewelry of gold or silver metallic things uh, but on the skin proper that's about oh, that's about what you're going to get you're going to get the major highlight off that that uh, glossy eyeball you can put a little bit of light over here just to just to let it come out a little bit not a whole lot not as much they're a lot grayer than you really think they are. And this ridge over here, I might take my little, my white eraser and bring this out a little bit just to show you, just to give you a little popping of that along here, this little white highlight, just a little bit. And taking great pains not to make this, uh, these, these highlights around lighter than, than the eyeball. So maybe a little bit of just a little light value here. They show up on the camera uh, exceedingly more bright than when I what I draw. It's really a double take sometimes. I once I edit the video and I look I'm like, whoa, that was really brighter than I thought it was going to be, and it looked pretty good when I drew it. And it's just a matter of camera camera take a little bit. This ridge might catch a little bit more light in through here, and then that means that the I have the opposite lighting of what I should have here coming in. This would be a little bit lighter in this area. I could take that out. That means I could shade this down and this plane would come down further through here. Okay, so that's placement now in the the front area. Let's do one in profile. Talk about that a little bit. Let's do another one. We'll come back in a moment. Take on Think on that guy. Remember these come in. This is pulling in, pulling in, pulling in the brow, pulling, pulling, right? That pulling in idea, the same thing, the same idea in and around 
down over, down right over. So it's got that ridge over, and you feel that ridge coming, coming through. All right, okay. Let's move on now to a profile view. Okay, so let's take on a profile view here. So I've got, I'm going to have the skull in my hand drawing it in profile. I'll have an image up for you. And one thing I want to show you again, this is kind of uh, talking about the, the prior part of the, this eye anatomy lesson, or lessons, is that we're going to be looking at this eyeball, not here straight on now, but really the axis, frontal axis, latitude and longitude is going to be the center point of that. It's going to be well, well pushed off. That's three quarter. This is frontal, three quarter, and then profile, right? Okay, seven eighths might be frontal, and then seven eighths might just be in through here. And in all of these these little diagrams I'm doing, these these couple here, the eye is in its normal position. It's not it's not moving within within the socket, meaning that it's a straight view here, straight view, straight view, because you could be in three quarter, uh, skull wise, like so, right? That's three quarter skull wise. Let me get this where you can see it. Skull wise, that's three quarter from our vision, but then the eye could be looking right ass. It's like somebody having their head turned in, and then they're like, hey, how you doing? And you look over, you're like, hey, how's it going? And you look over, and the eye could be in, in frontal position to us, so that can change too as well. Just want to keep, keep make sure that's that's understood in in the drawing too, as well as that we'll be drawing these from uh, frontal. Uh, position. So <clears throat> now, profile. Let's get a little profile of the of the uh, head going here, and <clears throat> we'll start to take this on. We'll do this bigger uh, here, and so we'll we'll get that nice kind of angle of the entire part uh, part of the face plane in through here like so. Then we're going to bring down the the brow off this now. Okay, so the brow's coming off this here, like so, really protruding. Let me make sure this is nice and big, protruding outward here, like so. Then we come in and we get that um, inner part into here. That's actually the outside of the skull. Come up the brow, and we start to come up and back over to the frontal, just slightly to get a little frontal prominence into here brow coming over, but the center of the brow is actually right in through here, down over. We get a little bit of shadow in through here. I'll tone that for now. Hopefully this will make more sense in a moment. This is actually the center split, so this is the glabella coming down now on that brow, from that brow region. Remember we're pulling back at an angle, right? Then we get up into, stop, it gets straight, it gets curved, the nasal uh, bone up in through this region and we come out and then we'll start to protrude and come on out and that protrudes just a little bit far than the uh, brow area in through here about if I put a little shell line over the top of that like in through here that would look about like this we could some artists draw this straight very quickly to get it I like that and then they get that curve, keep it simple, and they get this sort of curve up and they get that, that ridge in through there like so, okay? Then we're gonna come down this structure and get the, the elongation of the nasal teardrop, but it's gonna be almost a straight line, but it curves outward a little bit, like so. About the length, a little bit longer uh, than the eye orbit. These are very close. And from here to here to here to here, they're very, very close. And so we'll come in and pull that downward. This turns in a little bit, and then we'll get the slight, slight upturn of the septum division. And then we'll get that rounded maxilla, maxilla coming in right up and through, about right in through. And through here, this protrudes a little bit further up and over this rounded ball. And on, on through to the bottom part and then through the maxilla about halfway. It's going to be pushed well past uh, the orbit. It'll be quite, quite past and quite past the um, temporal ridge right here for now. We'll see that through here. Okay, so let's pull out the orbit now. We'll strengthen this in first. Let's pull out the orbit in the brow ridge first. Remember we get that downward trending hyoid uh, 
angle right in through here and we get that downward trending idea coming across we're going to feel the temporal ridge over about right in through here coming through we're just thinking about how this eyeball is placed in this skull over through here this comes in through <clears throat> and around of course this is just on a big sweeping curve a little bit lower than the apex of the nasal cavity. Sweeping curve, well off into through in through here, well off through here. Simplify that for now. We get that curve in through here. Then we get the zygomatic arch coming back over a little bit lower than the nasal cavity. We get that feeling coming in through right into that. In through here, down push, and then we get that again, that angle pushing off of the zygomatic bone, the cheekbone here in front, a stronger attachment here. Get that angle pushed, okay? Right in through here. This curls around. Remember this curling in through here, so we're kind of right in through here with that to there. Just feel that over. That's important to feel, so we get that structure on here. Remember this, this uh, maxilla now comes and feel, we feel it rounded in through like so and around. We're gonna take off the mandible, we're not, we're not certainly not gonna get into the teeth. Right in through here, this rounded part wants to come back through here. And I can, I've seen different angles for teeth too as well, I've seen lots of variation. I see that coming over and then a teeth feel look through there, we won't get into all that. Okay, so we have that feeling pretty good there. Now let's talk about the orbit and the zygomatic arch together. So we get this glabella center parts in through here now, right in through here. And it starts to tuck under a little bit deeper, really a kind of a deep ridge in through here. The nasal center of that bone is right here. Now it's here, okay. And then we're gonna get now the orbit. So we'll start to feel this orbit curving a little bit here. We're on kind of a disc. Okay, this feels blocky, my view, the view we have, and down through here. Remember that area where it kind of splits off? So we're kind of riding through here on the side view. And this 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 bone will split in two. There's a little bit of a separation of this, this temporal ridge coming through curving and then we get this around like so. So it's kind of like you can think of it in the beginning as kind of an oval then it gets sort of bow like in through here and this is where it gets ridged it wants to come in this direction. I'm just going to bluntly lay it in first and then up and through. Remember that curves in you get a little bit of, of um, lapsed curve as it moves in gradually then gets a harder ridge running through here that little area where muscles attach here and it gets kind of rounded in through here and in the inner ridge right in through here and then we get this overage in through here where we get really ridge proper of the the eye socket like it so and then it wants to come back and overlap and touch itself and then come back come back in like that. And then we get, this pushes off, this pushes down a little bit in through here. We get a little shading. So it's not quite flat square. We have a little ridge and then we get to the zygomatic arch in the temporal ridge proper. This curls back in. We get a little bit more sophisticated with its shape in through here. This may be a little long, but I'm okay with it and I can come back a little bit more of a curve to help. It's a little long, but it's okay. <clears throat> this pulls out, we get that hyoid bone angle in through here, coming downward. And you get that real trend coming in through here a little bit, curved over, like so. And this pushes back. This is kind of a flatter top shelf of a box, but slightly angled. This wants to curl in a little bit like that. And then you get a little bit of pull with some bone, like so. So we have that. Okay, now, going pretty well here. 
the next thing is to feel the eyeball function inside that funnel box in a profile. So I'm going to redraw that. Remember that idea up here. So we get that split. And the funnel, the eye orbit is also at an angle. It's not straight. So that's a difference from the little quick diagram I showed you that helps get his concept. So it's like this. And it comes down and in. If we're kind of taking this part of the skull off so we can see in there, it funnels slightly downward and in and does this inside there. So that eyeball is going to fit nicely in here, but there's not a whole lot that's going to be coming out of that brow. That brow is going to protect it up in here. It's kind of like a little shelf, especially in men and guys. But we get some we get some Frankensteinian things going on. Some deep guys. And when you're a kid and you start to see uh, some kids develop a little bit early, they get that Cro-Magnon look at the beginning, you're like, whoa, it gets scary for younger boys. It could be kind of funny. I remember the, that kind of happening when I was in school. Okay, I digress. Didn't mean to bore you there. All right, so that funneling here, the eyeball, just peeks out here and then gets in there, wants to stay in there nicely. Fits nice and snug with a little room for muscles that, remember, they pull off, pull off, and they pull off their pupil and iris, right? And then the corona will make it a little bit more pronounced, kind of in through here, right in through there. So that's kind of what we're going for. So to put that eyeball in through here, you're going to get some overlap in through here. Kind of feel your way through it, smaller than you think. About right in through here. This is where we're going to feel that eyeball proper. It all faded out. Now, I probably should draw all of it in through here. It's coming through transparently. Feel that coming through that eyeball. It's going to be so important to imagine that if you want to take your drawings to the next level. Be able to imagine that. And, it, and it's circular. It's a true symmetrical, spherical object. That's the great news. You know what? Rejoice in that for a moment is that you don't have to conceive of anything difficult. No matter what point of view you get, a, a very extreme three-point view, you're always going to get a circle. You're always going to get a sphere, which um, if, you, if you have trouble drawing spheres, you, you'll overcome that, which is a little bit nicer in some of these complex muscles and bones. And so you get a little bit of ease, ease off the difficulty. So mo no matter what pose you get, you get a, a circle and re well, really a sphere. That's what we're really saying. So I'm going to put, we're going to imagine the light source above my hand coming down. So that would give this a little bit of a cast shadow look and feel on the ball itself. So we can illuminate the ball here. This would ridge over. This would be more illuminated, but you might get a cast shadow right there off that, that bridge coming coming in through and around. This would be in shadow more so, the brow. And then that would dip in and through here. Bridging in through there. And you might get more cast shadow right in through here a little bit. So this dips in. All right, so we have that. And so now we can put on our pupil and iris. And we're right on the edge here. So we're looking straight out, right? We're looking straight out. And so that's important. So all we're going to see is really just a darker feeling of it. Now you won't see the corona. It's there. But we want to talk about it. And the reason why we're going to talk about it, we make an issue out of it because it's not really there. The lower lid never goes past the the bottom of the corona. That lid will never never go past there. So it sits here and then starts to come down. The upper lid can sheathe over, but the lower lid will not. So pupil and iris and corona are there, and that's all we need to see of that. This might turn away a little bit here, so we'll put a little bit of, of uh, shadow. Make it nice and smooth if you want. I'm not a big blender. I'll, I'll probably do more blending later on in diagrams, but, and we'll talk about that technique in another, another video. But. For diagrams, I doubt as much, but this will get a little darker as this goes in kind of a cast shadow in through there. So that ball sits in through there. Like so, and remember those muscles and nerves, it's kind of a cone shape for them coming back in through here. They really move 
in this kind of direction, in this kind of direction. And that's all you really want to know. I'm, I'm not interested in any more than that because we don't ever have to draw it. That's important. We're on, we're on surface anatomy, functionality, and when we need it, keep that in mind. So this ridge in through here is strong. Moving through and then over and down, right, down, down, down across. In this, we'll get a little bit. This edge as it turns in will get darker and through here. We get a little bit softer pencil. There we go. This will get darker as it's turning away from us. Really curving over and keeping that angle true. Keeping that angle at the high O bone angle, it's really, it's almost 45, 40, 45 degrees. Rhythmically in tune with this whole feeling of structure coming in, coming back in towards the face. Keep that rhythmic, rhythmic uh, feeling in tune with it. This comes in a little bit, the zygomatic bone, and there's a little ridge here if I show up underneath it. It wouldn't be necessarily true profile, but I'll show you anyway. Just to feel that this is ridged through here, so it can show a little line. This basically wants to turn a little bit. That's important in through here. And then the maxilla comes in a little bit past this arch in through here, past where the eyeball would be. It starts to come down, the past maxilla in through here, and then come down to get the back teeth, teeth in that horseshoe part. Of it. Not important for now. This will curve back over. So there we go. So we can put a little, a little bit of uh, maybe highlight, a little light area. And so you have to be careful with this view. I see a lot of people put the disc over through here. We don't really want, we don't really want that look. That would be a no-no. Frontal prominence here, and then the temporal ridge, temporal muscle would be covering all that over and through here. All right. Put a little white charcoal. Test my white charcoal a little bit through here. So this, if we were hitting the bone here, it could be pretty shiny. Direct light, about 45 degree coming down. That would, we'd feel that, then feel this maybe gloss off a little bit. Right in through here, so it's lighter in through there, coming on down, in through here. This might get pretty, pretty light, the zygomatic bone, and the arch coming through. You might feel that a little bit more. Just a little lightness in through here as it turns over a little bit, curving through. And now on the eyeball itself, so the light's, light's hitting down this way, boom. And so we're going to get some glossiness on this eyeball. This is a cast shadow. Right in through here is the bone. Make sure you know this. This is the bone, the orbit in through here. Make a big issue out of that. Push that darker right in through here. And this little area of shadow, this is a cash out, it's a little harder edge. I can maybe soften just a little bit on the eyeball. Because I wanted you, to sh wanted you to see that and then we're going to get some light on this ball arcing through. And you'll get some highlights on the glossy ball itself too. They'll never be as strong as the pupil and the iris because they're darker but I'll make it lighter than the orbit separation from the uh, temporal ridge, the zygomatic arch part. Right through there, just a little bit more. <clears throat> it shows up so much lighter on camera. It really is very dull uh, where I'm drawing it out in my, in my setup, and boy, on camera, it's like smoking bright, so that must be just, just traumatic. See how much more you get from the pupil and the iris? Because of it, its location, it's a harder edge than you would get on the gelatinous part of the, the eyeball itself. And you might pull out a little bit of, of light along that nasal bone ridge, maybe under through here, just a little bit. This curvature, just have fun with it. Feel the form of the skull. Okay, so there we go. So we've got the placement. I think we've got that down, down pretty well. I think we'll move off. We won't do a three quarter. Now I want to go on to the next topic and that's probably, it was for me the hardest one is putting on eyelids on the eye. That was bedeviling. And I'll talk to you about who is the, the supreme master of teaching, teaching eyelids and still is and who I borrow from all the time. 
and his name, if you don't know his name, his name is Ber Bern Hogarth, and I had the pleasure of, or I guess it was the pleasure of working with Bern Hogarth, um, at, not, not actually working, but sitting in on his class when I was a student in L.A. at Art Center College of Design a couple years before he passed away. So I felt really lucky. I never got to take his class. I was assigned somebody else, but I actually sat in on a couple of classes of some other students, with some other students, about three or four, and it was truly a remarkable experience for many different reasons, and I'll tell you why when we get to that. Uh, try to keep you awake, give you some anecdotes as well. Most, most professional artists where they train, they have some good, some good anecdotes, uh, some good stories, if you will, about um, the who's and what's and whatnot. And so if you, if you know who Bern Hogarth is, um, I highly recommend his book, uh, Dynamic Heads, or any of his dynamic drawings. He's a real big, big comic book guy in the 50s, 60s, and beyond. Um, the world famous kind of guy. Boy, was he was he a hard teacher. Wow. Talk about scary. So, he truly was a scary, scary teacher. Uh, but then he could be sweet too. Okay, so let's go on to the eyelids. We'll, we'll start putting on eyelids. I'll talk to you about why that's freaking difficult. And then I'll give you some anecdotes about uh, Bern Hogarth. What I, I knew him for three or four classes. He's a pretty, pretty interesting guy and just a world-class uh, comic book artist. Okay. Okay, let's look at now the eyelids and what, I'm, what I call the volumetric, uh, volumetric, uh, volumetricization of the eyelids. Say that a bunch of times really fast, right? So the, uh, I'm just gonna call it the, giving the eye, the eyeball structure and the anatomy a volumetric quality. So it's a little bit simplified to really get the concept of how eyelids fit into and onto the surface of, of the eyeball. And I got this technique from one of my former um, instructors, again, Bern Hogarth. And he, I think his um, uh, discussions on this topic were pretty, pretty interesting. Um, if you look at his book, Dynamic Heads, you'll see it in there, and I got to see it firsthand when I was um, a sit-in student of his when I was at Art Center back in the late, um, the mid to late, uh, mid-90s actually, about 94 I think or something like that. It's a couple years before he, he passed away unfortunately. He was probably in his early 80s when, when I had him and still teaching. It was just pretty amazing. Uh, very confident, interesting, and scary dude, and I'll tell you a little bit about that more in a moment. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put this skull in the, the eyeball uh, 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 symbol here that I'm using, uh, put it to the side in a moment, and uh, we're going to make a diagram in this lesson with eye anatomy. We're going to put six eyeballs down. We're going to do them f uh, first. So I'm going to work in uh, charcoal and um, and on you know, actually on newsprint, so medium and hard, soft charcoal pencils. And so we're going to put six six eyeball forms down. I'll show you how we'll start this, and we're going to lay down again for the eyeball itself, very much just a round a round ball circle to start out with. We really want to feel each drawing that we do, and from now on. Uh, the eye as, as an eyeball rounded uh, form and so we'll use that symbol of the circle to really kind of start everything and the great news is is that in any position that you're going to draw whether it's going to be from above or below or kind of a normative view or side view um, it'll be the same starting point so that's part of the the purpose of, of this is to, is to see that and so we're going to be drawing a front view a three-quarter more of a profile view and also a couple of other top and a slightly bottom views so you get a feeling for how all this can start to to play out a little bit a little bit better these these concepts you just kind of commit these positions to memory and once you start to understand them you can draw them out of your head and then see them clearly when you draw the model, that's what we want to get to. So this really works well with anatomy. So we're talking about now the anatomy of the eye and moving on in this part to 
the eye, eyeball and eyelid, how it moves over. Notice I didn't say eyelash. Um, eyelashes, ours handle them so differently. I'm not, I'm not gonna talk a lot about it. We don't really even talk about them as a form. They're kind of this wispy, just value because they're little hairs that come out of the eyelid itself, the protective brusly hair structures. And so I will say, I'll probably talk about that in the next, in the next part of our eye anatomy when we finalize and go to living anatomy, draw from uh, models and reduce the, the anatomy down to its structures, is to uh, be careful drawing heavy, heavy uh, eyelashes. It gets very amateurish, uh, kind of cartoonish and silly really quickly if you're, not, if you're not careful. Of course, if that's what you're going for, then that might be a great thing. So, all right, so here we, we have laid down, we'll have six different positions. So we're going to start out with this one. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the directional quality of the eyelid. The eyelid in a frontal view and from now on, there is not a straight on uh, kind of symmetry. So we're looking for generally kind of an arc at about 45 degrees in many viewpoints, about something like this. And I'll, I'll, what that means, I'll tell you in a moment with the eyelids. They're not a symmetrical almondy shape. They are not symmetrical, so they're off, off balanced uh, to the eye. And keep that in keep that in mind. And then the structures really wrap around the eye. So one thing I look for is to feel this idea of where the tear duct in the plica. Semiluminaris, that's another term we'll use. I'll just start uh, reducing it down to plica with our third, our third eyelid. And it's about right through here where the exposed eyeball is, and there's a little sheathing of it. Then it gets to the uh, uh, tear duct about right through here. It's kind of like, remember that pulley we talked, or the pivots we talked about here and over in through here. That's kind of where these eyelashes will end to. Now, the <clears throat> The, eye, the eyeball itself is round and we're going to have a little bit of play with latitude and, and longitude. So I'm going to push the curve a little bit here and we'll see that where they come together we'll feel later on where that uh, iris and pupil is right in through here. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. The eyelids, the upper eyelid is more active, it's longer, it sheathes all the way over. The lower eyelid is about resting almost always and about at its ending point about halfway through the eye. And it sits under, right underneath the cornea of the eye. Remember underneath the, the iris in the, the pupil, the cornea covers it, it all. Make sure I say cornea, not corona. Cornea covers it all, and then the uh, lower eyelid will sit just about right below it, sometimes a little bit underneath it, depending upon the view. So that's something else that we can, we can um, delineate. So as we start out with the eyelid, we want to get that wrapping feeling around. The reason I have these, these arcs here, that's where the highest point of our curvature will be. So we'll come down here, kind of just feel this out, commit this to memory over time. I'm going to put some more um, drawings in the back of the video so you can copy them and work from them. It's a really, you know, it's a really difficult um, problem to solve drawing the eyelids. It's not easy. It, it bedeviled me and I still get them a little awkward at times. So you just, you just keep practicing. And so we'll come through that tear duct. We're just laying in kind of the, the action of it through here and over and around. And we see as we come through the deepest part of the curve, it's kind of where that axis is here and here. And then it starts to traverse slightly straight, but then obviously on a movement gradually downward as we get to roll, roll, roll across that uh, eyelid here and down through and it's going to cover that eyeball and then overhang the top eyelid will overhang some in through here so we're just getting the rough feel of the the form turning in through here okay the, we're going to volume it give it some volume volumetricize it i can't believe i'm going to have to say that word often that's going to i'm, gonna, I'm in trouble 
<laughs> It'll be great. You get to laugh at me messing it up. Volumetricizing. So the apex of that curve about right in through here, then up and through, and the lower eyelid will sheath, turn on the form itself on the eyeball, and then tuck underneath the um, uh, upper upper eyelid. So that's important. So let's give that now. Think about a little bit more volumetric kind of quality. So we'll come over here. We'll wrap over. This will come down the tear duct further in here, and we'll start to play off that into here. So this part will be the tear duct in through here, and we'll move up. This will be the bottom of the of the uh, eyelid. We'll make that 3D. I'll show you that now so you can start to feel this, what's happening in through here, up and through, up and around to about right there. And that's really where it starts to just begin to turn like so. This is the pleca. This is this area, the tear duct, right in through here where this pleca membrane right here bumps up against the eyeball and the tear duct right in through here, that little area right in through there, that's the that's the pleca semiluminaris. So I'm just going to call it pleca for now. So you don't have to remember all that. But that's a little third eyelid sheathing that comes over there as well. So we're going to come across this form here. Get that top part of the eyelid in through here. This will come over and start to wind its way downward and around. And start to run right through here, just kind of straighten out and kind of curve over. So it's like a hood coming through here. <clears throat> this will sheath over here, this top outer covering. And then we're going to give it a little bit of a, a a volumetric kind of feel right in through here and that's the other part of the eyeball coming up and over like so. so this is very much a covering of that whole quality of the eye <clears throat> so we'll come on down a little bit here and around That hood do there. This will hood around and then break off and turn, kind of flatten out like that a little bit. We'll tighten this really hard edged kind of quality and through here. <clears throat> we'll get some contouring line later to it to give it latitude and longitude a little bit further. Coming in through here, and this will sheath over now the other side, kind of the, the outer part of this eyeball right in through here. Kind of, you can feel the edge coming in through there. This is a concept, kind of uh, idea of the eye. A little bit higher, flat here, a little bit as it curves. High point about right in through here, a little bit over for the top, and then right in through here, it'll start to really turn downward. And move in through there like so. So we're going to feel the top of this eye ball structure, just the ball, the, the spherical quality of that coming through. <clears throat> so we have that. Now we'll get this, feel this bottom lid a little bit. So coming off the tear duct into here, the bottom part, a little straighter in through there. <clears throat> Then we'll start to come downward. Feeling off that eye, it's going to feel like it's really curving, you know, along that eyeball coming through here, the lowest or the, the high point of the curve, remember? We want to feel right in through here that uh, asymmetrical apex of the axis point. Right in through there. I kind of turn my pencil, I'll turn my pencil to the side and kind of just got it through. It gives a kind of harder, clean edge to that most of the time. I just ruined it. Then I come back sometimes and 
hold the in the pin the pin holding movement too as well. Draw it as whatever your natural movement is as well. Through here. There we go. And that's gonna come up. Now we're gonna feel this lip of this edge about right in through here as it turns. Kind of feel it. It'll be about guesstimating here. Right, right in through here. You can look for these, once you get these structures down, kind of memorized, you just draw them over, you start to see on the model clear as day. Right in through there. This will come around and tuck under, and we get this sheathing under here. This will be the whole ball in through here, back, right? And then we get <clears throat> the underneath sheathing about right in through here, that lip of the I kind of eyelid, kind of like that. This will come through a little bit, like so. And we'll come around the other side, so we can bring them two, the two together here. The tear duct over here, through here, Polika running through here, <clears throat> coming through, kind of wrapping and turning a little bit. <clears throat> Start to feel that. And through here. Just that brow and kind of wrap up and through here a little. Right in through there. <clears throat> so let's pull down this lip edge, the top here of the, the lid coming through. And it's going to come around and then get a little wider. So we come through and over to its widest point and then turn for us in through here then we can start to feel this lower lid edge kind of turn and wrap around underneath here a little bit further like so <clears throat> I like to put this bottom on just to kind of get that 3D lid quality because there's the lid doesn't there's skin underneath this eyeball so it retains goes back to just the eyeball proper itself and through and through here so we work our way around coming through this with this lip to over and then like so. <clears throat> so it's a generic light source kind of shining, I don't know, kind of maybe in the middle right through here. That might be fine for this one, kind of coming on down. Line this up and through here, underneath. Catch that harder edge, and through there. <clears throat> this might come down the nose. The side plane of the nose might be about right, and through here over. So this will be gradual planing coming down, just to get an overall environment around it a little bit. Feel that through a little bit better. So we're getting that membrane quality that volumetricization of the eyeball now. Just like we've done with the whole figure, we're getting in kind of a micro feel for these structures now. So the Baron Burn Hogarth story, so I got to sit in on some of his classes. He kind of allowed that, so if you had a different professor assigned, which we had back in those days, you didn't get to pick your classes as much as they picked them for you. And so I never had him, but I, you know, I knew he was world famous, and so I wanted to sit in. And so we did, and boy, was I surprised at the level of intensity that he brought to his classes. It was sometimes a shouting match, and he was pretty, pretty angry. But he, boy, was he brilliant. So he would, he would, um, and please look him up, Bern Hogarth. He, don't, don't get me wrong; it was wonderful. He was intense, and I love that. But. He would come into class and we would talk about politics for a while uh, to get started. And he would go into lectures for the first half of the, the day. It was an all-day, eight-hour class. And then we would break for lunch and come back. And that was well enough. 
because um, he could be pretty scary in his demos, even talking about subjects and looking at your your drawings. But then he, we would have an assignment in class. We'd all get in a circle, uh, our desks, and then he would assign a drawing. And I remember the one that the time. The, the times that I sent, I forget forget the other, it was three, three times I sat in, but one was David and Goliath. And we had to do it in ballpoint pen on newsprint. And I remember, I thought, well, I'll be different, and I'll do David, the story of David and Goliath, where David overcomes Goliath in, in the Bible, in the uh, uh, Christian Bible. And um, the I decided that I would do Goliath, overcoming David and so I, I thought I'd change it up and change the drawing. And you had to draw it out of your head and ballpoint pen a newsprint and he came over he would come behind you and he saw my drawing and he went into an absolute tirade. He didn't cuss but he did say some goddamns <laughs> and it scared me to death. He's like what is this? This is not David and Goliath. This is this is absolutely absolutely wrong. I don't know what you're what you're trying to go after here, and it just frightened the, the devil out of me. And um, we would critique these, and he would kind of award the, the the best drawing of the day. Well, I didn't get any of them at the time. And it was really difficult because you had to draw the story out of your head, these figures relating, and use his techniques. And then, of course, you get you get critiqued in front of your class. So it it, it was pretty pretty intense and it was certainly flustering in that but it made me it made me better and I'm, I'm so glad I was able to to kind of sit in on his classes some um, definitely the better for it so those are my Bern Hogarth stories so as we're sheathing over the eye we're gonna put this top top um, uh, volumetric quality over here I'm just kind of tightening this up really taking great pains like so to kind of clean this up a little bit and notice the asymmetry of this of the lid so this is pretty much you know a ridge we want to think of that as a shelf along here this shelving of the of the eyeball in, in, into here so let's uh, finish this out coming through and over Like so. So definitely look up Bern Hogarth. Dynamic hands hit. He was a he was a brilliant genius at comic book art and drawing the figure, especially from imagination. Just a master, master, <clears throat> and scary. All right. So let's get the eyeball into here. So I'm just gonna uh, tone it down first. The eyeball inside to get a rounded you know quality that we want. And then I'm going to come back and put the uh, iris and, and pupil on there. Talk about that for a moment. So we'll just start to glaze over this structure here, the eyeball. Kind of have a, a light kind of coming slightly from above, slightly in the middle, if you will, through here. <clears throat> okay, more hard edged those charcoal pencils in there a little bit better. There we go. So we want to feel the roundness of that ball. And then we'll come across here and give us a little, little movement. And the thing about Bern Hogarth I forgot to say in his defense is that outside of class, I saw him a couple of times early in the morning. I would get there early, and I caught him once, kind of walk in the hall, and he saw me, and he would he came over and said, "How you doing?" Put his gave me a hug, put his arm around me, said, "Hey, do you want to do you want to go get a cup of coffee and a, maybe a muffin in the in the um, in the uh, cafeteria, which was which is beautiful, big window, modern windows, big paintings on the wall," and I'm, I'm like, "Uh, yeah, okay." And, and we did, and he was, you know, he just kind of talked on drawing and stuff. He didn't really ask me that many questions. Um, and I just, you know, I was dumbfounded at how sweet and nice he was. And then we got back in class, and it's just as if he turned into the devil. And that's really, that's really interesting. I think it's a product of how uh, he was trained when he was a young man. And it had to be in the, in the 30s and 40s, I'm guessing. 
because he started making a name for himself, I think, in the 40s, 50s, and he did uh, Tarzan comic books. So the, some of you older students out there, you might, from all over the world, you might you might know those uh, as well. So pretty interesting, uh, amazing kind of uh, experience to have to have with him. I'll never forget that. He was like your grandfather, your sweetest grandfather in, in out of class, but in class, wow, it ripped you. So, I don't necessarily have that teaching philosophy with my students. All right, so we get this eyeball here. Notice I'm just kind of wrapping around it, getting this rounded quality through here, rounded quality through here, a little darker into here. Okay, so now it's pupil and iris time. So, we'll pick up the ball back again. And again, you'll notice that we're looking kind of straight on. And we want to kind of get a latitude and longitude kind of bearing bearing on that pupil and iris. Now, this is not as complex as, as what I have, obviously, and what a real eyeball is. But to get that feeling, so we're moving, you know, kind of in this direction. You get that axis longitude, latitude around the foreman through here. And generally, that pupil and iris is gonna the, the pupil is gonna sit right about the uh, excuse me the iris is gonna sit right about that base of the lower eyelid uh, lip there the ledge called a ledge so and sometimes it'll be even overlapped depending on how high the eyeball is but it can sit and there's variations but it's generally gonna sit this lower area in through here unless the um, orbicularis oculi it's kind of contracting up the eyelid and pulling it back up the upper eyelid to make it even even kind of more open like it's really surprised of you you can get that so we have that so let's put this on now the the uh, the iris in through here and I'll try to kind of make it would be sort of a mid value coloring and then we're just obviously monochrome here charcoal so we get that feeling Of that coming through. And so there's kind of an inner ring of little galactic crystal looking kind of structures. An ophthalmologist would tell you, be able to tell you more. Optometrist, ophthalmologist. Which is pretty interesting if you've gone, if you you know have glasses, etc., you go. There's the plica semiluminaris around this little darker area, which a little 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 membrane is sheathing, kind of like an extra eyelet. And then running through here is the tear duct. Running through there. So if you've ever cried, you know. Like I did when I was a Bern Hogarth student, I cried. Okay. I didn't, but boy did I want to at times when he when he when he singled me out for my uh, Goliath beating David. He's like, that's not the story. You can't do that. How dare you? And I was like, hey, this is a, you know, I was like, oh, he's going to come over and talk about how great my drawing was. That probably wasn't so hot either. <clears throat> and then the pupil, remember that opening right in through here. This allows the light to come through, pass through the cornea, into the eye, and into the lens, and onto, I believe, reversing that image onto the back of the, the retina be kind of upside down, I believe. And if we have that, there we go. Now one thing, we've got that on pretty nicely. And it's, the eye's looking a little bit off, which is totally fine. Um, and I'll put some harder edges, go back and clean up these edges, we'll make sure they're crisp. So a couple of things now. Yeah, latitude, longitude lines. Um, and also the uh, eyeball wet glossy uh, area uh, is, in, is important too as well. So <clears throat> we'll come across here. I believe this brow would kind of feel, you'd feel it about right here. <clears throat> yeah, let's see about right into here. Make sure you guys can see right into here. So it might be a little bit darker into there against that eyeball itself. Come across here. There we go, around and through. Hit that edge. 
is we want to feel this as a shelf. So if we came down here, down where it's hard to see the dark, up kind of around and through, back up the shelf. So somebody, a little tiny organism, a little tiny human could sit on that shelf and then curving in and under and then back over the, the ball and then back down a little bit and through. We get that kind of that kind of feeling. That's important. And of course this this whole system, right, pulls pulls around like that. Very important to kind of to, to definitely to, to know that um, as well. But kind of rounded kind of quality. I'm gonna bring out a little bit of of um, lighter value on the lid right in through here. And then let's put on the a, a highlight on that I'm going to use my electric eraser here. They're, they're nice. So the, the, the light's hitting about 45 degrees off the structure of the eye. It really happens in the pupil, pupil iris area a lot of times. I'm going to put it about just right here. And tricks on that, it, I like to add the highlight last as a subtractive uh, measure meaning that I subtract it out. See, it just starts to bring it out. And remember, the, the highlight, what makes the highlight so glossy is two things. It's very, very light in value, and it's got a hard edge um, with glassy, glossy, glassy structure. So I'm bringing the edge, just tightening the edge around that eye, and then we get a very glossy, kind of glassy, eyeball structure that that you want that you're that you're wanting from your from your drawing okay all right so I think we've got that let's move on now to our next position I'll just kind of clean this up as we're going say just a little bit right into there all right let's go on to the to the next one all right, so let's now tackle, we're gonna tackle three quarter view of the eye. Um, and looking this, let me bring it up. So straight on roughly, notice how mine's a little bit slightly looking to the left. Now we're gonna take a view where the, oh, the whole eye structure, the head is actually moved this way. So all of our drawings, unless I say differently, the, the eye will be for the most part looking straight ahead. And now we're going to do three quarter where it's looking about three quarters left. I think a really tough position to tackle. Now, remember that the pivoting point will help us. Those two edge points along the uh, circumference, kind of the equator of the eyeball. The eyeball is basically round. It's about, um, I went back and looked at some measurements in my notes and looked at it um, in some uh, anatomy information online. It's about an inch. Uh, American measurement inch. I don't know what that is in terms of uh, the metric system, but it's about an inch inch in diameter all the way around. So let's find that pulley now in through here with that pivot point about right in through where we're going to put this. Tear duct will be over here, the end of the eye sheathing, kind of really the same because of the circular nature of the eye right in through there. The difference is we're going to be looking out this way, so we'll kind of come over and feel this idea of the longitude here and then maybe the latitude uh, is about right in through here where we'd see that kind of over. So we're, we're you know, we're thinking, I'm thinking about the, the pupil and the iris, the iris pupil kind of roughly right in through there. I generally like to put on the lids first before I get back into the, the kind of just the, the painted structure of the pupil. Um, and the iris coming on through there. So notice how I keep, I'll go back over to my other little demo and tweak it a little bit. Isn't that annoying? Sorry I do that. All right. Trying to be perfect. All right. So <clears throat> let's feel this out a little bit. We've already had the roundness already laid in as we did all our six. Let's think about now the sheathing quality of this. In a three quarter view, you're probably going to get a brow kind of slightly. Um, covering over the eye a little bit more, probably something I'm thinking along the lines like this coming down and over, and this would start to get in over there. The nose would be on this side, on the left side. Uh, <clears throat> the nose area, nose cavity, and then uh, the nasal bone. So something like that kind of coming over, and then we get the eyeball kind of coming down this way 
and then I'm thinking the <clears throat> opening of the eye about running through here. Let me let me let me be a little bit more stronger with my con my drawing to show you right in through here. The apex of the turn about right there. So we're really going to feel that that opening and closing point even further, kind of pushed over the apex almost all the way over here, like so. Coming around, and then the duct would be out, pushed out a little bit, and then kind of around in through, in through here like so. So we're gonna feel the sheath over, really curve over here. I kind of just, when I think about the lid, that lip ledge over here, like so, um, and it's really kind of like this, isn't it? This, we did a little bit of a box. It's like that's kind of like that. So you get, you know, a darker plane, a top plane coming down. Is I, try, I tend to kind of vol I give it a kind of a value already, and then give it a tighter edge later on. This is going to come down even further, kind of like that. This wraps around in through here and then we come around the ball like so and then the bottom lip of the lower lid that we would see would probably be about and that's probably going to be more lit so I have to be a little bit careful to keep that roundness of the eyeball in through here something like this and it sheaths up uh, and there's a little distance from the end of the eyeball as it covers over you get that real strong covering now like so, kind of in through there, and it would come up underneath, always underneath with the lower, the lower eyelid, and through here, and then we come down. So if we feel this out a little bit further, this would start to come over the lower lid, and when we get into the plica past that, there, and start to come down and through here. This would get over. There we go. Get us into that duck region. Tear duct here, a little bit thinner. And it gets a little bit round. Down and thinner. And then we see that shelving, kind of that blocky quality. Up and over and around. So we have duct here. And then more of the pleco membrane. Kind of coming through pretty tight with the, the lid and through like so there we go <clears throat> and this is going to come through now like that now we're cooking so we'll come down <clears throat> this is going to open up getting this bottom eyelid the bottom very bottom part of it through here <clears throat> a little bit of apex, and it's going to dive in further and through here. There we go. Okay, we're coming down through around that form. I'm going to get a little bit harder pencil. It's a little bit. A little bit harder. Let's see if this one's a little harder. I think it's a little bit darker line. <clears throat> yeah, a little bit better. <clears throat> Come through here. here we go. <clears throat> Got that. So you can already see the, the position difference. Pretty strong. And I think this is a harder eye to draw to getting that lid. There we go. So we're moving this across. There we go. Yeah, it's a little bit better pencil. There we go. Feel that roundness in through here. We're going to bring down this lower lid in through here. This would actually probably turn a little bit more in. And then come out like that. There we go. <clears throat> Kind of come through, and then this would start to curve downward along the ball, and then start to really straighten out, but make that journey's turn across, kind of like this. 
There we go. And then kind of come over. And the end of the rest of the ball is about right there. There it is. Sometimes these charcoal pencils, you be I've got two mediums in my hand. One's a little bit darker and one's a little bit lighter. Sometimes I don't know if they how they calibrate them when they put the clay in them, but sometimes they can be a little bit off. They're great products in general, but boy, sometimes they get a little bit funky. So we have that. So we'll bring this down. It'll get a little bit of shadow in terms of that. So we're coming across. Okay. So we'll tighten this up a little bit further. And this will come around this lid in here. I like to separate that again. You'll see that wide point here and then coming on through and up as it turns probably about right in through. Like so. There we go. So it comes on through. So I like to use a little bit harder pencil to get that guideline and then I'll come back to something that's a little, little softer. This might turn in a little bit more and through there. Underneath. This will really turn through. So the lid on here on the top will be a little bit lighter. I just kind of can see the light coming, kind of coming down, maybe this way, coming down, hitting hitting the source about right there, kind of like that. Just for diagram's sake, we have that. Come underneath. That might get a little cast shadowy underneath there. Darker in through. We might feel, let's see, coming over here, the side plane of the nose might start right in through here. This might come down a little bit. Kind of feel that gingerly coming off in light mostly. Because that ball ending is about right there. Really get that extra part right in through there. <clears throat> All right, so we're moving now. Moving and grooving. Now let's get the ending over here a little bit, be lighter line. This is going to top part is going to curve over a bit here. Like so, this lid kind of coming down and this will tilt it over. Curve it, curves back. And then the end of the ball is about right in through here. And then also, probably going to feel. That's the end of the ball. It's going to be a lot lighter. Maybe hotter and brighter right through here. Mostly put a little bit of tone there. And then the the um, brow coming over. Here's the full ball with some sheathing on it of the lid up and through underneath the brow actually. And then the brow comes over the actual superciliary arch. I don't know if I mentioned that in the other videos, but that's the true fundamental name for the brow, the superciliary arch. That's Orbit's brow. This would kind of, I feel like this would come over here. Yeah, like so. And then, yeah, this would move over this little shadow into here. This will be on a curve, gradual. This kind of sticks in skin-wise and then kind of curves in. And then kind of comes together right there. So we have that. <clears throat> so in my mentoring program that I have, Mentoring with Mark, I will never yell and scream at you like Bern Hogarth. I promise you. I've already got some nice uh, students already. I'm, tr I'm working with so certainly feel free if you're out there I'd love to work with you um, here we go but I, I will challenge you that's just to be expected but I probably won't yell and scream although there might be a couple of students that would, would think otherwise every now and then <laughs> if students are really lax or if they're lazy they're absent that kind of thing tardies <clears throat> So the brow then would probably pull over a little bit further down and through here and curve over a little bit here and kind of cascade thing. Remember that this is the nose side. This is the medial side, lateral side. 
to be really professionally accurate, I guess, and anatomically. Medial side gets to the mi middle, lateral gets to the side, side movement, lateral movement. So underneath brow, about the bonier structure running through, this is kind of like probably shadow actually, right in through here. And on over, see how it curves over. So the brown, the orbicularis oculi that sheaths over that would get that movement to come over and keep on going, probably be all the way down. Oh gosh, probably somewhere down in through here, actually, because you're getting this zygomatic arch too as well underneath. I'm gonna get too far down there. A little bit of structure, but it gives a little bit of anatomy around, around the whole thing. I think that's important. I'll soften this up just a little bit, like so. <clears throat> Now let's put on a sheathing for the for the ridge of the uh, underneath part of our <clears throat> eyelid through here, and look how that apex is high to low. Look how tilted you know that is. That's pretty that's pretty important to get that accurate because we're not it's not a true symmetrical kind of opening or circular or almonds, you have to be careful about that. So we'll come through and downward. Just kind of feeling it over as it comes through here. Let's see. Around. That looks pretty good. Like so, and then the top. There we go. So I learned these from memory. And I've got them several drawings in my notes. And I went back and did a couple of practice sheets before I did this video just to make sure I was clean with it. And I've got them out just in case I forget next to me off screen. And I'll, I'll include them in the diagrams. I'll include some more notes and get some different other points of view. Some are better than others. I still, to this day, you think it's a very challenging idea to put really good uh, eyelids on a ball. Simple sphere, right? It ain't easy. So give yourself some patience and time. So let's uh, let's put the top sheathing now on this uh, eyeball. So about right in through here, I'll start to break it off up through here, coming on down in through apex high. That means I need to start curving downward, and I'm going to wind up, you know, right in through here with it, and I'm curving downward along that way. A little bit higher curve, like so. Not too bad to there. Blend that through and get a little bit of toning underneath there. And then the full ball again is about right. Make sure we don't lose that. Full ball here, full spherical form. Right into there. That's the pivot point we had before. Show you that. And most of this can be kind of back in a little back in shadow where we'd have this brow ridge in through here this is going to help you so much with observing what's going on with eye structure and then we'll get a little bit of uh, toning here it'll be lighter here and moving into kind of a highlight there and then downward quality start to get darker and darker, start to blend through there. Get it over into here. There we go. Like so. I get pretty dark over here underneath. So let's get now the eyeball and the up uh, the whites of the eye first and through here, just a simple Simple white ball structure, hot, a lighter area right in through probably here, coming across. There we go, just kind of work it through. I just lay that pencil down horizontally and just start to glide over. It's not easy. 
dark rover into here. There we go. <clears throat> Lighters through here. And then a little bit darker right in through right in through here. Get a little bit of that coming through. Clean this up a little bit when this comes together. Just bring that all the way over actually. There we go. It feels pretty good. Darker right in through here. The plica, that little line basically, that membrane behind it, and then the tear ducts back over. Right in through there. All right, let's put the uh, pupil, the iris and the pupil on there. Let's reconfigure where we're looking at through here, the latitude and longitude. So we think about a line coming through and then downward and then kind of curve back on that surface, right? Curve, curve, and then out for that shelf, three-dimensional thinking, curve through the lid and then over the eyeball, and then this would kind of come down the, or orbicularis oculi and then there's a little bit of ending point would probably come down like like so like that okay well let's feel the iris okay so remember we're, we're going to be on an, an ellipse in through here slightly turned a little bit more on this side a little bit less on this side about at the base, ending about at the base of the lower, the lower lid through here. And sometimes it can be covered up by the upper lid. I'm going to put it about at the base too, most of the time. The sleepiness you have, or laziness or sleeping, drowsiness if you will, you have this lower lid lower and then really alert you have um, the upper lid higher and you've got white space in between and sometimes when you get a real surprise you get um, whites in, underneath the iris on both and if you get Clockwork Orange which I love that movie Stanley Kubrick if you've never seen that movie go see it warning it is pretty raunchy and scary but that makes it great um, you get you know that torture device that they they had use on Malcolm McDowell and it shows all of his eyes pretty pretty much exposed. It's pretty crazy. All right, so let's get across the uh, iris now to a little bit of tone here. Around the eye, just kind of just circle it a little bit and you get all kinds of variation, just a generic sort of feeling for uh, what we're doing here. In the, the eye, um, pupil and iris, Iris and pupil are a little bit more of a of a ellipse in this case because of the perspective. That's why perspective matters in drawing. Right into here is pretty nice. I'm turn this around. It goes up and maybe. Okay, and then the pupil right into here. This gives you kind of the axis line for it. Need your axis. Latitudinal this way, about like that. Not too open, maybe for now. Just a generic look, and then so now we're nice. We're looking off at at three quarter to the left. Whoops, through there, <clears throat> and then we can come over and start to put. I'm gonna erase that little extra line off. There we go. You're going to love the electric eraser if you can go get one of those. They're pretty cool. And again, I always like to subtract out my highlights for the most part if I can. They're pretty wonderful that way. So light source coming in at 45 from the top down. So we'd hit it about right in through here. And I just start to take it off. Sometimes I'll go into the pupil just a little bit to take off a little bit. Sometimes you get two, depending on the type of line. If you have multiple lines, two or three, and I'll tighten this up. So I'll overdraw a little bit, then I'll come back in and just sort of tighten that up. They're harder edge, so I'll take maybe that one out a little bit, reduce this one a little bit on this side, and just keep their edges a little tighter 
and it gives you that glassy kind of look that you that you're wanting out of that. So I'll do the next one if uh, if you don't have an electric eraser out there. I'll do the next one with the erasers, uh, so that way you can get a better idea of how that works out. Okay, all right. So those are three quarter. Let's go on now to um, what do you want to do next? Full profile. We'll do a full profile here next. Okay, so now our next one. Let's go on to profile. So here's one thing to really be careful about when we're talking about drawing the eye in profile. This is front. Okay, this is frontal. That's three quarter. This is full profile. Notice what happens to the iris and the pupil. They almost pretty much just get lost. And so the tendency is to have a, uh, the structure of the eye drawn correctly in profile, but to draw it as if it was in three quarter. Well, that's, you know, the eye muscles, those rectus muscles, those pulley muscles. Remember we talked about when we pull the eye this way and this way, or diagonal. I kind of like to think of it pivot this way. But pulley, pulley, pulley. Well, that's pretty tough pulling when you're all the way over here and then you draw the eye like you're here. So getting a tendency to almost eliminating the pupil and the iris in this, especially the pupil, maybe just a touch of the iris because it's really just a sliver, just a sliver of it, okay? So I think that's good advice. You definitely want to heed that. The, the idea now with the eye in profile, what's interesting is you have a kind of a 45 degree aspect from the uh, the lid to the opposite lid, it feels kind of like this idea. And it could be the opposite way if you're drawing the the, the profile. Now we're we're going to be looking at the eye from uh, the let's see the uh, left eyeball and the nose. The nose structure would be over. We would be over here. Just FYI on that. So we're going to be looking out this way make sure we got that. All right, in terms of profile, so the nose is over here. So we get this 45 degree aspect. That's gonna be interesting too. Now the, kind of the hinge point where the pivots would be, would be roughly now out and over here, about so, and then inside to about probably here. We won't even see that because it'll be covered up. Just FYI on that. The, uh, the first thing we'll start to feel is the, the probably the, the, the brow is going to be pre really cover a lot in this perspective because we're from the, the definite side. So we're going to get a lot of eyeball coverage. It's probably going to feel something like I'm looking at my past drawings and then feeling my way through this. Probably something like that. And sometimes I'll just get out the old, the old skeleton and through here in profile and take a look. Take a look at that guy, and you can see where this, you know, the eyeball is going to sit. This brow is going to cover. So we're kind of drawing the underneath part of that, that orbit with um, some brow muscle on it, uh, tissue muscle and stuff underneath, coming through like so, and then downward, covering over, and then we're coming through this orbit. It's going to feel kind of like that, and then we'll keep on coming down. The the eyeball now would be right here. We can feel that through there a little bit, and we just keep on coming down. The orbicularis oculi would probably be somewhere down, kind of in through, in through there. So we get that feeling of that structure moving across there. All right, so eyeball here, brow. To feel that it kind of it's really wrapping if we kept on going the orbit and the orbit would end back up and through here and over and, and down a little bit orbicularis uh, oculi kind of coming up and through there so we get that feeling coming on through and now let's start to get the angle of the list I think of them as triangles in profile so here's what I'm talking about so about from here, think of it kind of like greater or lesser than symbols. Make sure you can see this. So I'll draw it down here. Greater than or lesser than kind of symbols, right? Basically just a try. If we're going the other way, it'd be kind of like that. So I kind of see that. And we're going to be on a little bit curved later because we're on a curved surface. But the first thing I look at is kind of a triangle here to that pivot point there. Okay. 
and they were sheathed over quite a bit, a little bit of uh, a decent amount, kind of in through here, the sheathing in through there, and I kind of put the end of it kind of run right in through there, almost like a little cartoon Spartan headgear. That that Martian in Looney Tunes, I forget his name. Um, it kind of looks like that one, that one-eyed Martian. I forget his name. I'll have to look that up. It's pretty funny. And this will come back in a little bit, like so. So we'll feel that, and then the the other part coming down at 45 would be here for now. So I start out at then that aspect kind of coming all the way through, kind of coming like so outward, and then that's going to come back in to the um, and around to where the tear duct. We're like in the inside of the eyeball, looking in like it was glass. It'd be up in through there just to keep that in mind up in through here. So we have that aspect. So that's what we're kind of working on. I see that from from draftsmen when they draw eyes from a distance, this kind of straightens out and I think that's a, probably a good uh, way to solve that problem. But when we get closer, you're going to find that we're going to get more of a curve. Let me show you. So coming across that eyeball here and then it's curving and then that, that, that membrane of the lid wants to curve in a little bit more and then come on out like so and then come on over and then keep on going it's a round tight eyeball and then we'd probably see it right in through here start to overlap that's what I have in my notes and we could have done it from observation but I wanted to do it from conceptual point because we'll get to observation, we'll see that. Do here, and then we get this lidding structure. Remember, it's wrapping around all the way back over here. See how we can see it on the inside? Then we imagine it coming over and through, and down and around. Thinner, and then immediately thicker. Getting pretty quick over there. That's why perspective drawing is important. Don't forget about formal perspective. This will help with all that. My students whine about it here at the university, but it's so true. Okay. And they're coming on over. We're coming on over with that eyeball lid. And that's going to tuck in and get thinner. And they would eventually probably just meet. So there we go. We've got that bottom lid. So you see how we started with that, that triangle, and then we started to get the anatomy closer to what it should be more curved as it's hugging across that that eyeball proper. And this will come down, we'll get the, the underneath sheathing, this will come out at, at a 45 degree aspect, like so. See how it's pushed off the eyeball, because that's a thickness, it's about this thick. Just keep that in mind, this little thick, thick lines. That's not eyelashes. Notice we didn't draw eyelashes. I don't draw, I don't talk about eyelashes much, because they're usually just symbols and dots, and mostly just dashes really quickly just to get the idea of it, wispiness of it. This is curving around, this gets thicker here and then wants to come back up as it curls here. So it's very much a straight line like that and then we get a curve maybe a little bit bottoms out a little bit wider. Kind of curving up underneath so we get that aspect too as well. In through here. I think I'll leave this without the shading. I'll save us a little time. We'll do some more down here. Shave a little bit. It's really not that hard once you get it. Now you get a little this brow coming over uh, here. Curves. This is coming over and through. And down. Maybe I'd have to do a little shading here. Over through here. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll take that back. I think I should shade it. Don't take shortcuts. So this will start to get a little bit of tone in through it and through here. It wraps around kind of nicely and you might get a little shadow underneath here, shadow play. Just very gently. Through, maybe a little bit of shadow here, and the line's going to lighten up a little bit. And we get this turn and come a little bit wider. Let's see 
here underneath, across that ball. Here's the ball. Here's the bony part of the orbits and through here. Ending point, a little cast shadow. I get a little softer form shadow through there and over. Okay, and then the ball's over through here, so we're getting a lot of coverage of that ball. That's just the pivot point that I use for helping. There we go. Get that coming through. Tighten this up a little bit. Okay, let's jump on that upper lid in through here. So this aspect of coming at 45, I want to jump this out just a little bit. This could be a little bit longer just to get that kind of that feeling coming through. <clears throat> and we'll come down now with the lid here, upper lid, pull back here like so. It kind of does this for that lip and then we're going to draw the top of the bottom lid and it's going to come down and it's a little straighter and it starts to curve here just slightly and then come up it's perceptually very slightly curves a little bit you see my hand see that line curve just a little bit get a little bit darker into here right through here the top and then it wants to kind of curve just slightly not a whole lot just slightly underneath here can have to be careful with that a little bit. And then we've got this under part, and it's going to disappear on this a little bit. So right through here, this under part of the sheathing, and it's going to come over because that curves about right there, it will disappear a little bit. Right in through, that's the way I see it, right in through there. And we get that disappearance on that and through there. Okay. Just bury that a little bit and we get a little bit of shadow on that ball. Let's get this upper lid <clears throat> kind of finished. And through here, and this would come downward and through here and sheath around the back part. And through there, get that side plane, soften up, kind of turn under like so and go back into this sort of fleshy part. Wet gathers a little bit through the brow, right in through, kind of right in through there. And then we'll come over with the bone through here first, the brow bone, the supercilia, well, the orbit actually. Sorry about that, the orbit. And come over and down, like so. There's the orbit, and soften us up as it transitions up above, around and through, then that would get to the brow. And this maybe a little shadow, a little bit darker. There we go. And now we can get that ridge where that lid would be. Maybe about right in through here, we're going to come on down and over. And this is definitely going to pull over and through there, like so. We'll get that pulling over. <clears throat> rounded quality, then hotter and brighter about right there, and then it gets up just a little bit more shadow. Right in through there as it carries over. This will pull down. Remember this overlaps. The lower will come underneath and go inside and get overlapped by the by the top. So pupil, well, let's talk about the wide of the eye, that space where blood vessels are, that membrane. Right. So let's get a little shading on that. <clears throat> Hottest area of brightness is in through here. Medium to lighter tone value in through here. Kind of going in through you. So you'll get lit in through there and then lighter. And then we're really, as we come on top of that ball, in through here. There we go. We'll start to turn it. It's turning away from us about right in through. Kind of right, I'll put a little line there. Sometimes I'll put a line to show myself and that's where I really turn away. Like so. That's up underneath, that overlaps where that membrane is. We don't see the tear duct or the plica. 
semiluminaris, because we're drawing profile view, and it's covered, volumetricized profile view. Hey, I said that cleanly. Okay. Right. Coming up and through here. And we'll just keep on softening this up. And the, the iris and pupil might be in a little bit of reflected light, depending upon our lighting situation. But you're not going to see much, if at all, and that's the trick. As a matter of fact, I might make this little line right here a little darker, just to indicate it. And that's probably all I'm going to show. Because I don't want you, I want you to be very aware of the perspective of that sphere. The latitude and longitude of that. That's why boxes are important in perspective. In drawing volumetric figures. So we can get a truer measure where that angle is in our drawing. And so where that where the plane changes and here. Because we have latitude and longitude where the pupil and iris show, again, it's the illustration is here, right? Forward, three-quarter, total profile where they really just disappear, full profile. And then if it's too far away, we get the back of the head. But about right in through there, you can always fudge it if you don't like it and do this. And that's cool, I'm not, or do that. But I'm not, I'm going to do, I'm going to keep it right on that, right on that sign. I think that's important. So we're just about there. We can bring this, put Kermit's eye back over there. Our little cartoon eye. It works pretty well, though. Okay, let's do here. Where I would push over. This would pull back. Like so. It's important to kind of get a little bit of geography of the, the eye on the other side, too. This might be a cast shadow a little bit. All right, let's see. There. There are very few part of the areas of a drawing that are truly light. Very few, so be careful of that. Let's get this cut in line a little bit. There we go, and maybe a little shadow coming down off the side, playing the eyeball down and through here a little bit further. Like so. Wrapping around that. And there we go. I think we have our profile profile eye there. Really a very different change between the three of them. No iris or pupil. And we're getting that movement from very open three quarters and then onto a profile. Okay, so the next three I want to do are going to be um, different positions. We're going to get um, a view where the nose covers up a little bit um, and we're going to get a, a more extreme up and more extreme down view to take a look at this. Those get even tougher, a little bit more foreshortened type of feeling. Okay, let's go on to the next one. This view we're going to look at now the eye from uh, a different position. So we've been looking at the eye, uh, uh, looking at it from the front and the head's been turning three quarter and then the profile. Now we're gonna go back and turn the eye in the entire head now. So here we're kind of lined up in this direction. We're gonna turn it this way and look at the same right eye, right? Um, but the nose is going to be a little bit in the way and covering up. You'll get a lot of those, and you'll get those in seven eighths positions where you'll see a little bit of eye. Those can get a little tricky too as well. So let's take a look at that, that general position. So what I'm trying to do is set you up for the multitude of, you'll get more variety of positions here. We just, for sake of time and patience, you don't, you know, we could do 150 eye studies and that, that would be crazy, but about six is, will get us a real general feel. So we're gonna feel in this first <clears throat> coming cross here, you notice how the ball gets starts to get covered up some, and that's totally normal because the brow, we come over it. It's encased by the nasal cavity, the under the zygomatic platform underneath the arch there. It's encased by the, the lateral part of the temporal area and the ridge of the orbit here, and it's also encased by the, the brow, the superciliary arch. I forgot to mention that 
more technical name through here in the frontal prominence this wall up in here so it's you know like I said before it's encased in a box that's really really important so we come down now and we're gonna feel that nose and brow area start to come over it so we feel the nose connection of the um, the really the glabella in through here right coming in through and down and over we're gonna feel the cartilage of the nose come over too as well so that's what I'm drawing so we get a feel for this in a moment in through here and it's gonna come down and over and we get the cartilage the nasal part first the bone part then the cartilage will start about probably about right in through there I'll give it a little bit of hub of a difference and then we'll come on down with the nose and that could get a lot of variation and that's all we'll, we'll need for that uh, that point of view right in through there and so we can kind of turn this over this glabella in through here kind of feel that come up and through the center part here the nasal bone that arching underneath would start about right in through come on down and through here and this would continue to come over a little bit a little bit wider from the point of view all right so we have that let me let me give you a little bit of the the ending part of this maybe coming over so we can start to feel this nose ridge come on down so you can really get a feel for what's what's happening make sure we're dicing the camera there seems to be really really good there coming on through and over so we get this curvature coming through and up through here and over and we get this around it so now we're getting into the the brow area, the superciliary arch. I'm going to just con continue to call it the brow so I can just maintain my sanity. Like I said, I'm a big, I was a big stickler on names for a while and when I was a student and then you'll forget them over time because you'll just draw naturally and you're like, oh, it's the brow, that's the eye socket, and that's this, this muscle thing. But you know the form backwards and forwards and that comes through time and muscle memory and you just got to the, the better you draw, the easier anatomy will, will be. Full disclosure, if you're not drawing well right now, anatomy is not going to be the big answer to all your problems. Um, drawing basic, simple volumes and solids, like in the basic section, there's your answer to your drawing problems. This is feeding your knowledge so that your drawings can, get, can move beyond um, really uh, technical, intermediate to very super advanced. That's, that's something to be very mindful of, actually. All right, so we've got the ball in through here, and this is part of that brow ridge coming coming over. Let me get a little bit, uh, maybe the, have, show you the feeling of the end of the brow in the, in the zygomatic arch and the end of the orbit too as well, up a little bit higher actually. Let's, let me feel that. Through here, this one's not in my nose. I'm just giving you this one, so I've got to think through this one. So this would feel about right through here. Coming on down, feel that around. Let's see it coming on through here. That feels pretty good. All right, so this should be out here, a little bit of shadow. That should feel ridged coming down. Yeah, that feels pretty good, technically. All right, this would flop over. This is the end of the bone, right through your nose side, obviously. And then this is the, the frontal plane of the nose. Of course, it would dip down the side plane through here. Let me show you that a little bit. There we go. All right, so let's let's put on this uh, eyeball a little bit further. Put on the excuse me the eyelids of the eyeball and through here. So we're coming across. And you kind of have to think the pivoting points. Remember that would be hidden both of them here. Probably we get see maybe maybe a little bit over and around through the eye and probably about right here where the tear duct would be and the um, the plica semiluminaris kind of right in through. We're not going to see that, so we don't have to deal with that again, kind of like we did on the other side over here. We didn't see that uh, too as well, so that helped in our in our viewpoint. Okay, so we'll come over in through here, and we'll start to wrap this around. You're going to have that, that 45 degree imbalance of the apex, the axis point of those coming across. We're still in the same eye, we're just getting it from a different point turning around. So we got to feel this up, this height, about right in through, kind of feel it here underneath, in through here, kind of curling around and coming over, sheathing over the ball here, 
This is not the plica because we see the plica on the other side. Uh, and the plica can be stretched when the eyeball is really in contraction from the opposite side of the plica from here. If this move, this, if the muscles were pulling over and this eyeball was pulling over here, we'd see that plica emerge a little bit further. It's kind of like a little third eyelid. That's what I've been taught to think about it as. So. All right, so moving over here. Here's kind of what would be the axis for we, the, the iris and the pupil in through here and downward. In through here. Downward coming through. Of course, that would get us all the way down to there. I'll kind of draw through it so you can see that idea. Kind of coming in through here. As it curls around, really the high point even further, probably even further over actually, right about there. It's almost, almost around, and then we can kind of come around the top. Kind of feel that, and I'll, I'll tighten up the edges. Make sure these edges are really crisp later on. You want a crisp edge through there, so I can crispen up this top lip, and then we can come on down the, the run of the eye. And you want, can you remember we're volumetricizing the, the, uh, the figure. I'm going to pull out that curve a little bit. Volumetricizing the figure in the eye. Um, you can do that with all the parts. I may not do it as much. The eye especially. I really loved Hogarth's training with that that I got. And it's kind of stuck with me how to see the eye. It really helps you get a very, very confident um, eye structure. You can think about spheres and flapping. Flapping over. There we go. And coming through. So we'll come through the ball here. We're coming back over so it turns in and through. And we're going to wrap this form around this top eyelash here, and it kind of you won't see it curve and flap over like here and here. You just won't probably won't see it. This will actually curve back in, so that's going to feel different for you. Sometimes you don't see that. And then we're about three quarters this way. Seven eighths is even harder. <clears throat> and then we'll give a tightening of the the edge of our. Here. In through and coming downward. And then we're going to move this, curl this underneath one up. Now we get the apex in through here. So curving in, really curved and up and through. It's going to feel like this. Y'all can draw through that. Don't be afraid to draw through. All that will disappear with, with value if you're doing a full value rendering. So you feel that. It's good to feel that, that um, invisible transparency of a form through here. Right in through there, we're going to curve in through here pretty quick. We're going to curve that, curve that, curve that, and come on up. And then we're going to get up into here. Like so. And so, that's the inner part of the of the eyebrow ledge. Remember it's like a little ledge, a little patio. Right in through here. <clears throat> and then this is going to curl and tuck and kind of disappear. I remember. Right in through here. And then come on through. And if you once you get these really settled in your mind, practice them. And you'll see, and you'll just you'll be able to draw them from your memory, your imagination, pretty well. 
The great thing about the eyeball is that from any position in perspective, difficult foreshortened heads, it's still just a round ball. It doesn't change. That's that's the glory of it. That's the easy part of it. But then when you start to put the eyelid in the eyeball, that's when it gets a little dicey. It gets a little harder. Coming around and up. And we get that ridge nice and clean. Coming through. Draw that through just a little bit to feel that through. And there we go. Now we can start to put on that bottom kind of lid area. It probably might get close to the end of the ball, which is right in through here. There's a little bit of difference. I'll show it running right through there. And so this would start to come around like so. And if it goes a little wider, then it would start to cut in because it's going to cut in and up under. That would come over and through. Get to the pleak and all that good stuff and get to about right there. So I'll leave it kind of there at its highest, relative highest point a little bit. Use it as a relative guideline. There we go. We just don't want a symmetrical football Egypt eye. That's what we're trying to, to get away from. No offense to wonderful Egyptians, which I've been to Egypt. It was a fascinating travel by, by every stretch of the imagination. So if I have any Egyptian students out there, I'd love to hear from you, from YouTube land. Hit me up on a, on a say, say hi. I'd love to, love to do that. I was, I was in Cairo, I was in Aswan, I was in Kamabo, Edfu, Luxor. Um, I didn't get to Alexandria, out of all the, most people go there, unfortunately I didn't. Uh, and I was in Elat, in, um, what's the other side of Egypt, that's Israel, what's the other side, I forgot, I think it's Taba, I was at too as well. <clears throat> So this is going to come underneath and we'll get a little bit of tone in through here, shadow. <clears throat> through. As that curled over, now we're coming underneath the ball, the brow comes over, see how that cases over. So it does really house it quite nicely, doesn't it? This comes over here, sticks in through, and we're gonna get this coming through. This is gonna this ball is here. And this is probably this is gonna flatten a little bit, this brow casing. It's gonna flatten through a little bit. Superciliary arch and some some pretty pretty good uh, perspective. This is actually the inside this the end of the brow is actually should be way way up higher there. There we go. Turns out a little bit better. This is where the furrow starts. And that's going to come way up. And actually bulb in. I don't want to get to the other one, but bulb in a little bit further. Like so. Alright, so let's get on the ledge of the, the other upper part of the eyelid to get that more consistent. This is going to come around. We're going to feel this. Like so. This is going to wrap through, remember? And we can say that it will disappear. And see how we just feel it all the way through the head. Got to feel that. Down and over. And that's going to get us back into the... Let's go ahead and draw that. Let's go ahead and draw the plica. We would see that pretty clearly here. A little area here. And then we'd see this come over, this come in and flatten, and we'd get the duct. This ridge coming on down. See, so see, we can see it inside. We'll tone this in more and make that this almost feel real transparent in a moment or two. Tear duct area, this kind of housing in through here. Plica, semi luminaris, right in through there. It can come over right in through there, and this will get a little shadow. This get a little bit of a this turns, it gets a little bit square. Right in through here. There we go. 
then we might get a little bit of uh, value here that's kind of kind of ridge underneath here. Like so. There we go. So now we can get the eyeball. We'll pull everything in except for the pupil and iris and we'll work with that in this last round. So this a little tone here. And we'll work our way through. Coming around and over. Like so. And we'll get this to feel rounded and pull back a little bit. One thing I will say about profile is you do get more of an eyelash area coming up. So if I did a little profile, I'll, I'll uh, eyeball here and a little bit of the the um, hooding of that coming down and this kind of coming over like so. You do see this kind of movement a little bit more. See I'm just kind of giving it through value indication. Here's the brow coming through there. Right cheekbone starting just starting to emerge coming through there. You get more of that. Other areas you have to be careful. The more you make an issue out of eyebrows, it should just feel like little value changes. And that's going to be a subtlety you're going to have to figure out um, for yourself a little bit. But eyebrows are very ephemeral, little light areas of hair. So we've got that. Now let's get into let's get in now to this uh, idea of the iris and the pupil. So coming through lat latitude and longitude, longitude here, coming through here's about the center. That would be a little bit over further right into here. This will kind of come down and we'll kind of belly up a little bit off the ball, coming off the ball and around the ball, around the ball. Down through, coming off, down through, right into the very boom, we'll hit that, and then coming back slightly downward trending. It's actually, it's actually, it's a curve, to be quite honest, but we block, we give it some volume, and we severely limit its, its volume a little bit. And then that comes on down here. This little gathering of the last part of the ball. Maybe the ball's over here a little bit further around. Here's the rest of the look how that right into there a little bit further. I think it looks like a little Spartan soldier, kind of a cartoon. Oh, it's funny that way. And then down, and then of course we drop down. In in that way. So the the uh, Iris, let's start to feel our way through it. Well, maybe we should shade it first. So let's shade a little bit around. I like, always like to do that first. It's easier to do it that way. So the light source is a little hotter in through here, so we'll start out with a little value in through here. <clears throat> Sorry about that. We, we'll still see that line coming through. If you want to do it the opposite way, that's totally cool. All right, so and we'll be a little darker on this side, just cascading. You know, it's really go back to your simple, basic understanding of of light on a sphere. It's the same, same concept. Doesn't change. Once you master that, it opens up a whole world of techniques for other things. So if you're still struggling with light on simple geometric solids, practice, practice, practice that. This will make these other aspects of your drawing understanding just shine and be much more golden. So I think we're kind of there. It's going to work out pretty well. All right. And then let's go back and get our, our iris. So we're kind of at this kind of relaxed open eye. So this axis here, axis here, it's the center here a little bit. 
that's how I look at it. Just feel it around. Maybe we'll give a little bit of space on this when you can. Sometimes they can vary. You you get a lot of variation. Remember, we're, we're drawing generic concepts of an eye that help us with our more specific discoveries. Running through here, across, through here. All right, so we have that. And let's throw on a little bit of tone. That disc that sits on. You never see really the cornea. I think God didn't say corona. I'm so embarrassed I made that mistake in the first, but I left it in just to show you that we all we all miss it. I think it's kind of funny. Because it really proves my point, doesn't it? Is that it, the names are names are important, don't get me wrong. Corona, like the sun or like the beer, Mexican beer corona. But what's really important is the remembering the form. How do you remember that that form? This should be pushed over. This line should be a little bit over in perspective here to down and then down through a little bit. But you get the idea if we can do this to that, this to that kind of idea. And so I'll just develop my generic eye look. And then this time I'll, I'll erase out the, the um, highlight with the, just a, a non-electric racer so you can kind of see that. There we go. Like so, kind of work around it, kind of get a ringy thing feeling going. There's all kinds of variations, colors. Pupil will sit in now about right in through here off that axis kind of in the middle. There we go. I'll put a smaller pupil opening this time. They can vary. Again, you get lots of variation depending on the amount of light that you get on the uh, hitting the eye and opening in a room or wherever you're at sun. Obviously, don't look at the sun, but if you did, your pupil is going to get pretty small, pretty quick. There we go. All right. So now, um, without a uh, electric eraser, what do you do? Here's a couple. Of, here's a cool technique. I've got my um, Japanese mono eraser, and I like to take my eraser shield sometimes and do this and pick a little area with your eraser shield. And I might take this little area and just kind of erase through it and use it as an eraser. I can get kind of a hard edge through it. I like to take something that's kind of a template and see how I can get a pretty glossy look pretty quickly off that. And then I always come back and give it a little bit of a, a harder edge through there, kind of right through there, just subtly. You don't have to outline it too hard. Right, let's see that this might get a little reflective quality. And I think we're on our way with three quarter eye on the inside, different from this one. So we're seeing the other side of that same eye, just different, different position. That's harder to draw when you get these spots. You can go to seven eighths where you're not, you're almost profile, but not but not quite, okay? All right, so now I wanna move on to another eye look is an eye where we get a very much, we're looking at it from uh, below, so we would be down here in getting an eyeball look um, from uh, underneath the head and we're looking, looking up to it. Okay, let's go to that. We've got a viewpoint now I wanna take a look at where we're getting underneath an underneath look. So it'd be more like, a little bit more like, here we are straight for your point of view. And so a little bit more like this, where we see the eye uh, do something a little bit more uh, and the head be tilted up and how we're gonna get um, this particular view and the hood to work out together. That's gonna be a challenging point of view. So let's try that. <clears throat> Uh, now and, and take a look and see what we we do see. So if we're starting out here, first thing I want to kind of feel is where the pivot point would be for both these, kind of the same as, as most of them. Um, here and across here to there. So that's where we're going to see. And the nose will be again on the left side on this side. So this is the medial, uh, medial side, this is the lateral side. And so we'll see that pivot kind of right into here. That just tells me where the eye, 
the oddball structure can end a little bit and where the um, the lacrimal area, or excuse me, the um, yeah, the lacrimal area, the tear area, or the tear duct and the uh, the um, <clears throat> the pleca right in through here. So we'll kind of feel that whole area. So I'm gonna really get a feel for this gesture of it because we got the ball and it's gonna be high up. So this is very much gonna be up high now with the upper eyelid. So you're looking at something as it sheaves over the ball a little bit. We're going to get where the end of the ball and the eyelid are kind of going to kind of come together a little bit. And you're going to get a little straightening because of the, the eye sheath. Uh, the lid's going to come over that like through this. And you're going to get that coming over a little bit from what I remember here. Let's see down. And then it's going to come over that balsam. This is the inner lip of that ledge, and we're looking way up into it. Those arrows indicate that. So we're looking way up into that, that area. And so we've got now this thing going here, this curve of the eyeball, and then coming on down the eyeball inside here. And a little bit more sloped. You get a little bit more slope in this view like so with that sheath over it doesn't necessarily have to be completely around the ball is but the not necessarily the eyelids coming over and through here so that'll get you to tighten in a little bit and this will come over this inner inner lid and then the outer lid now is going to come over and probably cover up most of the ball the top and through here whoops in through here, we're going to get up and through. Like so. And then we're going to peek out probably almost like kind of like a slight point. Like so, and then come on down. Get a little bit thin. This gets a little flatter anatomically for whatever reason. Just right in through here, get a little bit straighter, and then we're going to undercut really quickly and come up like so. You can feel that. And then we might get a little bit of the hood of that, of the, um, the upper eyelid around here. It would really kind of wrap, rapture over, wrap over the ball and then disappear underneath because we would just fold kind of fold over, kind of fold this way with I can see an arrow. Just fold back and over like so. That's what makes these hard. It's like, hey, you could draw a circle. Can you draw a sphere and then put forms on top of it in perspective? That's what, why perspective is important. Simple form and then certainly uh, linear perspectives. Worth, worth a study. They're never, it's never a popular subject, even though it, we use it, you use it, it's how you see. That's how what's, what strikes me as funny with students. I don't know, I was different as a student. When I, when I started learning formal perspective, I was like, oh my goodness, this is the greatest stuff since, since wheat bread, pizza. And I was like, oh man, look at this, what I can do with this. So this is going to be a little darker in here. So let's shave back. And so this ridge that we have here meets the top of the eyeball and, and really disappears so we get a harder edge. Or we could keep it a little bit sort of, sort of soft and then hit that ridge through there. Tighter line. Cool. So we have that. And this becomes the ball proper, the end of the ridge here, like so. We have this come around, come around. And we're going to feel this through and around. Through here. Now we're going to get the underside. This is going to get, we're going to get an undertow. So we're going to, instead of looking at it like this, we've been noticing.
because we're looking now up to it, we're going to get an opposite curve on the ball like this. It's going to be important to start to feel your way through that uh, material. So we're going to come through here like so and come underneath. This is going to quickly start to ridge up like this and we're going to get this here. And we're going to come over, then it starts to straighten a little bit, even though it's not really too straight for too long, about right in through the middle-ish area, latitudinally, longitudinally, this would come down. It would feel like this would be about straight. Look at that, how the difference is between these angles now and then this perspective, we're getting it, we'll pull it in about right there. This is going to come down like a ball, because it's a lot of ball flipped up and over and then boom, running through that ridge. And so we get this. It stays almost flat, but then it starts to slowly, slowly cascade. And this is the opposite side from the plico and the tear duct, which will come up in and through like this and kind of get, get curled up and almost disappear. This would come over a little bit. The plico would be here and then the tear duct would start to come underneath the area and then disappear like so and get ridged underneath there. A little bit of the secondary part of the brow casing orbit and through there we feel that a little bit. We're gonna, well, let, me, let me continue on this arch and I'll show you something else that gets more unique as you get this. Because remember, we're going to get some eyeball covering up from this end now. Because we're looking up. So we have this through here. And do it around. This will come down and through like so. Get that. And through. So we'll tighten up and through here, through here, around, and come around. We can get that coming on through. And then we'll start to, this will feel like a cascading sort of under form. Very soft turn through here, very soft turn through here, soft turn. This will come up, light source will hit maybe kind of sort of center middle through. Like so. There's another place that you might like to study eyes from is the Charles Bark plates. B-A-R-Q-U-E. Um, he developed these with another um, sort of a neoclassicist artist. I forget his name. I had to look it up. A lot of still lives and a lot of kind of Moroccan kind of images. I forget his name. It'll come to me maybe in a moment. But anyway, they developed these series of drawing plates that students would use. Um, Picasso and also Van Gogh used them. And they're kind of drawing template plates that artists would use to draw from to, to get drawing techniques. They're called the Bark Plates, B-A-R-Q-U-E, Charles Bark. Charles Barkley, the basketball player, Charles Bark. Okay, and then now we're going to get, watch this. Now underneath here, now this ball is going to be covered up some by the under part of this orbit, right? And we're looking under there pretty good. So we're going to get covered up a little bit. That's going to be important to tackle. So we're going to get some of that under orbit in the zygomatic bone. We're just going to show you this part. So I'm going to pull, I think about rounded through, rounded through, and it's going to come up and over and pick up this arch a little bit here. So it's kind of a, a slow sort of arching curve that um, it, it's like turning, turning, turning over. I'll show it kind of like this first. See how it's kind of just turning, turning. It wants to come in a little bit and just turn it. I can kind of smooth it out the, the width and the contours of it to get that feeling. There's a gradual kind of turning in of the form itself. Right. Through here. So we get this underneath. 
like so. This will start to fade out. We get the orbicularis oculi that would start to cover, kind of come kind of through. It's not important, but I'm going to feel back the eye, get the eyeball back a little bit so you can see how much it's really covered down here. Look at that. It's pretty amazing. We're getting way underneath the ball as we're looking at it. We're kind of like here, more like actually here, the way you'd see it kind of up in through here. So the pupil and the iris placement, iris pupil placement, gets really challenging. Sometimes here's where I really get it wrong. Let's see if I can get it right the first time and I get it wrong without having having somebody to look at, just doing it from imagination. Here we go. I really recommend committing these type of diagrams to memory as best you can. And when you can, it helps you with your observation when you see them. It's actually easier drawing from observation, believe it or not, than it is from these, these concepts. So we get that under turning. This would cascade off slide slowly and off the underneath part. And this comes where it just really attaches to the really coming up underneath the, uh, the eyelash. This would curve over and then get hidden a little bit by the beginning parts of the brow. This is a very gradual turn, but it is coming up underneath, so just keep that in mind. And again, it's where we're here, so it just basically we're turning up underneath, because I have to really turn it up really like more like that, so you can see it. We're really curving into the ball, and then all of a sudden we hit the eyeball. There's a little bit of um, slight hollow, not a whole lot, and then we get the eyeball itself. So let's give a little tone to the eyeball, and let's put on the challenge of putting the iris and the pupil on this bad boy here. Let's see if, see if I can do it first so you can follow me and learn learn from it. I don't always get it right, so if not I'll just erase it out. So this will get a little bit more ball of value. This will come around and get a little bit more value here. Do, 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 come across. <clears throat> through there. All right, so iris. So here we have our axis. I might actually change it. I might actually change. I don't like that line. I actually think it should be more like this. Almost straight, but curved just the opposite way, like that, turning, coming in. Like that through, because we're basically, watch this, we're doing this all the way down, the feeling of it here, and over to here, and then curved, curved underneath. See that? So that gives us that idea. Now we're capturing in, so technically the eye, the iris should be pulled up pretty pretty high there. We've got to be careful not to go too high, but we're probably going to see underneath now. So we're going to get pulled off that eyelid down below the cornea now, because this goes here, right? It, it's, we're going to get a little bit of that white space in through here. Not a, not a ton, not too much, not way up here, but enough. So I'm going to rough this in and see if I like it. So we're going to get some cover up there. And through here, kind of our point of view, so we get covered up. See how that looks. Let's see, I'm going to get more of an oval here this way. So I'm going to bring this over a little bit. This is one of the most challenging things. Remember, we're doing it by concept, too. Even, even by, um, gosh, by observation, it's still difficult, especially here. Pull that through and through here so you get a little bit more of this underbrow, just a little bit coming. 
before it gets bony. We're still, this is kind of soft flesh where it gets lit and it turns a little bit, where it gets a little bit darker. So we want to get up underneath that. So that feels pretty good. And then let's feel the, where the pupil would be. We gotta make it look, it's actually looking relatively straight, but we're so underneath it, you think it's looking up, but there's just really looking straight out. It might get a little bit of coverage or come up to the lip, like so. And that might feel pretty good. We're actually looking looking straight because as we bring the ball down, then the eyelashes and the lid, excuse me, the lids would start to adjust to what to what we're seeing. So that feels pretty good. So I'm gonna darken this linear line a little bit so we can see it and through here. It's a little bit of an oval, but coming up might get a little bit more arced. We felt it up a little bit. Because remember, we're not, this is not, this is the under part of the lid. That's what, don't forget, this is a straight cut in. This would come back this way. And these would go over, right, and cut in. And see that over flapping and then kind of back in. That's pretty strong perspective. Underneath kind of a three point, one point-ish thing going. If you don't know what I mean, go back and take a look at three point, one point in my uh, formal linear perspective. There we go, coming up underneath there. All right, so I'll part to put a little bit of tone across this in the eyeball proper. We'll do it together here. This might underneath here, we could, if the light source is coming underneath where we're looking a little bit here. We might get a little of that little haze of the light glowing. We might get a little bit of um, a cast shadow right here. So plica, this little fold, we might see a little bit more. This is the duct, a little darker. This is that plica. This is the, the third eyelid right in through there. I can see it really strongly sometimes in my dog. I have a little Jack Russell. His name is Thatcher. And he's adorable and a lot of fun, and he'll he has darting eyes at times, and or his head might be in a position, and we will call him when he's on the bed laying down. He'll kind of he won't move his head, but he'll move his big old brown eyes over to you, and you'll see his pleek out really strongly. So if you have a pet, that you might you might see it just really pinkish kind of membrane from the inner inner part closer to the nose, the medial side, and you'll see it pretty strongly. So this comes over. We'll get that ball forming around. Just tone it over all this, this uh, stuff here. So I'm going to bring this kind of a cast shadow coming up. So there's a hard edge where the end of the, the lid of the eye is, and then this gets a little darker over here because it's the light source is coming up. So this lid proper is getting cast a little bit on the eye. So that would look a little rigid. And this would start to taper here and go darker. This would be pretty lit, this underneath, this part I'm leaving light, that underneath the lid, the ledge part. Now does it become a ledge? This becomes the ledge of the top. It's pretty amazing. Point of view and perspective is a lot. It makes a difference. Okay, so eye, pupil, iris area, iris, pupil area. You should always say iris first, but I always say pupil first. I don't know why. And I used to always get them backwards sometimes. Sometimes I say the iris, and I mean the pupil. But the pupil is the opening of the eye that allows the light to come in, that darker part of the eye. And this is the iris, the colored part, beautiful coloring. There we go. There we go. So this curls over just a little bit, so we'll take on that arcing of the pupil. We don't want to. I don't think we want to hide all the pupil, hide any of the pupil, but just barely. 
them out and through here, oval, rounded form, slightly oval for the bend in perspective, just a little bit. So I think that's feeling pretty good in that in that in area and through here. Here. All right, so now we can hit that wet, glossy look with a little bit of a, an erased kind of area. Get that nice upward trend going on, which is what we want. This might be even further to, uh, played off. Won't be as dark under here because this is a stronger cash out. I should push that a little bit. A little reflected light before the plica right into this, it's a little bit lighter, just a reflective light area. And because the light's shining in, we'll probably maybe get a highlight up closer to the top. So I'm gonna use, this time I'm gonna use my um, eraser shield and my electric eraser, which is a good combo. I'll put it right about here, a little bit higher. Like so. You know, if I make it look a little bit more organic, take a little bit more out. It's great in painting because it's flicks of opaque, lighter value. Love to put those on. Or if you look in the sketchbook section I have, I, I talk about using a little bit of a white marker on your sketchbook. Works pretty well. Right through here, nice and cut in tight. Hard-edged lip of that underledging, which doesn't doesn't become a ledge anymore. And we get this through here, and then we're going to go darken in this iris just a little bit more, and I think we're done. Okay, that's a tougher point of view. Hopefully, you were able to get some some good information how to tackle this a little bit. So the last one we want to do now is going to be looking at from above down the eyeball a little bit and see what that's like. Okay, so let's go on to the very last one. So for our last eye study, we're going to take a look at what happens when we start to look at a positioning more like this. So the the, most of our, our studies, the eyeball is looking straight at, at, uh, at us, but it's a normative view, I suppose. And then like this, where we get on top of a four slightly in more significant foreshortened head, and then we, and then we see what happens to the uh, eyeball, the eyeball flaps. Now, in drawing it, no matter what position that we're looking in, this kind of looks goofy, huh? Is that the, the structure of the eye, the, the spherical nature just doesn't change. It's, it makes it so nice to deal with. But where the the flaps of the eyelids, that's a, that's another challenge. So let's take a look at that um, and see if we can handle this idea. <clears throat> so, all right, moving back over now to our drawing. So we've got our last, <clears throat> our last uh, sphere circle going. And so we'll start to look at this and say, okay, so where's our kind of pivot point? So look at a little bit here. We'll pivot here a little bit, and then we're going to pivot kind of still straight across because of the circular nature of what we're what we're after here, here and here. <clears throat> and then we're going to feel in our drawing, uh, we're going to feel some more brow covering uh, quite a bit. We're going to feel, and the nose again will be um, on this side. We'll feel that structure <clears throat> uh, over here where the nose will be on the left. So this is the medial side, that's the lateral side. So we'll feel that in through here. We can start to come over with. What's well, going to be significant kind of uh, brow covering about uh, uh, almost half or a third of it, kind of in through here and over as we kind of feel it <clears throat> where we're at. <clears throat> so it's going to through here the superciliary arch or the, just the brow and through here will come over. And this will come over and kind of cup over and then start to kind of cascade over the ball a little bit and through here this will come come over and catch that a little bit further and we'll come over. This brow will be probably higher than the ball actually for sure, probably up in, in this range. So we'll capture still the ball, the eyeball through here. 
through there a little bit. And we'll come down <clears throat> in through here and around as we catch catch that ball. We're still we're going to see in this view. I think probably make it make it come out where we we bring it over just a little bit downward. I think so. This this can come down the pivot just a little bit. <clears throat> I want to show the. Um, the plica in the uh, uh, tear teardrop area, the uh, not the teardrop area, but the teardrop in through there, and so we'll come down with the brown. This is kind of the bony part looking up up from the top of it for sure. So this eye gets more foreshortened. So we're going to see a little bit now, a little bit more. We'll shade this down. This gets that furrowing way over kind of angled part in through here. This will be a tighter edge for sure. Like that. <clears throat> and then we'll get some, some shading coming coming over. Like so. <clears throat> It's our first thing. So it's going to cover up a pretty substantial amount in through here. And we'll put that in shade a little bit. Like so in through here. So it's coming up a pretty good amount, coming around and through here and up and through. Cascading through here. This is going to come over like so. <clears throat> and then we catch that, that ball back, that eyeball right in through here. There we go. All right, so let's talk about now the flapping in through here. So we've got some challenges. We're going to, we're going to capture, you're going to see the bottom bottom flap where the eyeball ends, kind of like up over here. It's kind of like we're reversing it a little bit in through there. That's going to be interesting. The nose, the plane of the nose might be over here just a little bit as we come over a little bit. It's going to help some through there. <clears throat> and then through here and this, this shaft would probably be out a little bit further than what we want. So it's kind of that idea. So that's kind of that that little plane shape plane as we go get closer, get closer to the to the orbit opening, which would be down just a little bit, probably down and through here. Get that shaded down. Kind of pull it around. Now let's work this. So we've got that pivot. So let's start working a little bit now coming in. We'll just slightly see the plica area. That membrane area and then the tear tear duct in through here coming on down and getting sheathed. It's gonna be downward trending, so we're gonna get something that looks a little bit more like that. Part of that's gonna be over overshot and overlapped by the brow, the ridge of the nose, a little bit coming over and in and through and back up and around. And then let's pull into way overshot in it through there. And let's get the ridge of the ball and the plica that where they pretty much meet together that membrane. And so underneath now, here we're going to get this rolling along, and we still you still find this kind of this arching idea. Watch this. So this is going to come over the top of the ridge of the eyeball, top eyelid here, and then we're going to just dive in since we're looking more on top of it. Not straight on top, but enough to show a little bit of the ball coming through the opening and through here. And we're going to dive in. I'm going to straighten that pivot, straight kind of pivot a little bit lower. And then we're going to curve that just a little bit through here. And then downward, and that's going to curve over. We're going to get a little bit of that. Um, <clears throat> Both of these are too light and soft. There we go. And 
here we're going to get a little bit of this eyelid here coming over through peeking back over see how it gets taken away it gets overlapped a little bit through there comes on through and this is going to sheath over a little bit I and mean, through there this will get darker This will get sheathed over, and then this will overlap, and then have a little bit of an angle here a little bit further, so we can start to feel that curve around a little bit more, and this will come through, and remember this is going to overlap, so it kind of comes down and then wants to curl back in, and then truly kind of curl really more, more distinctively around the ball. Here and through here. We're not going to see any of the edge or the lip of it because we're on top of it. My line should be a little bit tighter line like so. So we see a little tighter line through there and this dies and it comes around a little bit. This can be darker covered up a little. <clears throat> Maybe good to differentiate the light sources coming at it by keeping it actually a little bit lighter. So we'll get this ridge and kind of good. And this all wants to curl in this bone. The eyebrow would be up, up a little bit higher. I'm gonna leave that off, obviously. Been doing that through. Run it through there. And then maybe this would be a little bit lighter so get a little value just to change it up a little bit to keep it moving. Right through here. Okay. We come through here a little bit, up through this outer edge. It kisses up against that. And this is actually the ball where it gets darker. That's that's still the ball there. Right. Now, now let's come down. Now we're going to come down and right in, right where they cover, right where they come together. That's where this this flap will come come together. Here's where the the opening of the apex gets the strongest or the axis, which either or. This is going to dive in almost almost like a U shape. See how that dives in? And we're going to get a nice lip in through here too as well. So this is going to dive in and almost really meet it. I remember this one. This was challenging for a long, long time to get these little diagrams to work. And it meets it and then it comes up and through. And over these little scenarios you're going to see often with eyes once you get these down I would try to draw these draw them from mine and then try to make your own out of your own memory and judge them and then look at eyes in these positions and then draw from them it's really challenging it's a lot of fun hopefully to see what you can do with it and it helps when you draw eyes you just get the you get the sculptural structure of it pretty nicely so we have this lip and through here this turns and through then goes then goes around like so, and then this wants to come back. Really quick turn, and then like a, like a little opposite turn, and then all of a sudden, here we go. There, yeah, we're coming over. <clears throat> right in through, back, and over, really turning in through. We get to the plica right in through there, and then the Tear duct gets a little bit pushed down, kind of like that in this view, like so. So, plica and then tear duct in that area gets kind of down, turns, we're looking more down on it. And this will kind of shave, this will be a gradual pulling in right in through there. You can come over <clears throat> and through here, and then we're going to get this lip. It's going to come over right in through there, nice lipping through, and then a little bit thinner and it gets a little thicker. Right in through here. And then I don't like that. I'm going <clears> to <throat> erase that off just a little, get a little too, too dark there. There we go. Control that out. I want to get a little bit wider right where that apex axis is. There we go. 
Yeah, you can see there, so that's working pretty well, looks like. Then we can start to feel the light source is coming in the middle-ish from the top, up here, downward. This would be mostly in light on the edge and the lip edge, and then this, this would start to get more values around the ball. And then we come around. And just feeling the way down the bottom of this ball. That's where the ball ends. And through here, and that little flap that we have, the little, I think I'm just going to let it meet it. And so it kind of meets the ball, this extra part in through here, that eyebrow hood. We're just going to let it meet it because it's going to, so pushed and foreshortened now with the ball. This will come down. We're like, kind of like so. And that just meets the entire ball right in there like that. And there we have that. This starts to come around. It's a little bit thinner. There we go. Cut in this edge a little bit, keep that nice and tight. There we go, like so. And through there, and through there, and now we're ready for the the um, forming of the eye and the eyeball. I'm going to tone it down first. We might get some nice cast shadow since the light is above and under here, kind of like this one under below. Some heavier cash in here, but protective. You get the idea of, of the brow, you know, lids as being protective hood, hood coverings for the eye quite a bit. And as you, the more you do this, it's pretty amazing how, how substantial they are in eye protection. And we'll come down here. This will just cascade over and get a little bit lighter. Since more light's getting underneath there, and it'd be probably the lightest here. <clears throat> and then come over and get a little, a little bit darker. And then we're through here, and then we're going to start to finish this out. And then we, now we've got the challenge with the iris and the pupil to master it out and finish it out. <clears throat> Think through it. So we'll go to our trusty big eyeball with our little black sticker with the iris. Didn't really have a pupil on it. And remember, these are edges, so this is a lipped edge just coming out like this, right this, kind of down, right, and then out, right, to give you that look. That really hits the end of the ball there, and then kind of starts to pooch out, and you get the orbicularis aurus and then the zygomatic structure, right, and it kind of comes down like that and starts to turn down. You get the arrow just to show you what's happening through there, like so. All right, let's think about now looking downward what that does with the pupil and the iris. So we're looking here and we're looking down on that ball more, probably about running through here. So you can see where that's going to put that pupil and iris pretty, pretty low and more elliptical. So let's see if we can, we can do that. So that's going to be a little rounded here and maybe a little less at the at the top and do you so kind of pooch down a little bit. I always struggle with these a little 
as we're looking down, because I don't know if I should have more white space. It's really a, a struggle to here. So I'm, I'm wondering if we should put, put even less in, maybe in through here, and then down where the pupil will sit more here. So it's kind of, it's a little narrower at the base down here, and it gets a little bit wider. That's how I see it. It's not a true circle anymore. It's an ellipse. We get to see something like that. That's how I see it with the axis line coming in here so the pupil does the same thing. Looking a little bit downward. Like so. That cachet will get a little bit darker inside that, that iris because it's a darker value than the white of the eye. coming down right and over and out a little bit like so. Same thing over there. Darken it in and then there we go. And now if anything I might change, uh, you know looking at that it's pretty good. I have a kind of like about like that. If anything that pupil could go a little bit lower but I'm, I'm okay with it for now. <clears throat> for, for concept for what we have with the eye. So there you go. Those are six different variations on the volumetric eye, volumetricizing of the eye. And it's, uh, I think, of uh, drawing the human figure, drawing the eye, especially, it's a hard challenge to get eyes to look really rounded. So stay away from the very flat eye. And we, this is the technique to start to get looking into the, the rounded uh, form of the uh, eye. It's very important that they can, otherwise we wouldn't spend so much time on it, right? So what I want to do now is go to living anatomy, and that's the part where we start to apply this to the model even further. And we'll do a couple of um, looking inside the anatomy, finding some of the, the skull orbit structure and the, and the attachment of the eyes where it's at, and then we'll do a couple of volumetric eyes from uh, on the model itself. and. Um, We'll take a look at that, and then uh, we'll uh, end uh, in the anatomy of the eye after that, to that run. Okay, all right, so there you go. I'll catch you in a little bit, and we'll go on to the next uh, problems to solve with, uh, with the eye. Hey, I forgot to put the highlight on. Duh, let's get that on there. So we're looking above, so it'd be a little bit higher. Maybe it'd be close to the middle, could be here, looking over. Let's put the glass structure. I can't believe I forgot that. Sorry about that. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, now we can just about end it, right? So I'm gonna just tighten up the edges a little bit, just to hit it. There we go. How, how thoughtless of me. All right. Okay, so there we go. Now we're on to the living anatomy part of eye anatomy. All right, so now we're coming to the living anatomy part of working with eye and eye structure. So <clears throat> I'm gonna do a few things here. We'll do a few different drawings. We'll do a couple where we do just eye anatomy. Now these are gonna be based off uh, image examples so, uh, from the, <clears throat> the regular human figure. And we're gonna try to analyze through what we're looking at, the anatomy of the eye and the eye orbit a little bit and the eyeball. We'll do a couple of those. Then we'll do a couple from the uh, uh, human images of the volumetric eye, so we can see that. And then we'll put it all together uh, a little bit at the end um, and talk about uh, just regular eye drawing and putting it all together. We'll add the brow, the, the, the illusion of the eyelashes, etc. There's things you wanna, you wanna uh, be careful about with the brow and the eyelash that I'll talk about a little bit. Okay, so I'll pop up the first image here. So we have a close up of kind of a straight on eye. Let's talk about and draw the eye anatomy. I'm gonna use just newsprint and some charcoal uh, pencils here again to work this. So let's, uh, and I've got with me also my skeleton, uh, excuse me, my the skull here 
and also the, the eyeball that we can use as reference examples. And I'll kind of keep it with me as we draw, draw here. So let's take on this viewpoint. So let's pick apart the eye anatomy now out of this a little bit. You can have skull reference with you if you want it like this, like I have, or you can, you can try to do it from memory. We'll do a little bit of both. So the first thing I see here is the eye orbit coming through. It's kind of underneath the brow where it gets a little bit um, darker there in, in compass uh, in color and we can see it coming in now. We can see it coming down. Here we are at the side playing the nose. Look at the uh, glabella is over here pushed down slightly. Sometimes it's pushed inward less so in, in the female uh, form, female anatomy of the skull and more in males. But sometimes it can be pronounced. It's just it's basically you're going to have to learn how to read it from the the, um, the live model, and that's really what makes uh, drawing exciting. So we've got the eye socket coming down and over. We're kind of at here at this point, coming through and down like so with her anatomy, and then we'll bring this orbit over down and through, so we're kind of in through here, and then that inside and through there is where that tear duct in, in uh, the plica start to emerge and come through. So this, this truly kind of laps over a little bit through here, like so. And we come down the orbit, this is where it's lighter because the light source is from above, it's natural outdoor lining, and you get this movement around the orbit and through here, it's a little bit underneath, it's about right in through there actually. Here's we start this outside starts with a little bit of the of the movement come down, uh, coming down to the zygomatic arch, and so we can start to pick <clears throat> pick that up a little bit further off the base of the, the slightly the nasal cavity, in through here, and then downward and through, kind of coming around like so, and over. <clears throat> And we get the zygomatic arch here on the other side, high cheekbones, and through here, coming on down. <clears throat> We're kind of in this area now of the anatomy, through here, kind of coming over, feeling that around, feeling that around. <clears throat> so we want to be able to learn this from the human, human form as you draw, so you can apply it to your imagination and also your observation too as well. There we go, we'll bring that in and over and around. <clears throat> it kind of gets shaved down in through here, zygomatic arch, temporalis arch coming together, zygomatic bone in through here. We get that angle of the cheekbone coming back in through here. We're seeing through the anatomy. Again, a diagonal about 45-ish degrees through here and around, curves that anatomy around, right in through there, <clears throat> through here, this comes out, this bone comes out, right, comes through, so we're observing both the skull and her form, put it together a little bit, this is going to be an anatomical study, and of course that zygomatic bone comes back to the back of the head all the way, gets us back to the ear canal, and that's all we need to see really for, for that through here. We'll come through again, so we have this coming over and down, zygomatic bone and through here, and then this starts to remember about halfway down, that's where the maxilla starts and the zygomatic bone tends to fade off a little bit. This gets shaved around, you can see it in this kind of area in through here. This gets shaved down a little bit. You can see that. <clears throat> As we come through here and then we get this 45 degree movement right this way. Okay. We get that coming through now. We get the zygomatic bone here starting to curve under like so. <clears throat> All right, this kind of curves in on itself. It's kind of ridge. This pulls back like so in through here. And then we get this coming down further 
the Mozilla. A little bit early there. <clears throat> you can pull that back in. Right about in through there and then downward. And that's all we need right in through there because that will curve around. And so, and then we get a little bit of the, what would be the mandible structure coming through. Down and through here, a little gap and through. In through there and down. And over, we see that. Over like so. And so now let's get in through here to the nasal cavity. You can see it knows we're still working with eye anatomy, but we're getting all of it. The superciliary arch are just the brow parts. As that brow, the eyebrow sits on top of that superciliary arch or just the brow, we get this furrowed look as it comes over the brow structure. Right, coming through here and over, okay, and then this is ridged like so, like so, like so, coming down, coming down. And the trick is to start to apply this to your drawings after you work with me in this first one. Do the same thing on your own with studies from life, from images, and both really. But if you can get it from life, it's even better. Always better, right in through there. And then the nasal bone in through here, you can see, start to see the arch. It's not as buried as deep back as, as men. Females are, tend to be less so. Nasal cavity, right in through here, the glabella. Nasal cavity, arch of the bone. The nasal bone comes up higher. Then we'll come on down, right here. And then we'll bring that down some. And through and about. That nasal bone about halfway down in front that ends with the cartilages about right in through. Right in through there. And that starts to, as you know, starts to teardrop out a little bit like so, like so, and over. Alright. And curve around about the end of the <clears throat> zygomatic arch in through here. Roughly. It's, it's amazing how those little points fit together, isn't it? Right in through there, right in through there. Nasal cavity here, and that's enough to, to worry about there. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get in now the, the eyeball, put the eyeball inside there a little bit further. And so the ball will fit nestled in through here. We've got to give some room for the muscles right. Remember that the, the cross of the plus sign muscles that we have in through there, we're working in through there. So the ball, even a little bit smaller than I have it so started out with, right about right in through here, the full ball. And so you've got to think through just where the wide of the eye and the, the iris and the pupil are. So you're right in through here, that circular almost really perfect spherical form inside there so we have that right in through there think of that through now we're going to leave off the eyelids well maybe we could put them on maybe so let's see how that goes through here this turns in a little bit and it starts to cascade in a little bit right we get this plane of the nose coming down through here the side plane and through here the nose cavity kind of coming down this gradually moves gradually moves in through there so we have that and so we have that opening here so we've got remember this those muscle forms sitting on top here right grabbing over muscle form here sitting over grabbing over this one here remember the pivot and the pulley idea being able to make that eye go and in diagonals, up and down, left and right, medial side in through here, and over. Muscle coming through there. There we go, coming down. This can get shaved down a little bit further. Just tidy this up. All right, and then we can put the the pupil and the iris and pupil on. Remember latitude and longitude. Of just thinking about where they go right in through here of the eye structure there's your iris right 
in a little bit now of the pupil. Start to get to and through here. Right in through here. And she's in quite a bit of shadow. You still get that glossy kind of feel. So we've got the pupil here. Right in through there. And then we'll give a little we won't put the um, in this one we won't put the lids on this one in through here we'll keep that anatomy there and again remember how this gets this this orbit gets shaved in a little bit gradually turning on inside and through there you've got ample space right in through here to fit fluid and muscle and, and anatomy through here in tissue that it sits in. Remember that ball in a box idea. That's so important. Through here. Coming down and over. <clears throat> Auxilla. And then lastly we can Give a little bit of a little bit of shading to the ball further. Like so. out this way and through here so off through observation and understanding and knowledge we can put together a final image here and then we'll give it the ball a glassy look so we're taking a peek inside the box if you will the eyeball orbit, the anatomical box. Kind of gets that fiber thing. Just a quick show of that and through here. Like so. Around. Alright, let's put on a little, little eyeball glistening. We'll take the old electric ration. You've got so many different little parts split up. We'll put like two or three. Flicks of, of light coming through. I'd like that to put back on, and then we'll come back a little bit and kind of retouch that, give it a harder edge. To hear those, those highlights. To hear. There we go. All right, so got some living anatomy. Taking this idea now and doing it, looking at it from life or an image. In this case, we're close to life. Try to get life if you can. Use yourself in the mirror. Um, be creative with it. Use friends, family, significant others, spouses. You name it. Anybody that can help you out. Models. Work on this at a model workshop if you're like a college student or your continuing ed type of student. And so there we go. All right, so let's move on to another pose here. All right, so let's go into this pose. We've got, what's our point of view here? Point of view is from uh, below looking up at the eye, a little bit challenging, more challenging point of view. So let's get a little of that structure into here. Let's talk about that. So we can start to get the brow part superciliary arch in through here so she's tilted this way a little bit through here so we got that arch structure in through here can come over and get a little bit of the side of the brown the labella in through here where the nose cavity is about right in through here the nose would start to come off this way a little bit and then we can start to pick up that arch the brow arch 
further on top, it curves in. We're starting to get the curve in through here. So see how that curves in? So that's, that's a divot coming in. We're really looking at this coming in through here. So this curves in with the tissue and, mu and skin and muscle fiber. So we're cur curving into the, to the eyeball. Remember the eyeball fits in there snugly, but there is room for, for um, some, some play and, and some uh, sta stabilizing stability. So we have this coming through, so that's curving over in this underneath part. And we get to here, the orbit itself starts about right in through here and comes down boxy kind of form, but we're in a side kind of perspective. So here and down and over. So we get this through <clears throat> and about to a little bit underneath actually, about right in through here. This would come a little bit lower. So we get that. Then we start to come around and through the bottom of the orbit, top of the zygomatic bone, arch area. And we have that coming through. And then we start to cascade down. So here we are coming over here and coming downward through this area, getting close to the temporal ridge, right in through that area. Okay, so we have this over through here and downward. And this is kind of through this orbit opening and through here. Now you're going to see this transition uh, through here as it gets uh, gradually uh, moving towards the opening of the orbit. It gradually goes through from the nasal bone down. There's a longer slope, a less sloped area, less oblique, I suppose, more transitional than here. Here it, on the other side, the temporal comes over and it just dives down into into the orbit further. But this gets, I guess the best way to show that is it just gets through some hashed lines here. It just starts to move gradually downward and through there to give some room for the, the aplica and the tear duct further and through there. And then so we come down and through that nasal cavity, there's not enough room really through here. So we'll kind of come down and over and we'll get the <clears throat> Zygomatic bone in through here as it turns over, it comes on down, it comes way on in gradually up and through here. She's going to curve over. This will feel this curving way down in through, like so. And I'll just leave that. And you do get a little bit of the about right in through brow coming down over, superciliary arch the highest point then comes down and through here. Then you get that bone, the temporal ridge, this area. You start to see that curve about right in through here and over. You can start to see where you can see a little bit of the side plane of the of the head and then a little bit of the, the tint of the of the color of the hair moving this way. There we go. So, zygomatic arch into here. There we go. Okay, so we've got that. We've got a gradual transition now in through here. Gradual, 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 gradual. Remember, this, this really comes, this sloping here is a lot a lot less it really it really just falls in as it comes around break off here a little bit it just comes on in, comes on in and just falls right on in doesn't it just really comes on in pretty nicely in through here this tends to can really emphasize this this tends to fall over and then curve arch this orbit cheekbone actually coming this way even even a little bit further. This curves under, but this will come over. You can see how it comes over a little bit more than when I had it right in through there. So we can have that. This overlaps here, and then we get that side ridge just a little bit in through here. This will come over and through. Right, 
shave down a little bit further. About diagonal points coming through over from this area, the zygomatic bone, cheekbone in through here. And get shaved in through here. This comes around. All right, contouring a little looser now. Through here, up around. Remember the maxilla would start about halfway through and down. Transition here, curve up, transition, and then start right in through, right in through there. All right, let's get on to now the business of the ball and the brow underneath here. So we can really feel this strongly as this curves, this part curves in. This is still not orbit, it's underneath, it's turning into that area and gets into the opening pretty proper. You can see above the eyeball the folds where that where this underneath shadow, and I'm going to draw that shadow, it's kind of like a, a gradual triangle here as it moves through. We're starting to come underneath that orbit into from the from this area right in through here into into the orbit proper and through here. The orbit actually once you get to the ridge it really dives in this width gets more gradual in the brow. So up and through, more gradual, and then boy, it just, it wants to really turn in about right in through here. It just turns on, turns on in, like so. And through here, superciliary arch, or just the eyebrow, call that temporalis ridge. All right, so let's talk about now the eyeball. So we're taking out the folds, the lid, the tear duct, the plica, for now, and we're gonna put the eyeball structure back in like that over there. So we see that here. You might get this where it, it almost would overlap. I think it would come close to touching that ridge in perspective. It wouldn't in anatomy. So we get that ball fitting in, roughly right in through here. It might just abut right in through there. There we go. We'll clean it up a little bit right in through. Because it fits nice and neat in through that area. This would come over. Make sure we get that coming back and turning. It looked a little awkward. And that's the zygomatic arch coming back to the ear canal. <clears throat> so we're getting that ample space put through like this side over here, running through here and over. Just round this out a little bit further, and I'll start to just put some tone in here to make this a little bit hollower and deeper. So we've got the ceiling up here of the inside of the orbit, the wall, the, the lateral wall on the outside of the skull, and the medial wall on this side. And they gradually, remember that come in that funneled box that comes in, Right, it comes on into the, the deeper part of the head. The optic muscles can attach and work their way to an optic nerve. It's not that important since we don't see that inside, but it's good to have some feeling understanding of that. Remember, this is a gradual moving inside and in through here. We get a little bit more of this area as a divot, as a turn in, as a cut in. Right. So the pleak and the tear duct areas. There we go, this can come on in. There we go. All right. So we have that. <clears throat> we'll tighten up the ball a little bit. Remember those muscles? We just kind of feel them attach here. We know that they're there. We know that they're there on the side. Those four kind of a plus sign. That pivot and pulley. Those, those eye forms. Left and right, up and down, and diagonal like an X sideways across and through here. Back in the head. That's why we've got a little, leave some room in through there. And then we'll put on the, 
the uh, pupil, the iris, and the pupil latitude and longitude. So we're a little bit higher up in here where the axis would come together across that ball. Feel something like this around. So we can't just do it straight on. That's a little different too as well with the viewpoint we have. So we have something that feels like this. Looks like this. So longitude, longitudinal. Right. And latitude and all around. We'll start to give a little bit of eye Tony and make it look just a little bit more like a ball. It's pretty dark in there, so we, but it's not covered up by eyelids and RS, so we can, we can change our our lighting a little bit. Always. Where do we go? To here. Like so. Push that in, let that sit in. And let's put on the iris. We'll make this ball look really nice and round and spherical. It's basically just basic drawing, simple spherical forms, gradual turning of planes, right? In through here, no big deal. You've got this, right? Here we go. Okay. See there, make that look a little deeper. This is comes in a little further. Okay, so we've got now a little bit more of a of an elliptical kind of disc to go for. That's the hardest kind of thing. A little bit bigger in through here, putting that over a little higher, like so. Gradual round, and I'm going to put some value for the idea of color, even though it's not, I'm not drawing in color. Beautiful hazel eyes, greenish. Through here. And then the pupil, kind of the apex of that, of uh, where those two axis lines come together. I mean, you always have to draw them, but it's a good feeling to have them in there at times to help. And the pupil gets a little old, like, not necessarily perfectly round because we're in perspective looking from below up to. <clears throat> so we have this idea through here. muscle. And then we'll leave off the lid so we can get to now just a little highlight and through here. Take that on. The light source is coming outside from 45 degrees. We can get some stretch here. here. And I'll put a little bit, kind of see how it glosses outside the ball, but it curves a little bit, just crudely. You get some in there. And that can go dark. I don't want to go too dark to belabor the point. We're not doing exact rendering, but um, concept idea. But we'll put a little bit of that through here and kind of draw back over it. <clears throat> Kind of just tighten up those those eyeball highlights. They have harder edges. See here, so it'll pop out. And there we go. Let's do. Let's go on now to do one more anatomical uh, study of the eye. All right, last uh, anatomical um, kind of a dig through, if you will, from uh, of uh, of uh, 
just the normal, fig, I guess the normal figure to figure out and get into the anatomy. So last one here, and then we'll move on to some volumetric eyelids from uh, natural poses. So let's go to a, this profile view. So remember we get kind of a, a V form in profile and everything is pushed back at an angle about 45-ish or so, back to that hyoid bone angle. So we've got some repetitive parts of that and we're pretty close up to that eye. Um, but I'll, I'll include a little bit of more of that. So if we came down a little bit, everything would be on this, this movement here and we would start to get a little bit of a glabella the brow in through here, not as pronounced, and coming back at that angle like so. And <clears throat> then we get protrusion of the nose, the uh, nasal cavity coming through, and then the nasal bone would be about right in through there. And that would pull back and curve slightly towards back to that hyoid, you know, kind of boned area in through here and then end in through here, come up, and that would get us the maxilla starts curving to the zygomatic bone and through here, maxilla would be starting about right in through, a little bit wider actually, coming down in through here, and then starting to curve over that ball where the teeth would be, and it kind of curved, kind of curved through that, that region. But let me get a little bit more detail so you can get, see this further. Now we'll, we'll come up to the brow, the superciliary arch in through here, up above, or that furrows uh, through here, and then it'll start to bulge, come down a little bit. Then <clears throat> we'll start to feel the rough part of just the rough feeling of the orbits in through here. We're <clears throat> essentially we're in this area. <clears throat> we're obviously right in through, right in through this area. So we're feeling our way through through this particular muscle, bone area, tissue areas. <clears throat> This line here is a little, that might confuse you. Let me take that harsh line out a little bit. And so we have now superciliary arch. And let's feel, let's kind of feel the orbit a little bit. So we've got some gradual, remember space in here from the glabella over and through here. So this is gonna gradually come over. We can't just put the orbit next to the nasal bone. We've gotta have, we've gotta have some space. And we're coming down, right? This curves and comes on in some. So we have that, so the orbit would start about here. And then remember, it would gradually boxy and then gradually come on in to that little area, that undercut area where the tear duct plica area would be. And then curve on through. And you can see where this turns on the model where it gets darker, where that's where the inside part of the orbit is, right in through here. And then where it gets lighter, that's the ridge. Can you see it? That's the ridge coming over. So we're seeing, it's living and breathing for you. Where it's darker, we're seeing that darker ridge, and where it gets lighter, we're seeing it light on top and then curve right underneath and downward to the zygomatic bone. We're back here. We're curving downward, 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 and through here arched, and then downward. And then we get that zygomatic structure coming down and over pulled, and it's gonna pull over. We don't see a whole lot of that, but it's gonna pull over. And that moxilla would start probably a little bit further back, actually. I'm gonna pull that back even, even further. This would rounded area. It'll come out of that nas nasal cavity up and over like so, probably even back. Always always don't want to put it as far back as I think it needs to go. Probably need to go further. Um, so the orbit here, up and turned, and then curving in and through to feel this turning, like so. Then we're gonna come down the orbit back in through here. Superciliary arch of the brow, and then up. And then we're gonna feel that bone start to separate here, right, and then go to the temporalis ridge, right in through here, zygomatic part of that. And through here, coming down and over, this will come through, <clears throat> curve up, so we see that anatomy, and then we'll come down and then around, and that'll get ridged right in through there. <clears throat> and then we'll have that bone kind of angle out here, separate a little bit, <clears throat> This little P kind of area where, they, where it separates 
<clears throat> into, a, into a kind of hairline sort of split fracture naturally occurring. And then, then we're going to get the zygomatic arch, that kind of temporal rhythm here and over, <clears throat> right? And then coming back down, then we get this underneath structure that's about 45 degrees coming down and through, right? This gets really pronounced now. This was gradual, gradual pulling, gradual coming through. This gets pronounced over through here and downward. This tucks underneath, remember that? A little bit. <clears throat> this comes through, separates even, even further as it wants to come over and through. <clears throat> and then we get that graceful turn to the side plane of the head in profile. Zygomatic arch true there. Right in through. Coming on, coming on through there. And let's see, that muxilla then really wants to be, whoops, pull the mandible off that. There we go, get back in there. The muxilla really comes back behind this orbit in through here. So I always, always make that a little short until I have to double check myself. Well, not always, but a lot more so than I want right through there. So that's the actual structure. Let's just take that out just to, not to confuse, right in through there. That's where the maxilla is through that rounded ball-like form that comes out in through here for your teeth and through there. There we go. That looks better. So you always have to double check. Arched in through there. So we put, the eye anatomy includes the side plane of the head, the superciliary arch of the brow, right, the nasal uh, bone here, the cavity, the underneath of the zygomatic arch, which is the top of the orbit through here, right, coming through, and then you could even include, again, that maxilla. All that helps to clarify up what we've got going, and I'll put a little bit of side toning here on the side plane of the head just to show where that's happening. This will be a little bit of a gap. Now we can start to fit that eyeball in, and we've got that gradual area we have to leave. So the eyeball is in through here. It's kind of a 45 degree aspect. And the eyeball will start to put in. It's going to get overlapped by some of the bone and tissue structure. We have to think inside it now, right? Let's follow it with me about right in through here and over. You can see where the lid is here and how far away is from these ridges right in through here a little bit down a little bit further actually even right in through there we good in through and around and over and there we go there it is right in through there so we get that brow bone coming through down and over and then we can start to I'm going to put some tone on this a little bit further to see what we've wrought and got into here. We're in through here, that brow. This is bony tissue, and then we start to turn into the orbits, open up about right in through here to give some space for that ball to sit in there, like so. We're in perspective, so we'll see less of that there. Then we'll come over, get that gradual opening of the orbit in through here, that space for turns in for the pleca and tear duct muscle attachment areas. It gradually goes back in, ridging and open, overturning, like so. <clears throat> we'll push this back. So this is a side starting in the side plane of the head, right in through here. You have to really see that, you have to, students have to be shown that. And so I show them that all the time in drawing, in class, so they can, they can see that. So now we have the uh, pupil and iris to put on here. She's not quite completely in profile. She might not be looking straight profile. That's fine, so we can see that. So latitude and longitudinally, we see the eye coming around kind of coming around this way on the ball. You can see that, yeah, we got that through there. 
coming in through here, up and around, latitudinally, just to get a sense of placement. This, you don't always have to draw this. You can just kind of feel it in your mind. Riding through here where the pupil would meet, this longitude line, and through here, just to have that. Okay, this is the outside. Arch brow area will come across. Just to fill that over. This is part of that ball and through here. There we go. Kind of pull that back. Feel it in that cavity. Feel it in there, muscle bone, muscle attaching over here and through, right? Top we might see a little bit, side we probably wouldn't see, bottom maybe not, just kind of make it darker to feel that through. And then we'll feel the pupil and iris, really elliptical. Iris and pupil, like so. Look how elliptical that is, a disc arching through here. We'll put on a little value for the iris feeling. We don't want it all the way up the ball because we have the lids to put on. We would have the lids to put on. We're not going to do that here. And through there, <clears throat> pupil, right here, very disc-like, almost like that. It's almost like a contact lens, like the cornea. Remember the cornea, not the corona. Like I, like I said earlier, what a silly guy. Okay, and through here, pupil, right in through here. You don't get a lot of highlight here. I'm going to put one on anyway, just to give it a glossier, glassy look. We'll put this in a little bit further. And see there, so it fits, fits pretty nicely in through there. Have her looking down just a little bit. Um, and then I'll put a little highlight on and through, right in through here. Maybe gloss around the eyeball just a little. This is a diagram. We have that. <clears throat> and we'll give this a little harder edge. Take that one out. There we go. Kind of just bring it out around. Socket area ball. Socket area. There we go. That's emerging through a little bit. All right. So there we go. So. Got some anatomical studies now under our belt, working from the living, living uh, live model or image model, um, and uh, continue to do this thing from different points of view. And it really just start to, you'll start to command the anatomy of not only the head, but also the eye, eye structure region. You know, one thing also I'll show you before we break out and forgot um, is you can take, once you erase out your eyeball, glistening gloss area. You can take your white charcoal and just kind of work in there too a little bit and that gives it a little heightened sense. Only in the highest of highlight areas. Don't don't uh, don't use it much beyond that in, the, in, in any of your proper but that gives you that kind of little extra gloss on there because this is a little wider than the newsprints. It's it can show up just a little bit but it gives you that extra little little push that you want but don't overuse it. Okay? That's just a little technical tip. Alright so let's go on to volumetric eyes from the natural model. Okay, so we're back now working with volumetric eye uh, studies from the uh, imaged model or the live model, if you've got a live model. So taking more complexity and reducing it down to a volumetric structure for the eye, this really helps for the eye, I think quite a bit, otherwise I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend quite so uh, much time. It's kind of like the volumetric figure, the Cambiasso figure, but here we are using um, now in for the eye. So we've got the model here, opening up here, the image, <clears throat> and we'll put some structures around uh, the, uh, the, uh, the eye here. We've got the brow area in through here, make sure I don't get too high so you can see that. Okay, we're good here. <clears throat> the brow structure, superciliary arch, just the brow. <laughs> Fancy word for brow. And through here, coming over, part of the glabella region, coming down, in through here. And then the nasal cavity, 
nasal bone area will start in through this this area and come down. I'm going to be less draw less of that now. Save a little time. So this brow ridge coming down here, <clears throat> right? So we've got that, and we start to get into the socket. We'll keep. We'll continue the socket. We'll continue this gradual fall right into the socket region and through here, then it gradually falls, gradually falls in through here. And then we have the socket right in through here, over, <clears throat> underneath where this is falling through, underneath here, and over. And then we start to come down to this, kind of almost gets flat here, then boxy area in through here, <clears throat> and then down. You can see it really curving through in through here, kind of come up and around the ridge a little bit. So we've got that. Okay, so here we are there. Now let's put the eyeball in. Okay, so we're including now the entire eyeball. A little bit of muscle in through there. Form, so fitting comfortably inside here with the eyeball. <clears throat> Maybe we'll get a little bit more of the the zygomatic arch coming down through here. You get a 45 off of here. Split kind of diagonal right down the middle. You see that cascading downward. A oh, nice high cheekbone in through here. It's a female eye. Coming in through here and around. And then of course down to the maxilla in that in that area. Through here. Around this comes through ridges a little bit, and we've got that. Okay, good, good working it through here. <clears throat> there we go. And that comes all the way back. Temporalis arch, eyeball coming through now. The form of the eyeball. There we go. <clears throat> okay. In through there, and let's start to think about. Now working with the folds of the eye and how we work this, we've got a little bit of closure. The lower lip comes up to the cor uh, cornea there and <clears throat> closes in just a little bit. And then we've got the roundness of the ball here to find that through there. And then around here just to put the iris and pupil in, into an in area. So we've got this orbit coming down, squaring off here, and of course we're going to see <clears throat> this is going to open up a little bit for the tear duct coming in through, coming in through here. There we go. So let's find this volumetric eye now. So we're coming through, and we're working now the tear duct area, the plica. You can see the plica right in through. In through this area, it closes in the ball a little bit, right through there, and we've got tear duct region coming out further through here. There we go. Nice and substantial ridge running around and through here, and then we're going to come up, gather on the eye, that fill that 45 degree degree axis about here to here for the the width of the eye opening. So we'll come up, feel that. And through here, right in through here where it turns, gets the heaviest turn, and start to cascade very gently down, down the ball here. <clears throat> here we go. Okay. That's it, and through there. And coming over the ball, ridge on through and over. And then keep on going through here, like so. We'll tighten that up a little bit. We'll make all this tighter. Like so, in that area and come through now. So the difference is we're applying this to the to the uh, to a living living model instead of just a concept. All right. So we've got that. Now we see a start to see a ridge in through here. So this is going to be harder edged ending through here. Right, like so. 
Okay, coming through there, same thing, lift edge here. Real strong lip. I'll fold in and it starts to disappear and this curls in and disappears under a little bit. And then we get to the duct through in there. Roughly in here, and then that plica, plica fold, the eyelid, the third eyelid, if you will, right in through, right in through there. All right, then we have, let's finish this ridge over through here, eliminate the eyelashes. Okay, we'll come over and just bring them through. that through and kind of over let that feel okay, and then we'll put the extra fold underneath where the eyelash comes over where we get gathering and through here you see that right we've got that and we've got this coming in all this is a little bit more in shadow you see that all right you see that coming through <clears throat> Or making making it realized up in through here. This wants to do this. Gather in, gather in, gather, turn, turn, turn. Even if it's in line through here, because it's getting lit on this side. <clears throat> through there. Coming downward. And of course we feel this bone over in through here a little bit. So it gathers up and through. Orbit. So <clears throat> this gathering of skin over here, we'll, we'll pull that across through here. And we'll come up that lid and come over as like a secondary lid. And through here, and this because this gathers over. And we're going to simplify this into just a ridge. Remember like we did before. Right there, we can kind of see it. But we're going to come up on top of it a little bit higher so and gather it over like this come on down and kind of make this curl in a little bit this has curls over the top of that and through there it tends to ridge over so we'll we'll find a little little place to uh, <clears throat> put a little tone in through here. I'm using medium charcoal. You could use whatever you want. Medium is fine enough. It's not too dark, not too light. I guess that's why they call it medium. Okay. I'll make it medium. We'll put this ridge coming down in from the nose. 45 degree from the brow ridge. That gets more squared off. That's because that's a that's a um, bone structure there. The side and this turns down and that's why you get that highlight there at 45. Coming down, there we go. This is going to gradually plane off, right, to the side and let us get down to the maxilla and then the zygomatic arch comes up and over. We start to feel this even further. <clears throat> so come downward. Like so. <clears throat> right in through here, we have some gathering here, bulgy from the eyeball uh, folding bulge. Just slightly in through here. We'll just get that in there too. Around. So I'm taking what the model gives me, the volumetric figure. I'm taking what the model gives me by their, by the pose, but also thinking about how to simplify it into a volumetric study so I can learn from it, right? And then be able to do it not only from observation more cleanly, clearly, but also from imagination. That's what this gives us is that power too. It's pretty, pretty amazing uh, technical mental exercise that we want. Here. 
So I'm going to simplify some of that shadow pattern I'm getting from the model. Run through here. There we go. All right, so let's get the bottom lid now so we come through and get realized here in terms of the drawing. So this comes over the ledge and curls around and we get that flipping in through here. Now let's get the inner fold closest to the line of the eyeball, the eyeball itself. So we come around here and so we're feeling that through now and we come through and it starts flatter and it starts to open up. It's the widest about right there. From that 45 degree angle. Widest here and widest widest here. There we go. Up and through here and over. Get that coming in. And it kind of wants to do a drop lid or a drop ledge, kind of square out and as it comes over it wants to fold up underneath the other the top there. There we go. So this curls up underneath and you can see where the eyelashes grow out of that lidding at the top there. Artists don't draw much lid, uh, eyelash. They just draw a little bit of value. Make it a little bit darker. Unless it's, there's an extreme reason why or stylized in a way. That's, that's when you get more artists who do that. Nothing wrong with that, but most academic type, since this is a little bit, this is certainly more academic in that sense, that's kind of what we're after. I'm going to make this feel a little bit folded by bulgy curve like that. See, how it feels like it's popped out and this wants to fold. See how that folds and gathers on just about everybody. There we go, fold together. Good enough for now. Okay, so let's get this other under lid here. <clears throat> this ledge right in through here where the eye gets covered, the plica area in through here. Plica semiluminaris. Play that several say that several times at your favorite birthday party or bar mitzvah or whatever. Quinceanera. get into the now proper lidding here to all the way around this lid. A little bit wider there. Coming on around. It's that ledge, right? <clears throat> it's leading us up right up through here. It leads us up and around and over. This is down and over. There we go have that, then we can get into this thicker structure. You can kind of see it right in through here as it plays off, right? Right in through there. It's softer. It's softer sometimes in our concept. Concept, we keep a concept. Here we're using a little, just a little bit of both, but you can Soften that through as it comes over. And well, this goes down a little bit through. There. There we go. Then we can soften this up, this little bulge of the lid. Through here. This could get narrower just for sake of it. And so this is the ledge. 
the, excuse me, the lid, the ridge, the lid, the lidge. I just made up a new word, the lidge. That's the ridge, the ridge and the lid, if you want. Shave down like so to show that off. I'll play off that a little bit. This is moving. So we could lip up that, that would be here, right? And then move, move down. But really important to see. Through that. You can tell where this bulge is and gathers. You see that, and then the opposite, you get an opposite line to kind of push off that. Get some gathering and folding that we all have. And through here, and so this comes down a little bit. Curls in, and then you get to bone right about there, cheekbone. It gets the zygomatic arch, and that comes on. Comes on down the model like this here, and then we shoot over, and that starts to just transition us. Down the down the model and through there. Of course, this gets a little bit curved through there. Tighten this up. There we go. Then, if we want to get a little bit of uh, maybe some contour. <clears throat> Threading and change of the plane. This curls down like so. And then lastly, let's get the pupil iris. So let's revisit our latitude and longitude and just thinking through it. You can place it, or I kind of gauge the white, whites of the eyes too as well. I kind of do this running through here where they're at like so. It comes in a little bit further, and like so, this kind of is a little bit thicker and through here, slightly down. How that feels, just like that. Latitude and longitudinally, about here. The center of the pupil, about there, and over and center, about right in through there. Just to think about that in a in a volumetric kind of way. <clears throat> So now we'll take this and we'll just tone it some. Work with it here a little bit. So I like to do the whole thing before, in drawing especially. Painting's a little bit different before we get to finish out the iris pupil area. Shadow on the ridge, for the curvature of the ball at the top, because the light source is down below. Excuse me, up above, hitting the light, making it down below. We get some nice highlights on this angle right here, but also see the glistening in the um, plica in the tear duct region. We'll do both of this. So the darker to here. <clears throat> So let's come back and get that iris squared in. So my, my eyes a little bit, that I've drawn is a little bit more open. Just a little bit. I have a tendency to do that. It's okay for now. <clears throat> and then we'll go darker and see here some.
And then lastly here, almost lastly the pupil been through here, around. area. So we've got a volumetric eye going. <clears throat> and then let's get now a highlight going into here. Really kind of top it off, kind of finish it off kind of nicely. Actually too as well. Alright, so take a couple here. We'll take one down around the plica and through here. Maybe about running it. It's kind of running through there. Simplify this. Take my little template. Do that a little bit. It keeps, contains it a little bit. You get a little out of control. And you can kind of draw through it and back through it a little bit. Like so. This is a quick sketching of it. Got that. And I can take a little white charcoal if I want. Glisten that. And then also, of course, on the the um, eyeball itself coming in at light, coming in at 45 to make that that highlight through here. We can kind of dab at this. Kind of pull this all together a little bit through there. And then kind of draw back through it, clean it up a little bit, kind of a C shapey thing. Don't have to be that that don't have to bay that that much. And you can come back with a little bit of highlight of the white, just to tighten it in a little bit. And we're pretty much, pretty much there with our first volumetric study. So pretty much a straight on, straight on study there. Bring this out, let's lift this edge a little bit, keep that tight. All right, let's go on to the next one. Next study here, so we'll just we'll just do two. I think that gets the point across. We'll move on to some natural eye drawing at the very end here. Uh, so we're with aspect now, we're looking down upon the eye somewhat, um, and the eye is looking straight out, maybe slightly down, but we're certainly a uh, viewpoint of uh, not straight on, but a downward aspect. So let's get the feel of all this kind of together. Let's get a feel of where the brow superciliary arch area is in through here and then the glabella part of it at least is right in through uh, here coming down the nasal center part of that nasal bone right here it would be about right in through running through that area coming on down and then we can start to feel that uh, orbit sink down this comes over and we can feel the orbit sink, sink down gradually remember it sinks down very much gradually into the box of the eye on the medial side or the side closest to the nose right that's important to know <clears throat> and then as it's this comes up and as it uh, <clears throat> works its way now over okay this is gradual works its way over this comes in through here opening of the eye orbit all this coming over this <clears throat> bony area here coming through and through here all right like so <clears throat> This comes down and then over, and this is a slope, and then it just goes in, it dives on in, dives on in here to the bone. Remember, it's the difference between this is almost curves up underneath it, but this takes a lot longer time because of the tear duct area. Keep that in mind. All right, so we'll start to orbit this off a little bit, flatten this. Through here and up and over. Okay, and through. This comes around for the model here. Flattens. It's longer in this way. There we go. Like so. Up around. Alright, so.
So we can have this coming on in, this coming in down gradually. So this wants to really turn in this brow, all this coming in, coming in, coming in, like so, coming in, coming in. And then let's get to the eyeball. Let's put the eye on a ball on here. Side plane of the nose a little bit further coming down. Let's get that structure a little bit. Get through here, ridge of the orbit. Zygomatic arch starts, keeps on going. 45 degree right. You can see that coming up and over. We'll get that through. Just get that on there. Globella halfway. That mouth arch. And I think we're good. Good there. All right, let's get that volumetric eye in, inside that socket. That's enough space. Looking down a little bit, we're going to get that ball almost disappearing in that socket. Not quite. It's up here. And then rounded, like so. Draw the circles, practice circles, practice spheres. <clears throat> Through here. All right, so I go that look at that nose structure, maybe. Part of it is anyway. And around. That'll help. All right, so let's feel around this eyeball now for the volumetric quality that it has. So we can start in through here. And start. I kind of feel, generally feel, and I can I can change it. The circumference of the eye, where the where I want the pupil to be here, and then around, kind of where I'm finding the center of the pupil, right in through there. So this model is looking. Out slightly down. Of course, we're we're downward on the model too, as well. That'll change that a little bit. <clears throat> this gets a little bit narrower. All right. So now let's find the fold in through here. So we're folding around, coming around the eyeball, and we'll find it off the eyeball here to the pleca, over to the tear duct, through here and over. Around. It feels like a ridge tube. Right in through here, a bit over. <clears throat> like so. <clears throat> we have this overlap a little bit. Lap up over. So I sort of generally kind of start there. You can start anywhere you want. Works for me though. So now we're coming up over the eye. Flapping up over the eye. Here. See how much or very little the eyeball is exposed. In through here. And it's going to start to lip and turn. Lip and turn like so. Okay, lip and turn. Curve and curve and get long. It's slightly on the diagonal aspect. Curve and get longer. And then right in through there as it overlaps the ball. And it comes on over and flaps through there. Up and in. And it wants to, all those folds go around that bone a little bit, the folding of that skin. Just to show that. We get that coming through. Okay, so we have that. Now we don't see the lid, the, the lid there. So we'll come up here, we'll see the top of it. So we're gonna see this fold a little bit. And then I'm gonna to start to wrap this around like so. Okay, because this is gonna be an over wrap and a turn. Curving around the eye like so. This would end. And our eye volumetric conception about right there. This would come in like so around. So that's a change. You see that kind of like that. Of course, this would you can feel that ridge through. And of course, this is skin and material, tissue, muscle. And that gathers in through there. Okay. 
So we have that. <clears throat> now we'll come underneath the eye. And so we will still want to feel that 45 degree aspect under turn. So there's our widest point about right in here to about right in through here. Right in through. Winding and coming on in like so. And keep on coming over quite a bit. And it gives just a little bit of curve as it wants to come over. We don't really see the pleca much right through there. Okay, coming through. And then this top of the ridge is here. It's like a box. And it juts and then it turns. See that turn? That control. And then we're going to come down and get the side of it here. This comes, here's where a strong side here and strong side down right there. Like so. That comes over. This could be rounded. And this is going to turn and keep on coming over. Okay. And then we'll keep on working through here, really curved. And then way up, coming on over, we're going to start to really fold. It's going to start to really come across this eyeball. Really right into there. Okay, and this folds over. Like so. So this can gather now here. This is still the lid here. <clears throat> Let me turn this curve. There we go, turn it back in. Let it disappear in there. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> in this bottom part of this ridge. We'll get to cover, turn, and really go up underneath about right there. There we go. I'm going to turn that darker so we can see that. Make that look a little bit better. There we go. It's a tough, tough ellipse. You know your ellipse is right. So that gives us that, that edge and through here. What we have across about right here on the model is where that ball ridges into this orbit gathering under here. So we can see that form. Mm -hmm. This might be a little wide, just a little bit. Narrow that in a little bit. Come back in. Don't be afraid to change. That bone was probably okay. Don't be afraid to change if you need it. It's okay. And through here, and we'll see some gathering of skin coming down this plane here. <clears throat> kind of just basically tubes. gathering just a little bit. Kind of coming around through here. 
nice full socket, uh, circumference and feeling, form of tissue, and through here. There. All right, let's put on the pupil and the iris a little bit, coming across this ball this way. There we go. It's all about reducing its complexity down, and then we'll build it back up when you draw naturally. <clears throat> So this ridge tops out and really starts to fall this way, about right there. Really starts to come on down. <clears throat> this comes up, it loops, loops over here. So, let's now, like I said earlier, put on the iris and pupil, right? So coming back down latitude and longitude, we're pretty close, I'm gonna move it over a little bit. So running through here, coming in through. Looking for that space between the whites of the eyes and where we have it. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit more centered, should be more centered here, that's fine. Coming through a little bit, right through there feels pretty good. The size, so the whole thing would be up about like this. Open over, get some nestled in. There we go. So we get that, and we'll get a little shading on this lid, top part of the lid, right through here. And we have underneath, it's going to get dark and cast shadow more, like so. Now it's covered up and you can tell by the um, eyelashes coming out of the eyelid, top eyelid and bottom eyelid. But we just don't draw them because when we stand back from them they don't really register. Unless you're doing photo real rendering or something in that nature uh, and trying to mimic reality at a mic more of a micro level you're going to get into that more. But most of our artists gloss over those. There's a reason why is because they get the way of the structure quite a bit. They erode the quality of of illusion. Take here a little bit. <clears throat> so we have on the structure into here. And we're almost ready to kind of sit in the rest of this. This other part of the eyeball right in through here, the back of the skin folding through. Of course, we know that folds down, but I'm kind of just keeping it as a, as a component structure, as a concept. There we go. <clears throat> that even maybe get a little bit wider. There we go. Narrow that off a little bit. All right, let's put on the pupil. Put it right in through here. Slightly hidden by the lid. The upper eye. And of course, this goes down. These these lidding out there. Right, coming down, over. 
really starting to come over and turning like so. <clears throat> I wanted to make this fall over, that's probably too complex and everyone won't do that. Keep that simple. Into here. Okay. And we don't have much of a highlight on the ball, but we do on the lid, especially up in through here. So we'll put a little darkness there and just kind of just leave it. This can all be glossed back a little. And we'll put a little bit of a highlight right in through here. Just to bring it out, maybe at the top, just for concepts. Can draw that back. Draw that back through a little bit. took out the top of that's okay the bottom is more important just a little bit there be nice good and there we go all right so we've got two volumetric eyes from live study okay now I want to go on to a couple of studies where we go from from natural life to see that anatomy living and then make it look like it's all coming together without the the, the severity of the anatomy okay let's go to that all right, let's uh, discuss the, the eyebrow a little bit and the, the uh, eyelash. So I'll write up here brows and lashes. So the brow, we'll start with the brow first. The brows are uh, sitting on top of the, the, uh, the brow structure, the superciliary arch here and also through here, let me bring this up so you can see it here and through here. They rest on top of it and you can get a lot of variation. You're gonna find that, that you're going to get something that is <clears throat> angled up, kind of like a bird shape or flying V maybe, or upside down V. You're gonna get a lot of this generically. And you're gonna get variations where they are angled up flatter depending upon resting or surprise that's going to get a little bit more of a, a u-shape or a upside down hump shape like that a little bit uh, you're going to get very thin in the case of women and sometimes even almost really non-existent depending on the style so what we can say then about the brow is they're resting. I like to think of them as resting on the, not nesting, but resting uh, on, make sure that's an R, <laughs> resting on the brow. So they're resting really on top of that service. And I really draw what I see. There's no really, I'm gonna say no real rhyme and, and reason to it, but the more the, uh, the orbicularis oculi contracts and expands and contracts to open and close the, um, the eyeball, the lids, etc. in the surprise expression versus uh, uh, angrier you know, kinds of expression. You'll see things like this for anger, that furrowedness here, that furrowedness there. You can get a lot of real, real kinds of expression. That's going to be you know, kind of cartoon it out. That's going to be, you know, pretty hot, pretty angry, that kind of thing there. And you're going to get also, <clears throat> you know, happiness. You're going to get this raised up sort of quality with the brow, but it's not really uh, as expansive as you think. They're still going to come across and rest across 
this furled brow structure, but there's a lot of movement that happens with the skin, with the smaller little muscles through here that I really didn't explain that I'm not, not really caring about, but also with the orbicularis uh, oculi too as well. So that's what you're gonna have to look for. The brow, the brow structure in general I've been taught when I was a student, you can kind of think about it as a ribbon quality, a little bit thicker towards the nose side or the medial side. Uh, in through here, the medium side, inside, and then towards the lateral side, or the outside of the head, in through here, medial here, lateral here, or just nose side, if you will, and then outside here. You're gonna get this thickness here, and then you're gonna get a thinness and an arching over. It really follows this brow and orbicularis oculi rhythmic movement uh, too as well. And they really kind of do this, where it's thick here, and then almost runs over itself like so and comes underneath like a ribbon. See that? How it runs underneath and like so. So it does this and then it overlaps a little and then comes back over like so and then really thins out like that. You can think of it like that pretty strongly. Like so. Kind of like arched, arched, arched over and then folding up and coming underneath like so. I think that's pretty, pretty um, a reasonable way really of, of thinking about it. Now that'll get you the that'll get you the brow. And if we'll do one from the other side, just so you'll you'll see it if you're left-handed or whatnot. So one coming this way, thicker here, and again really following up, kind of furled in here. Sometimes you'll get that. I've seen uh, uh, my professor, one professor I had, Harry Carmian when I was in LA, he had this great sort of horn thing that went here and then kind of, kind of came back down like so. And it gave him this kind of <laughs> intimidating, really intimidating uh, look. Um, and he, of course, he's, he was brilliant for sure. And still is, still lying about it in mid 90s. So again, you can get some variation here and this will arch over, 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 right, coming over here or coming back, curling over, however you want to think about it. And again, this is towards the meteor, medial nose side in here. I'll just put medial for the medium part in the middle. And then towards the nose, you get more, you get it uh, lighter and thinner. And then it, you know, it kind of curls up underneath. Again, that's the kind of thing that we're thinking about. So just keep that, keep that in mind, okay? And that's the lateral, lateral side of her over through there. All right, so that's really brows in a nutshell. Of course, you get a lot of variation. You know, they come in pairs, you know, and you can be very expressive with it as they reach across, but they're going to have uh, an arch, an arch to that as well. All right, so the eyelash. Oh, one more thing about the brow. One more thing. The brow is made up of, if you look at the brow deeply, um, it is made up of lots of hairs. Um, unless, uh, rule of drawing tip, unless you're drawing brows uh, in a very uh, hyper-realistic, uh, photorealistic esque, and that can mean a lot of different things for artists. Um, some artists who wrote work hyper-realistically looking, or clear rendered, don't like to necessarily say I'm photoreal, but um, unless you're doing that, you don't want to draw every strand of hair. Uh, it's a more impressionistic kind of thing. It's also more of a value kind of thing, meaning you're drawing the value marks or the value range, the light and dark range, but you're also drawing what? The direction and the rhythm, right, in the movement of the brow, uh, or the eyebrow across the superciliary arch, which is the fancy way of saying our furled eyebrow. Just keep that in mind. That's going to be important. So, um, you know, they're made of hairs, individual tons of them. You know, and then if you're if you're a lady out there, you're probably have spent some time plucking those things. Even if you're a guy, sometimes you'll spend some time plucking those things. Certainly, maybe if you're a guy, depends on if you're an actor, you might have to take them down a little bit. And of course, I've seen them where they're completely off, but they're made of tiny lots of hairs. And you don't want to get in the habit of drawing every one of them. You want to get that form of it, the feel of it, the brow, 
uh, structure of it, the rhythm of it, and get the value, and you'll and you'll be you'll be fine. Okay, so that's the brow, the eyelash sitting on the eyeball, and maybe it's good to me pick up back one of our eyeball drawings I have over here on the wall a bit. Give me a moment here. We'll just do this without editing it over. There we go. We'll bring this little guy back over. Notice we didn't draw the, the, the eyelashes here. And for a reason. Most artists, and you can look at paintings, again, unless you're doing photorealistic or hyper-realistic drawing, the eyelash is generally held uh, reserved for just a little bit of value or for it, it just completely eliminated. Go check out a lot of Renaissance Baroque painting and neoclassical Romanticist Impressionist painting especially um, and see how that happens. If you have to draw the eyelashes, they come out of the lid. So if we draw a lid over here, let's see, let me bring this up a little bit because you might get in a situation where you have to. We want to talk about that a little bit. So let's get a lid shelf here going, here and downward, right? And across. This is the bottom of the eyeball and this is starts the top right here. They'll grow out of this area and they'll pull out in a way strands of hair. They're there for protection for dust. So if I draw an arrow through here, and they can curve downward. Sometimes they'll curve in many directions. I have very long ones, and they get um, in my eyes sometimes. Uh, and, and women have get jealous it's uh, because they're so long, and they spend lots of money or lots of time trying to manipulate theirs. Um, I wish it was the other way. I wish I didn't have long eyelashes because they get in the way. But they will come out. They will curve around the eyeball. I generally leave them out or I generally leave a little bit of value to them, like so. Like if I was drawing this eye here with uh, some eyelashes coming down, I might, instead of drawing every one, I might just put a little bit of value on them. Since we're kind of looking down, we might see it cover a little bit. This is generally what happens. We'll put a little bit of this, and if it's down below, we'll just probably give a little bit of value structure to that to get in the way, especially if they're close, and that's probably enough. It's something you're going to have to get a feel for. I didn't spend a lot of time on it, obviously, because it's not really a structural thing. It's a very ephemeral thing. And again, only if you're doing, think of it this way, if you're doing a close-up of an eye and it's photo real and you want it to be crystal clear and microscopic, then yeah, you would probably draw just about every strand of that follicle of hair, which would really be tubes. They really are, if we go down to the microscopic level over here, they're going to be tube-like structures. <clears throat> Excuse me, tube-like structures. Very round, and they're gonna have, they're almost kind of slick and glossy, and they're gonna have uh, a highlight to them, but I rarely draw them individual like that. But I have seen artists that are photoreal that do uh, work in that manner where they'll draw them very much, um, <clears throat> uh, very much uh, uh, exacting and a lot of them too as well. So this one, I've been looking at that one for all that one probably could come up a little bit in my curve. Sometimes just watch your curves, make sure this is a little bit little bit awkward in through there. If you noticed it before, I've been noticing it, but I didn't edit it out. Just take it a little bit and take it back. These are tough. Even I have to go back and double check those eyes. Okay, so there's brow and the lash. And now let's go on to do a few eye studies where they're finished looking from a uh, model. Okay, let's go to that. All right, so we're going to have three poses here, different eyes. Um, and really just working with the anatomy and then taking them to a natural kind of look and, and a finish for a study. So uh, I'm drawing with uh, Carbothello pencil. So these are a little bit more pastel-like. They're more chalky. They're kind of like charcoal but colored, obviously. Um, and this is a bleh, kind of a reddish maroon, dark red, and it's just a white here. And I'm on a kind of a blue-gray uh, toned paper. So just FYI on that. 
and let's pop up the first image. I went ahead and we're gonna do three and I went ahead and laid them all in. All right, last one here. So let's take a look at an upward tilted eye. Uh, we're slightly below uh, Steven's eye here looking up. Um, he's looking up and we're slightly below looking at the eye. So I took the liberty again, obviously, of, of laying it in. You've already seen that a little bit and let's start to kind of uh, work this little eye. We'll just, we'll just leave the other one um, uh, kind of as relatively as it is. Um, all right, so I'm going to come back in now, and then we're going to keep going now and kind of reach for the glabella, this little area. And through here, you've really got a nice curve. This is a, a tougher, certainly a tougher perspective to kind of deal with. You've got that coming through here. And <clears throat> remember, it's that, it's that, that uh, triangular kind of brow arch in through here, and it comes underneath like so. And that's going to get pushed around like here. And then we're going to just feel a little bit. It's not really strong in this photograph, this image. And so we've got this this nose coming in through here. We've got a little bit of that nostril. It's like, hey, he's working on the well, he's we're working on the eye. Why are you putting the nose in? Just to make sure we're we're uh, pretty good to go. This could be this is probably a little bit long in through here. Bring out maybe this nostril a little bit. And over. Just a little bit. And through here. And down. This is a good good position to show also with the eye, the side plane of the nose and through this really, really flat flattens out here coming through and like so then we get this kind of turning in like here coming down flatten this this little angle out the the nostril coming over for now but this gets flatter flatter in through here and then it really look how nice and gradual this gets coming downward so it flattens in here and then it takes its time coming on down the side plane of this nose, this cartilage in here, bone, up to about right here where it's darkest, and it gets just a little bit lighter, right in through here. There we go. And then it turns up in, in or downward actually, and then um, starts to just, just be gradual. Really take its sweet time before it gets into here. It's a, it's a, it's a gradual fall, it's a wedging fall, <clears throat> and it gets us underneath, excuse me, it gets us underneath the zygomatic arch up to about right in through here. It's kind of a nice rhythm to have that. So we'll cut through here and then we come on down. This can be a little bit of a wedge before we get to the nodes, kind of that uh, orbicularis orus coming into his lower, lower mouth with the nodes kind of in through there. And if we come down into the center of the eye and down through, that's where the end of the maxilla would be and through there. So that works in perspective for us uh, as well. Let me let me just, this nostril bothers me. I'm just going to uh, kick that in a little bit. And through here. And around. Okay, and then down there. And around through here. There we go. Sorry about that. I'm going to make sure we get all of it in a, a good component. Filter them over, over and through here. Slide that through. <clears throat> and feeling it downward, coming in through the zygomatic arch. And it kind of gets triangular in through here where the, the, um, the, the dark ends and the lighter area kind of begins in through here. This can get kind of shaped. Or you can turn it this way, either way through. The initial pass. If you want, you can blend that if you want. <clears throat> and it will come sliding across the muzzle a little bit through here. <clears throat> All right, 
so now we're starting to pick up a rhythm in the eye, in through here, up and around the orbit. In the orbit, see where it gets a little lighter? I'm picking up that brow ridge above that lighter area. Then it hits right into where the darker part of the eyebrow, the hair part, follicles of the hair start to take over about right in through there. Then we're going to take a journey, a rhythmic journey up. This is a tougher one perspective wise. Up and through and over. And around like so. And then we're going to come down and through. And this is going to start to ridge around, ridge around here, ridge around, ridge around, and curl and really start to feel coming into that uh, uh, glabella and then really end and where the glabella will get started. It really, the eyebrow hair ends about running through that arched curve running through here. We have like so, then we could come on top of that, get feel that rhythm in through here and then start to tone a little bit further where we see that, that'll help. Put that back in perspective. All that in through there. Matter of fact, all this can go back again. And we'll pick that up maybe a little bit, a little bit lighter. <clears throat> So we're picking up uh, with this now, we're coming over, and then we're picking up the nose cavity, and we're coming through. All this is done to really secure the position of the eye. Coming down the orbit here, and then riding through here, I start to feel the inside of the orbit cavity really start to turn in where it gets a little bit darker with this little, little V-shaped notch riding through there. And it curves back to the nasal cavity and through there and starts to get more gradual. Okay, right in through there. And then now we start to feel like it could come over and really connect where the uh, tear duct and the pleca will be. So right in here, that little pivot point. So I want to kind of, I just want to make a little pivot dot in through to feel it over. And it's coming over the eye. Not as wide as I have it here, but about like this, latitude and longitudinally, about right there where I mark it. Right there. There we go. Right through there. All right, so now we're going to come over and start to hit this eye. So let's. That's, that's kind of what I think, again, is this, this center part. I'll show you what I mean by this. It comes over. It's kind of where, well, I say the center part, but where the folds of both the outer part of the eye, the lateral part here, of the opening of the um, eye to the, to the eyelids. That's what I mean to say there. Coming across. And also the uh, on the other side too. So sometimes I'll just mark it by doing this a little bit here. Here we go. Coming through a little bit and over ridged. Whoop. And then over. So we're feeling this across. Before I, I make the, the move to get it on, especially with these chalkier pencils, I come up, I feel the apex, feel it before I draw it through here. It's a little bit uh, less forgiving, medium, and then coming on down, and coming through a little bit, at least in this drawing scenario, and downward. I come on through a little bit as it curves and arches over, right in through here especially, and it really tight, 
tightens up and comes on into the ball itself where it gets darker, where it gets to the plica. The plica is pretty much in dark area right through there. Okay, here we go. All right, so we have that, then we have the tear duct. And then we come over here to the duct area, which is gonna be behind this dark area right in through here. Yeah. We have this opening. And then we're gonna come over to find the gonna find out how difficult this eye is to draw, right? Right in through here is where it gets difficult. They get that darkness, and then it gets open in through here of that plico. And then this lid wants to come all the way down here. It's one of my favorite positions to draw the eye. Really expressive. There's an artist, if you don't know his name, Baroque artist, El Greco. He did very expressive Renaissance, Baroque Renaissance art. He might be Renaissance and not Baroque, but it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> eyeballs. He did some pretty cool uh, views of eyeballs, really volumetric and really rounded from different lower points of view looking upwards. Pretty cool. All right, so here we've got the bottom of the duct, the plica region duct, moving into the dark ball here, right? But then we can come up and come around and get that lid area. And it wants to do this. This is where it gets cool but hard. And through here, it took me a long time to really get it when I was younger. It's dumb time. Sometimes it's dark secret. Is don't tell anybody. I still flop it up. It's okay. Here and around and through, coming over. It really comes over, not not straight. It wants to do this, but then it wants to come over and curve. So up and over and straight <clears throat> and straight. And then curve right on into the right back into it, right at the very last moment, right in through here. There's a little dark spot in there. Right in through there like that. It's a pretty nice, pretty funky looking. Think of an eye in through here. It's, mine's a little long too. Mine should shorten up. So here, it should come on down here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it. But just going higher with it, that will make it look a little bit better. Not bad. Not too bad. All right. So we're coming down the duct here, that region underneath it, and we'll get a little bit of this coming through this kind of area. Coming around and through here. The ball tends to kind of gather, catch, and move really rounded. And through here, all this is pretty. Pretty uh, gathered in skin, folding up and around. So we've got some pretty nice rhythmic things going on, a little darker in through here. For now, I'll come back in dark. In through here, underneath, and we start to get that plane, that gradual plane, all this turning in through here. It's just nice. Like so. As it starts to move. Gradually turn around, coming this way, and then we'll feel. I'll just start to feel in the ball, pretty, pretty dark, about halfway to here. And we're noticing. Take a look at the um, at the pupil, how dilated it is. We were, I remember when we were taking these shots. It was about four or five students, and we were in a pretty dark room, and then we blasted them with light. But this is before he was really looking away. Before it's pretty, pretty. Pretty interesting to see that coming across the ball and it gets lighter. Through here, 
<clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> now we'll come across here and we'll see this little ridge of the of the lid higher and through here. have this cast shadow and we're going to have this eye, eyelash and fold of the eyeball, all kind of of the eyeball up above it, kind of come together with the brow. And it's going to look like this is a nice little rhythm. This comes here, this tucks opposite just a little bit. You see that here, over, and then this is going to come over like so and come around. Like so, kind of a hard edge, and then we're gonna kind of a cast shadow, and then it's gonna turn because it's following this ledge of the eyeball. So pretty, pretty wild. If you're a drawing nerd, right? Right through here, over. through here and over excuse me and then so this is turning in through here solidly through here a little bit okay so <clears throat> again we can pick up pick up this little crease in between here right there a little bit further fills out that nicely that gives us this little overhang here to tell us what's going on which is this is this is coming around coming around and curl around put some contour line this is curling see how this curls in so you've got to have above this a little tone right in through here. See that? You've got to have that tone so because the light source is over here coming in and it's like a it's like a cylinder. It's just lipped around. And of course it gets a little lighter over here. It comes through. Mm -hmm. We'll pick that apart there, pick that apart there. A little bit darker this ridge. through here okay, through a little hard a little harder edge through there and I'm gonna shave this plane down a little bit further and through there soften this out bring out this edge a little bit it gets a little mushy <clears throat> through here. All right, so let's come back over here a little bit. So I'm going to a little contouring line through here and around. <clears throat> and then over. And then we can shade a little bit the opposite way too as well if you want like that. You have to be careful not to do too much cross. I, I don't. I think too much cross hatching can get you in trouble. This is kind of contouring more than cross hatching.
looking like so. <clears throat> come around here. And it starts to come together a little bit as you start to hit through. Okay, so let's put on now the the pupil and iris as I'll fuddle with this nose. I'll get that later. <laughs> All right, let's put on the pupil and iris. So the uh, thinking about now the latitude and longitude of that, and this look how strong this area of the pleca. It's like a great shot for the pleca, the, the tear duct right in through here, really, really strong coming in down in through there. So we get that coming through. It really opens up how much distance that really lagging over that it's still lagged over this pretty amazing pretty amazing right through there coming down <clears throat> and over all right so getting that on there it's a little bit more of a disc so if we look at it let's see if in the camera like right over here you have to be careful it's not completely round the side so it's more like this do you see that so we got to get it more like more like that. So let's make sure that's like that. <clears throat> All right, so. Okay, here we go. Latitude, excuse me, longitude here. Latitude over here is kind of the center of it. Then getting the, the disc of it here. It's an interesting highlight down to the bottom. I want to make that hotter too. Uh, we have it. And then the other side of the eyeball or iris, slightly more, not quite as elliptical as that. There we go, right in through there. You can see I'm a little bit long, but it's okay. It doesn't bother me. As long as it doesn't bother you, as <laughs> long as it's in good perspective, which it is, it's just a little bit long. That's okay. Can live with that and through here. All right, so we've got that, and now we've got to start to get the value of it squared away a little bit further. Okay, here we go. More, more elliptical disc looking up with the pupil. A little bit more showing on the sides. And I'll tighten this up with the black, obviously, on top of that. So we've got that working pretty well, I think, coming along. So let's, um, let me take a moment to sharpen my uh, darker maroon color pencil just for a moment. And I'll talk while I'm doing it. And so, <clears throat> We're almost done here with these three uh, perspectives of the eye, utilizing, talking about the anatomy underneath and what's going on uh, as well to kind of get this to a, a resolution conclusion. And you know, it really matters what you know about it underneath. When you get to you know an advanced level, and you're like, okay, how can I, how can I take the next step as well? adding anatomical knowledge to that can help you. If you're having trouble just drawing the basics, uh, you want to stay, well, I think you want to stay away from anatomy in the beginning. Because it can really be, it can really um, confuse you and maybe frustrate you where if you'll just stay with the basics and stay with that longer, you'll be, it'll be, it'll be easier uh, when the time, if and when, when the time comes for the anatomical part. Easier said than done. I hear that because you want to you always want to jump ahead. All right, so let's tighten up a few things um, with respect to the eye here, and also the nose area. I'll bring this, kind of bring this to a little bit more resolute conclusion. Maybe we'll put just the little parts of the other eye in there as well. This coming over and down and through. All right, so we've got that and through there. And this is going to shave over and down and come through this nostril looking up, shaved up a little bit this way and over and down like so. 
this gets nice and challenging inside here at this opening of the nostril. The cartilage through here and over. <clears throat> Get that through coming in. And the filtrum coming this way. I'm just putting on, on a little bit more of this to give us a little bit more of the, geo, of the geography of what we're doing with the eye. Because it, it fits. Just getting it on its own is not... I see a lot of that in, in the U, YouTube land. It's just not... Well, it can, be, it can be done differently, I think. In a little bit more context... And putting it in its proper context, actually. That's what I'm looking to say. <clears throat> Some of that are really good eye studies. Photographic kind of things. Okay, coming around here, coming over. This flattens out a little through here. This nostril gets in cast shadow later. Like so. Coming over to the side area where the attachment is to the nose. There we go. <clears throat> and this gets planed off a little bit. It gets us down to the node of the mouth. Up, and through, and over. And that's, that's all I'm going to do with that. <clears throat> and then coming over, let's feel this. Soften that and give it a little bit of coarse shadow. Let's feel this side of the head and through here and the end of this nose over. Eye socket. This is coming through. Take a look at this. Here, the perspective, this brow coming way over like an arch. Look how arch that is. And you get this sort of feeling and through here. Really sits on the outside of our model. Frontal, frontal uh, prominence and through here and down. We get that through. <clears throat> And we get this brow cut in with the eye. Pretty challenging. And then this zygomatic arch of the cheek here gets way down, curved up over, right? Here and downward. And then we start to come over and bring it down, way on down, with this mouth and through there. All right, so let's find the, uh, we'll just find the eye, brow, turned up, curled. Here we are. Coming through here, ending. And come across the ball and through here, curved and way on down. And through here, we get some of it lost in the nose. The ball area and it will wind up being about right in through here cover it up a little by the other cheek brought in a little bit so we've got that all right so let's start to take now our my uh, let's take the dark pencil and let's uh, conclude this this study out all right, so let's finish this out a little bit. So we'll come over and tighten it up, and we'll finish out this marathon video on eyes. <laughs> you get your, you get your. Well, there's no money involved, right? You'll get your time and time 
I love doing these, so you'll get your, you certainly will get involved in, in through this. No, it's a pleasure doing these for the most part. So we come over and get the, find the, where the eyebrow is, and just kind of cut across right through here. <clears throat> And then we'll start in on this eye proper, just digging through where we've got some of the stuff to get. So again, I'll come over and I'll bring the eyelid in through here, up and through. We can really tighten up, get some nice kind of clearing up in through here with the dark here, and then the ball and the plica together, right in through there. It's not about running over the same thing twice, it's just about cleaning it up and making it better than that which it was. A little tighter, crisper where it needs to, softer where it needs to as well. Yeah. There we go. And through. Up cuts. And through. This is a nice up undercut current actually to make that bulge. That's a lot of people don't see that. It's tough to see. And through here, and there, we get that fold, and we'll fold around. Coming through, and overlapped, and then falling across the ball. It's got a nice little heavy straight there. Poke that out, and then we'll come around. My favorite eyes to draw. <clears throat> Good story about Stephen. When when uh, he is a, st a former student of ours, not too long ago, BFA in drawing and painting, really talented kid. We were in a study abroad to Barcelona together, or Spain, total Madrid, Barcelona, in Bilbao, and we were in Bilbao when we were on the little. Uh, 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 lift up the hill there. If you've ever been in, in uh, Bilbao, and there was these cute little teenagers that uh, he was with, and Stephen was with, us, these cute little teenage girls that just kept looking at him. And <laughs> yeah, I think the instant crushes on him. It was pretty cute. I don't think he was aware of it. It was pretty funny. I kind of laughed. They were cute kids. Really great city. If you, it's a shout out for Bilbao, Spain. If you've never been, it's a gorgeous little 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 city with a with a world class Guggenheim Bilbao Museum. It's a fantastic experience for artists and art connoisseurs. And Bilbao is just a beautiful little city with some great little architecture, wonderful Basque uh, culture. Highly recommend it. Don't have any uh, financial stake in there. That's just my. Personal experience. There we go. Getting that in there together. You can get there kind of curving around. See how this curves around and hits the end of the plica and then curls on in. It's a nice rhythm in through this overlaps. Okay. And we'll get this working in through here. This will be darker. And through here. <clears throat> Okay, now we'll come underneath here a little bit and get some reflected light, get some line and through here. Remember those volumetric studies, how important they are. We see a little lipping of that underneath. It's kind of a light eyelash. We really don't see much. They're pretty much eliminated. Not by a whole lot, right? And through there and over. We'll hit that just a little bit. Get that coming around. Like so, and then we can dig inside this little extra pit to get the teardrop duct, tear duct. I mean, you might be you might be shedding teardrops after this drawing. That's for sure. Here we go around. Turn over. Okay, and I think we've got about everything we needed out of, that, out of that region. Here we go. Okay, so let's come up here and talk about 
I'm going to hit the pupil and iris at the more of the end and through there. So let's come up to get the brow. Brow looks pretty good for now. But we've got a little movement going this way. Let's see here. It really is more of a mass than it is a uh, individual strand thing. Be careful of that. that down a little bit. curves off the brow. Right in through there, nice rhythm coming around. See how that moves this nice rhythm around. Even the hair pulls off from here. Let's kind of indicate it right in through here with some gestural stuff coming across and through there. And we'll put some core shadow over here just to indicate a little bit more the geography of this area. Kind of come down softly, turning into the glabella, coming into the cranial nose and into the scrunched up cartilage in our viewpoint. Not necessarily physically, but just our viewpoint right through here. This curls on over, curls on over. See how this gradually slides over we get a little bit of wider area that'll leave alone in through here we'll hit that little tiny pit in there just a little bit so we've got that <clears throat> we'll come over in through here bring this brow up a little bit and bring that eye up a little bit too as well And through here and around that whole superciliary arch and up into the orbits downward. There we go. And this eye is a little bit higher just to get the feeling of it. Shadow mostly. A little bit of a ridging under here. Then a pull of the flare of the nostril up above it, like so. Wing of the nostril over here, a little darkest here. Kind of pulling around through, through here underneath that gradual ridging. A little coarse shadow on the filter. So let's get on now to the pupil and iris of Steve here. And the pupil, I'm going to raise it up even higher. I'll make sure I've got him looking up more than I need. Eyes can be tricky at this stage. This goes in a little bit further. Like 
so. out a little bit more in through here more curved round this through bed and beds to the highlight by running through running through there on each one let's talk about this pupil a little bit further now we can get more definitive with it a little bit darker Not much of a lash, maybe there's a little bit of a, a stroke I can hit just to help there one and maybe two, just enough to get an indication of it. I'm gonna get the feeling of the side. I don't want to go any deeper than this. This is already long enough. Just kind of a, just to kind of put it in context together. That's a little bit better. <clears throat> So what else do we have? Not much left, but a little bit more of the pupil here. Really dilated, really, really open for light to come in. Start. Light start. All right, so let's put on some highlights. Now my favorite part, woohoo, and, and then we'll tweak it out and get out of here. All right, so with, with this pose, there's a, a couple of glistening highlights I'm going to put in. I want to put one down here at we, we, where it's obvious, kind of flipped in through here. I want to make it brighter than it is, too. Higher in value. So I'll take that mark there that I've made and then we'll tighten that up a little bit around it. <clears throat> it's a little bit big. And I'm going to make it. Yeah, a little bit brighter too as well. And that by take a little bit more of that. Take this down a little bit. There we go. And kind of just gloss over that. Then I want to pop it with the white. Give it a flick or two, bingo, in through there. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, is I'm going to hit this little area over here in the corner. There's a little area it wants to gather next to that little darker area. I'm going to hit that. Let's see what that looks like. If I don't like it, I change it, change it back the way I had it here. Put a little dot here. Take your eraser in here and kind of pick up the smudging a little bit on the drawing. Just to pick that back up. There we go. And I might come in with a little bit of dark right in through here and tighten up this edge of the nose. We've got a gradual form shadow here, but then it moves into a edge. And so we need this to come over to really start to pick up the edge quality of that pretty pretty good. Right in through here, this balls out, this tip of the ball. <clears throat> right in through that.
cut underneath that. Then we'll cut this edge of the cast shadow nice and tight. Just to finish out this little study, a little extra. <clears throat> Plica can be a little darker. A little softer too. And then right in through there. This furrowed part of the the filter in here can be a little right in here can be deep and cavernous and it's a cylinder coming down off here right in there. So it's gradual shaving down right through there. bit more dark underneath, not a whole lot right in see there. And I think we've got pretty much what we need now uh, out of the study. So there you go. With living anatomy, picking apart the anatomy, talking about it while we're uh, executing now the, the um, really the end game of what we want from anatomy is more confidence with, with drawing the eye, right? That's the in, the, in all the structures of the human form, that's what we want to do that, is to get clarity with what, what's really the nature of what that is, what's going on with that form. I'll tell you one area. Take it back just a little, little bit. Is right in through here. I can lighten up this area between the iris and the pupil right through here. Take a tiny little bit of kneaded eraser and see how I can lighten it up just a little bit. A little over lighten. Sling that across and there we go. Okay. All right. So I'll see you guys with the next lesson. Whenever, whenever that will be. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.